Yes. Also, we've been known. Oh, yeah. All right. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> um. Yes, I'm allowed in every channel in this. Oh, word. Thing. Yeah, you've done work for them before, so that tracks. Uh, hang on one second. I'm gonna grab a drink now. All right. Here's yep. rule. Cool. Great. Sorry, what's up? Do you want to wait for Evan to come back? Um, yeah, she shouldn't be gone too long. At least yeah, like 25, will. we can transition over because I spent a lot on schedule. Oh, I guess there's probably some like creeps out where we might actually put up people from my chat now. But I'm doing stuff and things. Oh, oh, apparently they can hear us. Hey, everyone. Yo, what's good gamers? What's poppin'? I am 
Ezra Andromeda, KSVT is fast and funny non-binary verb. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with why there's an anime girl on your screen instead of a person, uh, that's because I'm a VTuber. Um, I also speedrun sometimes though, and I'm one of the few people who can actually reliably run this category because of the uh, final boss. And if you know, you know. If you don't know, um, stick around for the next 11-ish hours and you'll find out um, what I mean by that. But uh, yeah, so MASH told me I need to run this game in the marathon, so I submitted it for the marathon and we're doing it. Uh, we're doing all the endings and we are going to do it um, with with watching all the cutscenes, which is why it's, it's, it's a significantly longer estimate than, than you may have expected for a Dragon Guard all endings if you're familiar with it. Um, but uh, yeah, that being said, it is going to be a long thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it here. Time is going to start when I hit new game. Um, and then we'll sort of talk about the run after I let the opening cutscene play out here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. All right, we ball. And I'll try to be quiet for some of the cooler cutscenes, including this opening one. But I get to talk now because this is a game on PS3, running on PS3 hardware, and it has uh, the loading times of all time. Oh, I should also mention if you hear another voice show up, you're you're not hallucinating. That is Miu, my uh, my co-host here for a little bit before she goes to bed. But uh, she's away right now, so we just went ahead and got started. Descended upon the land. The goddesses sang mystical songs that restored peace and harmony to our broken world. The people began to worship these holy songstresses and came to refer to them as intoners. Oh, audio? Huh? We good? Can y'all hear me? Hello? I mean, the cutscene kind of speaks for itself. We play as a hot, murderous woman, but um, it would have been cool if you could hear it. Oh, it's back? Hell yeah. All right, we're balling. Oh, if you thought I was talking, I guess I should clarify. I'm, I'm finishing up dinner because I'm infamously bad at time management, so... Um, I wasn't talking, I think it probably just had my mouth opening and closing. Did you just say Kanye has covered the world in scarlet rot? No, I did not say that. Okay, I heard Kanye. What? Anyway, hi Miu. <laughs> I was saying, can you hear me? Hello? No, all audio is closed. Oh, gotcha. Anyway, hi. Uh, I, we're I watching didn't the hear opening cutscene. But the audio okay. cut out when Zero stabbed the guy, which is unfortunate because that's the best part of the cutscene. I see. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Okay, cool. Hello, everybody. Uh, anyway, Kanye is the cause of the uh, Scarlet Rot. Uh, this is funny because MASH has a Kanye emote. <laughs> it is. <laughs> scoofed! What the fuck is that supposed to mean, scoofed? All right, and now we're gaming. Uh, and now we're gaming. So I get to talk about things now um, that I was saving for when we're playing, because otherwise we're going to be here even longer um, playing this video game. So this is an action RPG in the Drakengard series, and also kind of the Nier series. That used to be a more interesting fact that people may not have known. Hey, remember the robot game with with the girl with the hot ass? Uh, that, that game is in the same series, but now people know that because these games are more mainstream. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so this is the third entry in the Dragon Guard series, kind of a prequel to Dragon Guard 1. Once more, the story is out there in the open, and we know a little bit more about what's going on in the lore. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more, but um, for now, all you really need to know is that it's an action RPG. This universe is bad for everyone living in it, and we are a hot woman on a quest to murder our sisters. How many sisters do we have, Ezra? We have five sisters. They are numbered. Their names are the numbers. Anyway, uh, for the opening Damn. part here, for combat, you kind of just, uh, you do a lot of, like, lifts immediately followed by slamming down and just kind of stun locks early game big enemies because we're in the tutorial. And now, um, our dragon Michael, who I didn't draw attention to, um, has been trapped by this guy. So now we're alone, no, even though we kind of already were. wish I had five sisters. I think you'll find you you won't wish that by the end of the game. In fact, her having five sisters causes a lot of problems for her and, by extension, the entire universe as we know it. I think Scoof's intentions are a little less pure. Oh. Uh, anyway, here we see Best Boy. Step bro, help. I'm stuck in the dragon's mouth. <laughs> Anyway, we pop in toner mode here because it lets us do a teleport move and then we don't have to walk across that bridge. In toner mode is basically like rage mode or devil trigger or like, you know, character it action type shit. Um, yes, yeah, it is the devil trigger. You know what's up. Game. And we get the tutorial for it after I've already used it, as you do. Uh, we can do the same thing here. My controller is actually playing nice today, which is pretty cool. So we'll do a little bit of a teleport just to save time. It also makes us run faster. And then we'll just go over here. And now we're going to meet our sisters. So I'll be quiet again because they are introducing themselves and I wouldn't want to talk over them even though they're kind of mean and horrible people. Hey man, five did nothing wrong. Not yet. <laughs> well, unless you count Dito, then she did something wrong. Also, yeah, oh, yeah loading, times, yeah, loading times. They actually do get better after the prologue, it, it, at least marginally, but they're like atrocious at the start of the game because that's where they put all the, the animating budget. It's been a long time, Zero. Has it? I didn't notice. You haven't changed a bit. You're still insane. Stop it. You're embarrassing me. That was um, a compliment. I will be back hey, in two seconds. Zero. I'll know you guys hey, in like 30 zero. seconds. Hang on. Good luck. <laughs> Zero, this fighting is pointless. You have to stop. We're sisters. Oh, don't be such a prude, Four. A good cat fight really gets my juices flowing. Wow, I sure am popular around here. Enough talk, Zero. This is the end. Oh, it's the end, all right. <laughs> And now we're playing. Well, after Zero stares at us for a bit. So this is a mostly timed section, but you also have to like lower everyone's health enough that they uh, they despawn, which can be kind of annoying because if they don't play nice, uh, you can get stun locked and uh, or they'll just dodge around or block all your shit, and it's kind of annoying. It's also the only part of the game where it makes sense to block because it does actually like prevent you from getting knocked back by by their by their annoying stuff. But also, I don't really care that much because again, it is mostly an auto scroller. And we're gonna be here for 11 hours. What's an extra like five seconds if the cutscene doesn't pop up immediately? You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, they're gonna talk about themselves for a little bit, and you're gonna get a sense of their personalities, even though they do low key kind of change later for plot reasons. We start to get more and more unhinged. Um, except for four. Or is kind of just always a freak. Um, you're probably thinking she sounds pretty reasonable, but uh, no. No, I assure you, she's like actually the worst one of these five, by far. Um, and yeah, we're kind of getting, we're kind of getting, getting 
they're, they're being annoying, as you can see. They're like not in the place that I want them to be, and they keep dodging backwards and blocking, and a bit of a bra moment. But yeah, we just kind of spam attacks at them and hope that they die. That's what's going on here. Um, Five really likes to talk about her boobs, which like, you know, fair enough, I guess. It is an anime game. Um, this was the first in the series to like really, really go hard on the anime style. But, um, I don't know. I thought I had a point there, but no, this is just the first game in the series to go into the hard in the anime style. It was sort of like, you can probably tell by the way it plays and the way it looks that Nier Automata borrowed a lot of its DNA from this game. I actually almost wish Platinum wouldn't do a remake of this game, um, but but the prospects aren't, aren't very... Uh, it's not looking likely. It's not looking likely to happen. You're nuts for running this? Couldn't get past it and neither could a friend of mine. Oh yeah, no, it's it's easy. First try every time, you just you just hit all the buttons at the exact time the game wants you to. I mean what? No, the final boss plays like an action game, right? There's definitely nothing strange about it. Why wouldn't it play like the rest of the game? That'd be kinda weird and strange, wouldn't it? Huh. Hmm. Weird. I wonder what they're talking about. Speaking of they. Because um, I didn't explicitly mention it, I said I'm non-binary. But if, if 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 you're the type of person who asks for pronouns, uh, I do prefer they them. I'm fine with any, but um, I, I do big prefer they them. So, um, in the interest of allowing y'all to be respectful, I, I should probably I should probably explicitly say that because I, I realize I never did. I just sort of I sort of they them to myself. without bringing it up. A remake of this game, or at least a port, would go hard? True. The end needs to be adjusted. Um, no, I think they should leave the end as is, but just make it, like, run better, so it doesn't drop inputs, because that's a thing that can happen. Adjusted mechanically, like FPS? Oh, true. Yeah. Very true. Also rip Michael. And rip Zero's arm. She didn't flee, you knocked her off a cliff. I've always found that line weird. <laughs> like, she... she... <laughs> okay. Ah, hell no. Nah. Who left the door open? A bird got in. Yo, what's good, Amanda? Let us sing of the Glad to see a lot of people from my chat popping in here. Very cool. Glad y'all are willing to sit here and watch me show off my special interest for up to 11 hours. Alright, so that was the prologue. Do the dropped inputs affect the end? They can. I want to be blind when I don't play Drakengard. Real. Alright, see ya, gamer. A story of six sisters. In a world protected by the power of is this the same developer as Nier Automata? No, but it is the same the writer six. and director. Yoko Taro. The land of mountains. The land of forests. Um. The land of sands. I had something to say, but I forgot. Oh no, the dropped inputs. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. The bigger thing with um, I'm like trying to be quiet for the cutscene, but also trying to think. Uh, it is eleven at night. Oh, Oh, that's another thing I need to talk about is Upside Down Europe, because it's a really cool piece of lore. But, um... No, no. Woo! It was good. <laughs> I was really trying to time that so that it would pop up right as Zero was, like, having her bad dream. It it actually low-key kind of did. Yes! <laughs> um... 
Now, as I was saying, now the dropped inputs in the final boss, it's not like super, super common, but it definitely does happen. The bigger issue is the, the frame drops because it can cause it to desync. Um, which, again, if you have no context for what the final boss is, sounds really weird and innocuous and like basically nothing, like no big deal, who cares? It's an action RPG, you just deal with it. Uh, but with context, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, the final boss desyncing audio wise is a big problem. <laughs> um, uh, okay, we're talking about final song, yeah, except okay. they don't know it's final song yet, but I mean, they do, <laughs> so it's yeah, fine. everybody knows what it is. It's like the one also, thing this game is known for. I was gonna say, the, the final boss's name being final song is a well known fact about Dragon Guard 3. True. Nobody knows what Final Song looks like, they just know that's the name of the boss. I feel like if you know Drakengard 3, you probably know the final boss by this point. I think that's a fair assumption. It's like the one thing this game yeah. is worth playing for. Aside from it everything really else, because it's low-key a banger. Especially if you play it on the uh, very legal, uh, real PS3 with a real ROM on a yeah. real PS3 disc. Um, you know what I'm talking about, but it's not my stream, so I'm not going to say it explicitly. But it is available yeah. on, on that method of playing it, and it does play way better. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and there is also um, the other way that you can get it to actually play and not get all fucked up is uh, make sure you have like a first or second gen fat. Yeah, also, like the older your PS3 is, bizarrely enough, the better the game will run on hardware, which is really yeah. annoying because I have like the newest possible. <laughs> And I have the oldest possible, mm -hmm. so we always make fun of the fact that Drakengard 3 runs better on my PS3. One day I'm just gonna give you the fat. I, none, of the, none of the PS3 games I need the fat for are games that run better on the fat. Anyway, time for Michael to shit himself. Yeah, so remember how Michael died? When d dragons die, they reincarnate, but they lose all their memories and get a new personality. So this is reincarnated Michael, and uh, he just pissed himself in front of our house. I'm calling, I'm, call, I'm calling the HOA. I'm calling the cops. This is Mikhail. He is best boy. He is the only character in this game with any fucking common sense at the end of the day. He's definitely the character of all time. <laughs> Mikhail did nothing wrong. I would call him the comic relief, but actually every character that's not Zero is the comic relief. Comic relief. <laughs> Um, but yeah, now we're in the actual game. So this is a mission-based game, although you may not realize it yet because it never actually popped up with a mission complete. But uh, yeah, so this is mission one. And to talk a little bit about the category now that there's something we can do to advance the category. To get all endings in this game, you have to beat it four times. Uh, this doesn't That doesn't mean we're going to be playing the same levels four times. Uh, th this uh, this game takes after Nier Automata in that sense, where uh, the endings are actually more like extensions to the story than than alternate uh, timelines per se. Um, even though they kind of are, but I'm I'm gonna save lore discussion for once we have more context for it. Um, but to get three of the endings, you just play through the game. To get the fourth one, you have to collect every weapon in the game. So I'm going to be making and detours to collect weapons. Uh, we will never actually use most of them, but we do have to collect them. So that was the first one. I was going to say, I have a question. Similar to other Nier Automata, uh, Nier and Drakengard games, you have to collect all of the weapons, but like the other ones, do you have to upgrade them all? Um, oh, I get to rant about this because it's a very common myth that in Drakengard 1 to get Ending D, you have to get and upgrade all the weapons. Uh, you don't. You just have to collect them. Um, Drakengard 2, you don't even have to. Original Nier, you don't have to. And Nier Automata, you technically do. But that's like a bonus ending. It's not like the main story ending. Um, so... It's kind of... That's kind of a complicated question, in a way. Um, but yeah, it's... it's You just have to collect them all. It's 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 the same as Drakengard 1 and the same as uh, Nier Replicant, if you've played those. We will be upgrading some weapons, though, because, like, there are certain weapons they're we good, use. They're good, yeah. Because they're bangers. But, what are uh, now the main we're... weapons we use? Uh, Would you say it's the, uh, what's this fucking spinning one called? Uh, well, there are four different weapon types that we'll be unlocking. So there's swords, spears, bracers, and chakrams. Bracers are really good for most combat, especially early to mid game. Uh, until we unlock the chakrams, because it will allow us to do a certain glitch that's very entertaining. Um, 
I like to call it spin to win because you spin, you win. It's also mm -hmm. a good time to take like a drink of whatever you're sipping on. Uh, you know, water, monster energy. Uh, the only two things I drink. Um, but uh, because 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 when you do the spin to win, you can actually just put the controller down and you will just melt the the entire enemy. Uh, it's very oh. funny. We get that about with cutscenes, if I had to guess, probably like a couple hours into the game. But yeah, this game has some interesting, uh, interesting stuff you can do with the weapons, uh, we'll say, for now. Because it sort of has to be seen to really understand the full, uh, what makes it interesting. Um, there are also some out-of-bounds that I'm not going to be doing, partially because I don't have the spoons to learn them. Uh, because they were discovered more recently into my into my knowing how to run this game, um, and also because it skips dialogue that's lore important, and this is really really lots of lore, so I'm actually justifying my my unwillingness to learn new things. It does also skip several cutscenes, and since we are doing all cutscenes, um, we do need to um, avoid the skips that specifically will cause our cutscenes to not trigger. Yep, yep. Um, which is weirdly the vast majority of them because the cutscenes in this game are long and unskippable in certain places. What? Which was the whole goal. So we found ways to jump out of bounds and go around the triggers and still finish the levels. Yep. No, Red Ace, this game does not have that. We don't get to sit and listen to the same. Goddamn monotonous bullshit track for 25 freaking minutes! Yep, unfortunately we won't be getting that after this either because, uh... Padre is a coward and decided not to do all endings of Dragon Guard 1. Damn, calling him out like that. Well yeah, she should've, she should've done all endings because it's the better run. But yeah, that's the end of Mission 1. Um, and also the only weapon in, uh, in, uh, verse one here, or, sorry, they call them acts, I think, or chapters, chapters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chapters, yeah. In the notes, um, the, the infamous Drakengard 3 all endings notes, which if you're in the, the near speedrunning discord, you should look at them because they're definitely the notes of all time. It just says A1. So I'm like, oh, act one, but no, it's chapters is the word the game uses. Not that it super matters, but, um... No, I don't know. I like being correct. Didn't, didn't you write those notes? No. That was Dale Duck. What the hell? I used Sorry. the notes. Your cousin wrote the notes. Yeah, something like that. Um, I hope maybe they return from, uh, from retirement someday, though. They were pretty good at this game. Yeah, they were pretty good at this game. Uh... I don't know if they'll ever return from retirement because you came out of the fucking woodwork like from left field uh, out of nowhere and just took their fucking world record one day and then shit on them and then left. Yeah, I'd, I'd lose motivation too if I if I lost the world record to some VTuber. Like, that's kind of embarrassing. Imagine losing to a VTuber. Um, but, uh... No, where was I at? No, yeah, that's the last weapon in this chapter. Uh... There's still some stuff to do, though. You saw there was, like, a uh, uh, menu there. There was a shop. You could buy weapons. You could buy items. We don't buy any items for this because we're saving up for a sword we unlock after this uh, this mission here, this first. But usually we'll be doing stuff like buying strength and defense potions because it lets us kind of just melt things with the right combos. Also, movement stuff. Uh, we don't really have too much fancy movement yet because we don't have the, the aforementioned sword that I just was just talking about. Uh, but one thing you can do early game is when you're on a ledge, for whatever reason, if you dash off of it, you just like accelerate to an absurd degree. Uh, I, there's not really any discernible reason that that happens, but it does. So uh, we make use of it to go slightly faster. That is all. Um, kill more things. Most of the game is kind of just running from combat arena to combat arena and killing all the things in the arena as fast as possible and then moving forward with varying degrees of success and then waiting for these doors which are uh, very very uh, hastily hidden loading screens and that's not like obviously that's how game development works when you have something like that it's a loading screen 
but this game doesn't even go the full distance with trying to hide it, because half of them will actually just pop up now loading in the bottom right anyway. But you're going to be staring at that specific door animation for many hours if you choose to stay here and watch it. Um, all right, so we keep we keep moving, we keep moving. We're going to jump over these spear guys. Nothing too fancy yet. Uh, you also see me picking up other chests that have like gold and weapons materials in them. That's because we're going to be spending the gold and weapons materials. Uh, what a what a shocker. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to call out every one of those. I'm just kind of going to take my beeline through the level while I talk about things related to the game. There was another dashing off the ledge moment there. Also, they don't expect you to run past enemies in this game for some reason, even though like most people I, I, I watch play this game start doing this after a certain point anyway. So they, they make them run faster than you because they figure you want them to be close to you because you want to attack them, but I don't. So it's a pain in the ass, and they're going to be hitting us um, in the butt very often and sending us flying, and it's going to be annoying. But whenever they look like they're going to attack, I'll jump, and it just kind of just kind of gets over them. So that's another thing we're doing early game here. But now we're going to be fighting a Gygus in a bit here. Um, takes a bit. Talk about, like, oh, there's no shrine. What the heck? We were lied to? But no, we weren't lied to. We just had to wait for uh, for the game to decide that the, the Gygus can spawn in. There he is. Here come that boy. What the hell is that? Here come that boy. Anyway. If it gets in my way, it's going Speaking of common interests, uh, did you see what they announced the fucking the next Mahjong Soul Cold Uh no I did not. What is it? Blue Archive. Um that's not that strange. I haven't thought about Blue Archive in a hot minute though. Yeah. But yeah, y'all know the drill for combat, just do aerials. He has the sweeping attack, so I'll usually use that to like go over it, and then do the slam jam attack, and what then the blammo, and then once I get enough combo to get that intoner mode drop, I pop intoner mode, and then do a combo to do a bunch of damage, as you can see, it kind of just melts, and then wash, rinse, and repeat until his health is, is gone. We don't have a lot of combat options right now, because we haven't unlocked the other weapon types yet, so... Once we are uh, just stuck once we're in, with this. I was gonna say once we're in like the later endings, you'll see some of these fights that are repeated, like the like the Gigas. Yep. Um, he'll melt in two hits. Yep. Once we get certain weapons and combos, uh, and it's so silly how different the combat looks from now to then. And to really drive in the point of repeat enemies, we do mean that there's like five enemy types in the entire game, and any in the future are just kind of reskins of them. Even bosses. Really out the red this is a, it's a very... All right, five. It's a very we were on a budget, we're sorry type of game. If you will. There's also a lot of level reuse in the later endings. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. You are good. And then I think Miu will be hopping off here before too, too long because she does have to wake up tomorrow. But I figured we haven't talked about Dragon Guard 3 in a while, so she can hop no. on and we can talk about Dragon Guard 3 while I I'll eat my dinner. For... Because after I'm here for at least. done munching on my dinner in between the cutscenes, uh, I will actually probably be able to talk more. But right now, this is actually making my life significantly easier. I mean, we just Correct. bought a weapon. I need to remember to change the weapon. I always forget to do that for some reason. Um, you'll notice I have two other weapons in there. Those are DLC. We're not allowed to use those. Not that this would be leaderboard anyway, because we're watching cutscenes, which is going to make it slower. But I still don't want to use them. This weapon's better anyway, because of the movement stuff. Um, yeah. But speaking of movement stuff, things are going to look a little bit different in this level because uh, we have we have sword, big sword. We do. It has an interesting aerial attack. Uh, so the other thing is that um, certain weapons in this game, even though they are the same air quotation marks weapons type, 
uh, will uh, have different abilities and different um, attack lengths and combos. Uh, so we will use very specific weapons versus um, for each of our slots that we have of each type um, to optimize movement and combat based on those abilities and damage and such. Yeah. So as you can see, if I like go up in the air and then dash and then do my triangle attack, it preserves momentum, sends us flying. Um, can I hit the box, please? I always... Uh, it's so easy to miss that box for no goddamn reason. The sword actually sucks for accurate attacks. It's, its only benefit is sending you flying forward. But uh, we made it. We ball. Um, one minor piece of tech in the top left below my health bar, the green one, you'll see a purple bar. That's my uh, stamina meter. Uh, it's like Dark Souls if it was basically nothing like Dark Souls besides being called stamina. Um, when that runs out after I do an aerial attack, I'm stuck doing like a like a zero out of breath animation when I land, uh, and that uh, that's slow. So we sort of have to wait in between dashes to uh, to let that refill. As we level up, because this game does have a leveling system, the stamina bar will increase, which will let us move faster. Uh, but by that point, we have movement tech that actually ignores stamina and is also faster. Uh, but yeah. That's another thing to, that, that I'm doing to make things like a couple of seconds faster over the course of 11 hours. So um, in the interest of talking about the uh, the notes, because I don't really have anything else going on to talk about right now because I'm waiting on more stuff to happen, I just want to read you an excerpt from the notes um, because I looked at it and it made me laugh. At the very bottom, it has a little note about some of the weapon routing. It says, uh, use and upgrade Imperial Tears after ending B. It's a spear. You buy it in the shop. I think it killed the skeletons good. That, that's the actual notes, and that's the only guide for this, this category. God, your cousin needs to get his shit together. Real. <laughs> You should, uh, you should rewrite the notes. No. So that more people can run this category. Well, well, the notes wouldn't help them do the final boss. Which is why I don't think anyone's bothered to make a better guide. I bet you, I bet you if there were real notes, and like... Those competing, uh, for the, uh, the record, would, uh... L took some time to, uh, learn some of the skips and stuff, I bet you Segoy would do it. Segoy is masochistic enough. I don't, is she anymore? I don't know. She sent me a picture of a buzz ball like three days ago. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's pretty masochistic. <laughs> anyway, now we're playing on the dragon. This is the first time we see dragon gameplay. The dragon also has intoner mode. Um, it causes the game to enter PowerPoint mode. Also, if the game enters PowerPoint mode, just understand. It is a PS3 video game. You don't need to refresh the stream. You're not buffering. The game is actually just like that on hardware. Um, but yeah, so to open there, we saved all of our intoner mode for this battle, and then immediately popped it to blow up all of those turrets. And then we just spam it until it's dead, and that is that. And we are on to the boss and final level of Chapter 1. Oh, I never did talk about Upside Down Europe. Oh, but yeah, the that, map is literally Upside Down Europe. But that being, like, the Colosseum from Rome reminded me. Um, so, the map being Upside Down Europe is not the developers being lazy. It may have been in Drakengard 1, but they it, it kind of ended up turning into a uh, interesting piece of lore. Because in this game, they establish how a lot of magic and stuff ended up in the Drakengard universe. And it turns out that we are in, um, and the game never explicitly says this, so it's not really spoiling anything that'll happen later, uh, just to be clear. Um, this universe is actually the same one as ours up until about 300 AD, where something happened that completely changed the evolution of history. So uh, it being upside down Europe is because it is Europe, but because the timeline was different, they ended up drawing it upside down. So south is north, north is south. So, neat stuff.
but uh yeah time to time to see five again because in the in the first ending here in the first route we just go we count uh highest to lowest the number of our sister and uh kill them it's been too long sister True. So now that we're killing your first sister, is the what, what is the what are we hoping to achieve by killing her? Um, well, we don't really know yet. Um, but but um, Zero's answer, if you asked her right now, would be because she wants to steal their power. Which would make us the bad guy. Yo, that seems Ray, like a reoccurring go. theme in these games, does it not? Oh, everyone anyway, yes. Hello, being thank you for the raid. Terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every, pretty much everyone in this universe sucks. I love Mikhail's eyes. He's just staring at my focus. Mikhail is the best character. Little glue in this on game. googly eyes. Still, I suppose I'll be nice and make him my pet once I've had. Mikhail is a uh, definitely an orange cat. Yeah, he does have orange cat. He he, he does have orange cat vibes. If you don't shut up, I'm gonna stab my eardrums with a fork. Oh, I have so missed these titillating little chats of ours, my dear dear sister. But now it's time for you to die. Oh, also, Zero has a flower in her eye now, and she didn't at the start of the game. That surely won't be more important, it's just an aesthetic choice, yeah, definitely. Oh, also, her arm got replaced with a mechanical arm on account of it getting cut off in the prologue. I didn't point out either of those things, I probably should have. That other part won't be lore accurate for, or lore important for later either. I mean, that one's more subtle, but there is some interesting stuff going on there. It's like hinting at something you find out a little bit later in this route. Especially with the context of what happens in the next level after this, which, uh, definitely one of the cutscenes ever. Um, extreme gore trigger warning for this game, by the way. I should probably put that out there at some point. So this is that point. Alright, so here we go. This is the five boss fight. So the way this works is her angel, Fanuel, uh, will pop out of the water, and then we have to dash into him. However, somehow he hit me with his water, which is obnoxious. I actually never had that happen. Usually you just press triangle and it, and it, and it hits him. So, uh, that's weird. I need to go a bit earlier. I think I held off too long. But yeah, you dash into him twice to get him out of the water, because then he's really weak. And you go over here, and then we're gonna stomp, and then we're gonna breathe fire. And, uh, that's what we do. And then we wait for our stamina to come back a little bit, and then blast him. And then, okay, we didn't get to jump in time, but it's fine, we're not really at risk of dying. And then to skip that little, like, like water column thing that, that annoyed me last time, we can, uh, we can stay on the edge of the arena, and then, boom, bro pops up. Alright. And then, hit him. Okay. And then, pop in toner mode. And then we're gonna go to items and pop a strength potion and then stomp and then this is gonna make us do a lot of damage yes i know i already did it and then get as much damage off as we can and then same thing we just kind of wait and the reason we pop it there is because the tutorial gives you a full intoner mode bar which lets us uh keep it into the next uh the next gun shear. And then breathe fire, and hopefully it kills. Okay, it did not. Unfortunate. That can go way faster, but uh, it's fine. If we knock him out again, should end. Okay. Hit him. Hit him. Said hit him. There we go. And that's boss fight. All right, now this is also the cutscene of all time. I, I need to be 100% clear, I am not messing with OBS in any way. So whatever happens in this cutscene is in the video game.
You can fact check me on this if you want. If you want to kill an intoner, you gotta really make. Huh? Yeah, me too. Me too, five. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Damn rip. Never mind. Thank you. sure loved working me to the bone, didn't you? Well, your little disciple won't be taking your abuse anymore! You're no Antonio. Dito now. needs to chill the fuck You're out, nothing. dude. Yeah, I can't believe he said all that. Sack of meat. I love you, I love you! What'd you love? You make me sick. You goddamn stupid, selfish, sex crazed son of a. Uh. What was her name again? I forget. But yeah, that's the only time in in the game that uh, that that gag happens. Like, like, the game isn't like that tonally for the most part, but that's in that cutscene. <laughs> because why not? Comedy. Also, those little orbs, including the, the Mikhail one on my head, those were drawn by Yoko Taro's wife. I love them. I love the little orb Drakengard characters. They're pretty good. But, uh, yeah, that's that. And now we unlocked the spear. And if I did my money route correct, which I did, we should be able to upgrade Twisted Hunger to level 2. Very good. That'll be good damage. And yep. continue campaign. And now uh, we're in chapter twisted, 2. If I remember correctly, Twisted Hunger is the one we use for the majority of the game until we get a slightly better one in the second... After defeating five yep, parts. so that's going to be our weapon for the entirety of ending A. Yeah, Twisted Hungers are our entirety of ending A, and then we get the better spear at ending B. Yep, there is another spear that uh, any percent A ending will use, but because we care a little bit about money going on after that, because we don't end after ending A. Um, I'll try to skip through this dialogue a little bit slowly, but... Usually that's less important than the cutscene stuff. If you really want to pause through frame by frame, feel free. But I can summarize. Basically, this is where I was talking about earlier, where Zero's like, oh, I want to kill all my sisters to get all the power. So that's pretty much what's happening. And then it's like, hey, uh, no, I know you don't want to kill him because you're a big baby. Um, but like, we gotta, because I want the power. Let's go. Stop being a bitch. That 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 was that dialogue. There you go. Um. But yeah, nah. Like I was saying, we we care about saving that money because we have to use it to buy weapons later. So I I don't usually buy that spear for the the final boss of ending A because it would get immediately replaced with a better spear after that anyway. But yeah, we have the spear now, which is good for like dealing a lot of damage and breaking through guards and stuff. Which is why like. Uh, you can see, like, I'm using all these shield guys because it, it gets them, uh, them to go flying out of the way. And then from there, because we can't really jump over them, I switch back to the big sword and we do the movement stuff. And then we just we just keep schmoving. Nothing super unique yet, but after the first arena fight of this level, we're going to try to do something that's going to be uh, neat. It's going to be our first instance of weapon swap glitch, which is... 
you do a lot of neat stuff with it. I, I almost feel like it was intentional to some degree with how much depth there is to it, but uh, unfortunately not. But they never patched it out. So uh, thank you... Who was it? Access Games. Shout us to Access Games. That's that's who made this game. Yeah. Shout us to Access Games for uh, for going bankrupt before you could patch out some of the problems with Dragon Card Three. But also rip Access Games. Kind of goaded, Loki. I forget what other games they made. Were they were they Deadly Premonition? Was that Access I think Games? So I'll check in a second. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the people responsible for this game are also responsible for Deadly Premonition. So enjoy that fact. No offense, but if I'm gonna get help, I'm gonna get. Also, those blue circles. You can use it to like pull in Mikhail to do like a big boy attack. It was just checked. Pog. I know things about the games I like. Thank you, Riker. Sure. And then, um, if you could, like, not be stuck over here. There we go. Luckily, he wasn't so far back that I couldn't reach him. That would have been obnoxious. Alright, there is a weapon I need to grab here. Um, so, I have a tendency to forget this one, but because I forget it so frequently, um, it is very high on my mind of weapons where I'm like, I really need to remember to get this one. Because if you don't, you have to come back and play through the entirety of the level again. And now we're going to pop in toner mode because we're going to do the thing. And we got it. Okay, so what we did there is there's a set of frames when you exit in toner mode where if you swap weapons during those frames, you get the stamina properties and combo properties of one weapon. Uh, but the the attacks of the other which allows us to just like zoom on forward by dashing and doing the triangle attack over and over again And we will never run out of stamina, which makes it the fastest movement you can achieve in the game Correct. And it also lets us do a lot of damage because the attacks come out faster with this the, the uh, spear, but they uh, they do the uh, They do the the damage of the spear so we can just kind of melt this boy and then I just noticed I have Antonio mode, so let me do that to make it go even faster. If you get really lucky with money drops, you can actually have a strength pot for this part of the game, as well as the spear upgrade, but unfortunately, uh, not, not this time. Also, this game is kind of hard, um, especially if you're not on level by not killing things. So I do actually have to be careful not to get hit by things. I can't just sit here and face tank everything in the interest of speed. I do have to be kind of careful to not get owned. But we do have consumable health pots in this game if I do get owned, um, which I may have to use. I thought his second head was going to pop off here, but it has not yet. Mikhail, act faster. Anyway, there we go. They were around until 2020, what to heck? Wait, what? What was Access Games doing after Drakengard 3? I was always under the impression this game killed that studio. I'm mad curious now. What other games are there that... Axe, I think, is fucking, like, Guilty Gear or something. I don't think so. I thought that was Axis, which is different. Hang on, I'm pulling it up now. Okay, those are not health. Is this one health? I hope so, because I don't want to... Yeah, Guilty Gear! Are you sure? fucking Guilty Gear does! Unless I'm thinking of a different Axis. Well, no, access, as in, like, you have access to the building. Oh! Yeah. No, I'm looking at no, Axis. No, Axis is, like, exclusively fighting games. Yeah, I was like, who did you talk about? This is the Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue people! It, it is, yeah, this is not the Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue people. DMC4 Special. Okay. Special edition. Yeah. So, so like, not the actual game, just, like, the, the, the definitive edition, which was the same code, but with a couple of additional features. Understandable. I can kind of see why they wouldn't hire them for, for the main game. It's Cerberus, idiot. Yeah, idiot. Pay attention. But, uh, yeah, we gotta... We gotta kill bro here. 
Nothing special though, just a lot of the same combat stuff, but now we do more damage. If we were only using Zero's sword, or not Zero's sword actually, the, the other sword that we bought that I don't actually remember the name of because it's not important. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, apparently. Oh. So they're really good at, like, releasing games that are entirely other people's code. Alright, so let's see, what do they have? They have uh, Spy Fiction, Ace Combat, a Mobile Suit Gundam game, a Sengoku Basara game, uh, Ace Combat, Ace Combat, Deadly Premonition, Deadly Premonition, Lord of Apocalypse, Dragon Guard 3, the special edition of Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy VIII Remaster, and then Mega Man Zero Collection, yeah. Makes sense. Also, this is the first cutscene where we see what happens when Zero dies. Um, so remember what I said about, like, like trigger warning gore. Um, if, if you haven't already, this would be your time to tab out until the cutscene's over. Because uh, this is kind of a bra moment. <laughs> and there it is. So you may be wondering, why, uh, why didn't this happen to her arm? Um, like, why, why is her one arm still missing? That's kind of weird. Um, and I'll just go ahead and give you the answer. Uh, it, it's because the intoners, including Zero, and her sisters, also they're called intoners, by the way, I don't know if I actually explicitly explained that, but yeah, they're called intoners. Uh, they can only be killed or damaged by a dragon. Or a part of a dragon. Anything else, and they regenerate like that. Uh, which looks very fun and not painful. First cutscene says they're intoners. True. But also the audio cut out during part of that. So. I don't know what people missed. But uh, yeah, now we have enough money for a third upgrade. Still no strength pots, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm also going to re-top up this just for safety. And we're going to keep balling. So until uh, verse 5, we don't have any more weapons to grab, so we're just kind of going to be um, grinding through the game here, doing all the stuff. But yeah, now, uh, now Zero and uh, Mikhail are uh, talking about like, whoa, that was kind of cool, but also kind of scary with the flower thing you just did. That's kind of that's messed up. Um, also, there's a fort over that, there, and I bet Dimo, that... Dito, Dito, or whatever his name is, into it. Like he's like, that was hot. Oh, well, you know, Dito, Dito, Dito is, a, is is the sadist TM. He likes when anything bad happens to anyone who's not him. Like, like the more messed up something is, the the more into it he is. Yeah. Which, uh, which really comes into play in the final route, the but is definitely present throughout the game. And the shrine where four was yeah, he is, he is is horny TM for sure. I, uh... Well, everyone is. That's like the, that's like the point of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone besides yeah. four who is also, but like, refuses to talk about it because that's her personality trait. She thinks it's bad. She's a, uh, she's a Catholic, if you will. I would that's Four's hideout. Yeah, it's, so, uh, if it, if we haven't said it explicitly and or made it obvious and or emphasized it enough, uh, the intoners actually do get their power from fucking. Yes. Like, they straight up have to have sex to get their powers. Well, not exactly. They have to be yeah. horny. They have to be, yeah, like... <laughs> which, um, which makes sense for Four once you meet her, uh, disciple. <laughs> yeah. They have to have someone interested specifically in them. Yes. Uh, which, which is really funny with Dito and Five. Well, that's why she's um, the weakest. Uh, yeah, because Dito is not actually interested in Five. Five mind controlled Dito, like use her powers to like control his brain or whatever. My guy got caned, caned into a woman. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Okay. Should probably talk all to all I know is if you like if faster. when uh after you beat Banuel, uh that's when Dito regains his senses and that's why he beats the ever loving piss out of her for no particular reason. 
All right, and then Kablamo. Did I get it? I didn't get a test in time. That's annoying. That but yeah, the teleporting awful. can do some weird things in this game, depending on how you're positioned. So we were like in a wall for a second there. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay, we did not get it. Thank you very much. Unfortunate. Tried to do the weapon swap there before the cutscene popped. Um, yeah, now we just uh, Noom on over here. Some rails have invisible walls, other ones don't. I don't actually usually remember which one because there's not a visual distinction. Tried to jump over the rail there, and oops, can't do that. Invisible wall, arbitrarily. But now we do a little bit of easy platforming, get hit by arrows because Lamau. Is this health? No, goddammit. I'm really not doing good on the whole not getting hit thing. But yeah, these are Minotaurs. Uh, this is one you'll see a pretty, pretty decent amount uh, throughout the game. Oh, there's some. Or sorry, Ogre. The Minotaurs are different. Those are later on. Yeah. You might but... say it's all Ogre now. Something like that, yeah. I don't know if I'd say that, but you might. In fact, you just did. So usually we would want to have weapon swap here. There we go. Now we can we can start melting the boy. There we go. Okay. Those are rough circumcisions. Thank you, th th thank you, Miguel. Thank you for that one. All right, get more health because I don't want to do the, the health pots. This guy has to charge us anyway, so we'd have to get out of the way. And now Mikhail can sort of tag team him with us, and, uh, yeah. Also, one of Mikhail's defining character traits is that he's kind of stupid. Um, so that explains that and many of the other things he'll say throughout the game. But he does get progressively less stupid. But not enough to not be endearing and best boy. They didn't have enough PowerPoint slides to put in those scenes. True. In fact, actually, Mew, um, I'm gonna mm. I'm, I'm gonna need you to click the PowerPoint slides a little bit faster. I'm having trouble doing the inputs at the right time. I'll do my best. I'm sorry. This is what I get for playing League of Legends. Yeah, you got to be focused entirely on the PowerPoint. Yeah. Like the whole point is we're doing the presentation. We got we got to be on top yeah, of it. Yeah, we got to be on top of it. Yeah. Also, hey, Gygus, again. I guess with extra steps. Gygus stuff slightly to the left. Yeah, Gygus I mean, except that... now he can go berserk basically. What's that tongue do? Um, nothing good probably. Oh my god. Um, I forgot that doing Mikhail during this part causes that to happen. Also, I need to I need a health pot, which is kind of sad, but uh. Yeah, we just we just try to kill the boy. Just try to lower his health here. We don't have strength pots, like I said, so it is gonna make this slightly slower, unfortunately. And... Yeah, Mikhail is setting the PS3 on fire. Funny enough, it is actually Mikhail that does slow the game down so much. Um, you'll notice a lot of the times where during non-cutscene um, parts that we have the issues is when we summon Mikhail to assist us in combat. Yep. So this guy, once he goes berserk, he likes to charge forward. I am being kind of careful and slow about it because, especially this part of the game, he can he can kind of one-shot us if he does it at a bad angle. So we just kind of let him run into stuff uh, and get stunned, and then wham, bam, kablam, and oh shit. Yeah, you wham, bam, bam, thank you, bam, him. Yep, now he's dead. There we go. And again with the door animation, the least they could have done is like, you know, change the color filter they put over it sometimes, but not even that. Also, oh no, a barricade's in the way. Um, I wish we had a dragon to come here and uh, blast it out of the way for us. Oh, look, a dragon to come blast it out of the way for us. Nope, just kidding. He's gonna, gonna destroy the whole bridge. Like a freak. 
He, Mikhail has does nothing wrong. I don't know why people hate him so much. Also, that, this cutscene is proof that he has no brain because we do stab him in the head, and he's equally as smart as he was before. Still, damn it, or I'm gonna... ah! Mikhail can do nothing wrong. He almost gets his oh. killed like every other level. Yeah, right. You're a fucking idiot. Come on. I never said you weren't right. I just said Mikhail can't do a can do no wrong. That's his best play. But like he just did. What are you doing here? No, he was just doing his best. <laughs> his best would be not blowing up a bridge. He is doing his best. If you say so. Anyway, we're just gonna continue weapon swap glitching our way through the level here. And then if we try to go here, it'll trigger a cutscene a little bit earlier than if we went to where the game tells us to go. And then another Titan is gonna show up. Because, you know, something something enemy reuse. What do you mean? No, that's just the invisible walls. Blame the uh, programmers for that one, Mikhail. Alright, then he's gonna- oh wait, no, the Titan is a different one that takes place on the same level with no other discernible changes. Never mind. Mikhail just breaks the- just brings yeah. the shield down, that's right. Um, alright, now we jump down here, and then, uh... The weapon swap glitch is neat because it kind of lets you skip through those shield guys, but only if the game's being nice. The physics engine sure is the physics engine of all time. And then uh, here we go. And combat arena. And then we pop in toner mode, and what we're going to do is uh, if we hit triangle and then dash, we can get a bunch of them out of the way right away because the triangle is what triggers the uh, teleport. So we kill it, jump to another one, kill it, jump to another one, kill it. And this room, the rest of them, we can just kind of clear out because we melt them with weapon swap. And, uh, da 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 And then, uh, I... No, not the door. I want you to kill the enemy, Zero. Uh, game likes to lock on to, to weird things. Uh, me blaming the game, uh, it's gonna sound... I'm gonna do it a lot, and it's gonna sound like I'm complaining and, like... You know, just get good Lamal, but like, try playing the game, it actually just does this. It's like, not great. <laughs> Hence my surprise at anyone letting these people anywhere near Devil May Cry. And there we go, that's the room. We're finished. And then this door is gonna open. And that's the stage. Is Zero Tara Platt's most pissed off role? Uh, quite possibly. Quite possibly. I mean, now we're in like a little courtyard situation here. And that's the end of the mission. Next mission, we play entirely on the back from Mikhail again. And it's actually kind of fun. You get to go on a power trip, basically. Yeah, me too. I do actually like how Mikhail plays in this game, though. I do yeah. kind of wish they had kept uh, the mechanic from Drakengard 1 and 2, where uh, you, can, uh, you can hop on the dragon at will, but at the same time, with what they were going for for this game, I don't think it would have worked as well. So, with the exception of one level, I wish they would have brought it back for. Um, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Well, technically two levels, but I mean, it's a level reuse, Lamau. Um, but yeah, that was a thing in Dragon Guard 1 and 2, but now it's kind of like mission specific. But he does control pretty well when the game isn't uh, shitting ass. So, uh, yeah, we at least get to enjoy it for, for a little bit. Here we go. This is where we think four is. So this is where four is hiding. Here, hop on. I'll work double hard, okay? Maybe if you didn't smell double bad, I'd. Zero, look Damn. Out. Get on. Mikhail needs to shower. 
Mikhail is definitely that guy at a con. How did they even make it this far? Okay, so this first wave, we just need to take out all these cannons and 20 dudes. So we can get most of them by just destroying the cannons because they, pl they place dudes next to them. So we just blast them. And then try not to get hit by the cannonballs because they will stun us pretty hard if they do hit us, which is annoying. And yeah, just, just keep blasting and stomp. And then big hordes of dudes. And we can just spin to win them. This is not the spin to win I referred to earlier, but it is definitely spinning to win because we spin and win. Um, yep. And then while we wait for more stuff to spawn in, we just kill what we can to get a little bit more EXP, a little bit more money. Um, it won't matter long term, but it can get us like an extra strike pot and an extra level, which like isn't nothing. And we have nothing else to do while we wait anyway. Is this Dito's entire personality? Like it's just ooh a sadist? Yes. Yeah, that, that is actually just his entire personality. So we hit him with the uh, the intoner mode, Yoinky Spoinky again. Um, I don't know how I did that, but that was actually faster than what I, would, what I was trying to do. Um, I was somehow standing on the cannon, and I was able to fire breath, which was kind of sick. And now three Gyguses. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop a strength pot, we're going to pop intoner mode, and then we're just going to let them come to us and breathe fire at them. And before they can do anything to us, they will get stopped. Okay. And get this guy's... Oh my god. They didn't line up. They usually all run at the same time, but the game didn't want to be nice. Unfortunate. Yeah, usually because they spawn in the same place, so they'll just like all run at you and you can just melt them all at the same time. But it'd be like that. We'll just uh, just clean house here and then that's it. So now just more running around, getting some of these stragglers for a little bit of a bonus while we wait because there's nothing else to do. And I have ADHD, so I got to be doing something with my hands. You know what I'm saying? Yep. There's a lot of things you're doing with your hands. Yeah, mostly pressing buttons. But when certain characters are on screen, I might be doing other things. Who knows? You can't prove anything. I'm a VTuber. You can't prove anything. I'm a VTuber. <laughs> Why are you so bent on taking down your sisters, hero? Families are important. Dragons don't have families. And even they know they're important. Not to me, they're not. Families nuts, says Zero from Drakengard 3. <sighs> I'm going to need a new mm -hmm. plan. And that's the level. Alright, next up we are going to go to the snowy area of the mountains. And I forget if it's this one, but I think it's a later one. I think it's one of the Lost Verses that we do in like <laughs> probably six hours. But uh, in one of them, Zero talks about how having her period is worse because of how cold it is. Uh, that's like actual dialogue in the game. So, uh, perhaps some of y'all in chat can relate. Heavily. Yep. And, uh, there we go. Um, we get that, and we do have enough for a strength pot. Our spear is fully leveled, so we're dealing a lot of damage. And we continue forward. This level also introduces a really annoying weapon type. Um, weapon type? No, uh, enemy type. I misspoke because I was thinking about the weapon Diverted upgrades. false information regarding Four's whereabouts, Zero found herself on the hunt once more. Guided by the faint intoner presence they detected, the group narrowed... Oh, also, I haven't drawn attention to it, but pay attention to this narrator. This game does a cool thing. Mm-hmm. With the narrator. They've technically already done it, but they do it again. <laughs> Which is kind of neat. They actually do the same twist right, twice, and it works it. both times. Yeah, have we talked about the shopkeeper yet? Oh yeah, yeah, the, the uh, shopkeeper accord. In the first level, there was a note uh, that was like, Hey, uh, this is my weapon shop. If you want weapons, just uh, just send me a letter. It's mail order. 
so uh, it just establishes that the weapon shop is in like the the menu between levels that's uh that's pretty much all we know about accord right now um probably just a random name they gave to the shopkeeper to add a little bit personality nothing nothing nothing, nothing special important. there yeah no connection to anything else if you've ever. seen that name in any near games that released after this no you haven't you know maybe we should have ridden on Mikhail after you might all. say some Didn't of it hear? is all according to plan you mean keikaku and keikaku means plan mm -hmm. yeah damn i guess that joke was too boomer even for you no i understood it i'm just being a boomer Damn. and league of legends i mean i mean your favorite your favorite uh your favorite final fantasy is final fantasy 4 and that does make you either a poser or a boomer i think that was actually originally uttered on this channel is where i got that from it was either this was. or questing for glory i don't remember but it's been my favorite line whenever you bring up final fantasy 4 but yeah these are spirits um they go gloop gloop uh, they feed a little bit of Baja Blast to the soldiers, and then they become more powerful, and it's the worst. They basically get hyper armor and also um, more damage. I like money. I like then, uh, money. Sponge boy, me boy, Bob. We have to destroy the flower before it's too late. I'm just gonna spear these guys. The game isn't being nice with dropped inputs. Okay, or this archer can be the worst thing of all time. Um, this is fine. We can get weapon swap early, actually, if I do this right. Damn. A little bit too late. You did not do that right. All right. Well, we just start swinging. We kill him. And basically, the meta is just destroy the soldiers before the. Uh, spirits have time to do anything, and actually while we wait for those to spawn in, we can actually, um, take out some of the spirits to make this a little bit less annoying. Um, also we can't reach our dragon right now. Usually you have a telepathic connection to them, but like, not this time. Okay, now we have it. Uh, but yeah, something's, uh, something's, something's going on. Something's weird here. Something, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Uh, what was up with that? But yeah, as you can see, a lot more defense, hyper armor. Um, I'm trying not to get hit because I don't want to use health pots. I've already lost a lot of money to that. But uh, you can see that uh, they die really slowly. Um, Zero comes crashing in with a Honda Civic. God, I wish. I sent you the tweet just recently, but it's one of my favorite tweets. It's... it's um, it won't be a direct quote, but it's, it's something along the lines of Drakengard 3 just has really big Florida energy. Like, if you told me all that happened in Ebor over a weekend, I would believe you. I sent you that one. I think you did. Hello? I specifically sent you that well, tweet. Well, I, I sent you it earlier this week because I was reminded of it. But yeah, you sent it to me originally. Yeah. Also, this cutscene is also the cutscene of all time. I think it's such a good idea to because if anybody has the right to say those words. What? You scared? True. It's this me. It's me. That's true. You disciples are more Considering I can walk to that exact spot. <laughs> you sure can. Ezra, are you ahead on time? City mentioned. Um, I don't actually know. Um, I I did the estimate based on the casual playthrough I did on my channel not too long ago, but I, I've never done like a full run watching all the cutscenes like this, and I also don't have a timer up, so I have no clue how long I've been playing. I think about an hour, maybe a little bit more. It doesn't matter. We'll definitely be done before 11. It's a very generous estimate, even with cutscenes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. I see the joke you were going for. Anyway, yeah, so uh, they did like a fake out ending there because we died in an avalanche. Uh, there's some interesting lore implications with that cutscene, actually. Um, there is a way to interpret this game such that it uh such that it um it's like a piece of media within the game's universe like these are actual events that happen but they've been dramatized with the comedy and stuff added in like, like essentially we're playing the video game on 
a console in the Dragon Guard universe is 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 a way to interpret this game or a play. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but it is a super interesting way to uh, to read the game because a lot of because there's a lot of that like fourth wall breaking type stuff. So just an interesting call out there. But yeah, with the weapon swap and the the strength pot, we can just kind of stun lock our boy here, same way we did in the prologue. And then there he is. Now he's downed. What is this game? Dragon Guard Three for the PlayStation Three. Perfectly normal action RPG. Nothing weird going on here. It does the genre swap like two thirds of the way through the game. Never. Oh yeah, no, definitely not. Especially not for the last last boss fight. Why would it do that? But yeah, as you can see, now we kind of melt stuff because of the combination of uh, double damage, weapon swap, etc., etc. Um, and now we killed that titan. Uh, the stone slab just kind of shows up, and we're gonna read, read it. it. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let's see here. The jewel bearing the revered one ascends to the heavens from Mount Bernstein of the Vice Norden, leaving a silvery shadow in its wake. You want to try that again in English? What do you think it means? Your guess is as good as mine, but I know that I've definitely heard of Mount Bernstein of the Vice Norden before. Fine. We'll go check out Mount... whatever. Yay! Oh we're going to Mount whatever! I'm letting that play out because I, I want to... Afterwards, after, now that that dialogue's happened, I want you to pay attention to how they refer to this mountain in in-game dialogue. And this level also has a weapon in it, and this level is also really obnoxious. But uh, I'm going to top up on these, and I'm not going to do defense pots for now. Cat? Where the fuck, cat? Cat? All right, so we get one of the loading screens of all time. This one actually isn't that bad in the grand the scheme of things. And then, hello, narrator, that the won't be important later, haha. Huh? Next time you're in a loading screen, DM me who the narrator is again, because I definitely fucking don't remember and I have it muted. <laughs> oh. Um. Though named for a mountain, Mount I, we were just talking about her. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember if that was if that had already started or not. Uh, technically not until the end of ending A, but like there's some hints here and there. There you go, land of the mountains, Mount whatever, in the in-game text. <laughs> yep, Mount whatever. All right, now we gotta get up here. Also, yeah, reminder that this level doesn't even need to happen, but uh, Zero and and Dito really just don't want to ride Mikhail because it's cold. Mikhail is also stinky. Yeah, Mikhail does need to shower. Bro, stinky. Also, this is the first level with, like, platforming TM. It's not good, and the game is aware of this, uh, as you'll soon find out. But uh, that doesn't really justify the fact that it's terrible. It does not feel good, and uh, paired with dropped inputs, it's really it's just really an unpleasant experience. It's, like, one of the few fights in the game that uh, the Disciples following you around... Uh, specifically just Dito here, but we will unlock more, and they kind of follow you around like RPG party members. 
This is one of the few places he can actually help because uh, he'll hit the soldiers out of the spirit animation. But only if you're lucky. Okay, so we just slice. Hope for the best here. Ow. And then using Intoner Mode, I think I might have mentioned it before, but it does pop them out, so whenever I can get them in uh, in these fights, I, I try to. And then we did get Weapon Swap. Actually, that, that fight usually lags out pretty bad, so I'm impressed that I was able to get it. But uh, we do have Weapon Swap, so that'll make the entire rest of this level pretty easy. Technically it is. I mean, by merit of being the same universe, Drakengard 1 does have Mount whatever, but you never go there. Or if you do, they never draw attention to it. You can make the argument that, like, you can see it, like it's the mountain from the land of mountains, but that's kind of a stretch. Anyway, here's the platforming. Pay attention to dialogue, because this is a recurring joke that I actually kind of hate. It's my least favorite in the game. Because, like I said, drawing attention to the fact that something you made is bad doesn't make it not bad. It's just reminding the player that it sucks. Alright, now we got another Cerberus. But this time we have Strength Pots and a level up Spear, so we can, we can, we can kind of ball out. Uh, we're also going to try to keep him stunlocked by going over here, and then uh, da -da 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 -da, we're gonna pop a strength pot and just melt him. Also, these soldiers on the side are kind of obnoxious, but uh, we ball. They should just get hit with collateral, but they can uh, they can knock us back, which is annoying and slow. Kind of oh, like the frame rate. Top, you're on top of the computer. Okay, you're allowed to be there. That's fine. What? No, I'm I in the computer. I'm a VTuber. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a VRM file. So, H Hennessy's tail is like been swishing out of the corner of my eye. Uh -huh. And he likes to try to crawl on top of my UPS. I see. Which is in the corner that he's in. But he, I guess, has decided that he would rather be on top of my PC because it's very warm. Shout out to the access games for blowing the budget of this game on VAs and platforming. Yeah, and like the two pre-rendered cutscenes. Because pretty much everything in this game runs in engine, which uh, I've definitely mentioned it already, but uh, includes the final boss, which is a pretty big problem for a reason that will be obvious when we get there. Also, a lot of the performance has to do with, um, and I don't remember where I learned this, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure it's because they actually just load in every asset in the level at the same time. So, uh, lol. But, uh, more platforming, we can skip that, nothing important is happening, it's just, oh look, platforms. His name's Yoko Taro. And he's not an asshole, he's a silly little guy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Zero. That gate looks familiar. Alright, and here we go. And then that chest, that's the one we need to grab, but we'll kill this guy first. Don't know, don't care. Terrible things we did with Unreal Engine 3. Yep, also this is Unreal Engine 3 if you want to blast from the past. Ow. Suck. Okay. Also, the name's about to change again. But yeah, y'all know the drill with these guys, just, just just attack them, nothing super interesting there. This one soldier still being here is very annoying, I'm gonna actually dodge out of the way to save myself some annoyance.
And then I don't really need to pop in toner mode here, actually, but I will. It'll just make the last hits a little bit faster. And I can run over here, be ready to grab the chest. And we'll wait for the door animation, as you do. With the loading screen, it's very long. And there's our weapon. Keep going. And here we are, top of Mount Burr something. I'm sensing in Antona's presence. Up beyond those clouds. Oh hell, the sky? Never even considered that. So after all that bitching about, hey, we don't want to fly up to the top of the mountain. It's cold and you stink. Stink. As she just said, I didn't mean to sync that up with it, but that was kind of sick. Um, we have to do it anyway. In a twist of irony. So there we go, Thunder Princess. We'll never use it. I don't actually remember the names of most of the weapons we get throughout the game. I just know that we have to get all the weapons. Like, I could not tell you more than, like, ten of them, if that. There are a lot of weapons in this game. I don't remember how many are in Nier Automata, but this game definitely comes close to beating it, if not just outright beating it. Okay, I'm gonna top up on strength pots, get a defense pot, and kablam. So this fight is entirely on Mikhail, like uh, most of the Intoner fights are throughout the game. But this time we get a slightly different um, version of flying Mikhail, where we're like kind of in the sky doing sky things. Um, and if you played Nier Automata, you will recognize the gameplay style immediately. Because it is just the uh, the armor suits, like the mechs, the, the shmups. It is just a primitive version of that. Except slow and annoying. And also, for some reason, if, if we get lucky, we'll see it. There is actually an, an, a second entirely separate Mikhail flying behind us doing nothing. For no goddamn reason, but he's still loaded in. I don't know what the purpose of it is, but he is back there. And if the camera gets screwed up by frame drops, you'll see him in the back. <laughs> Lots of wyverns around here. Must be for song at work. But yeah. Just an auto scroller. We try to kill everything because it can get us some bonuses, but if we don't, it's not a big deal. Again, we're just kind of waiting, so might as well do something. So we try to get those bonuses. Wow. You're like a different beast when you're Kablamo. talking about wyverns. Also, Mikhail really doesn't like wyverns. Oh yeah, Mikhail's a racist. Yeah. Not the most racist character in the game, though, surprisingly. Uh, that actually goes to Four, who we're about to fight. Yeah, Four's kind of a bitch, actually. Four, like, unironically commits genocide, actually. In this game, in the DLC. And admits to it. Yep. Oh no, she's just cool with it. She's fine with it. What's that? Extinction of the Elves, more like, uh, or Lamau. <laughs> that really means something coming from you. You wanted Elves? Or I'll give you Elves. Dead ones. Yeah. She'll give you the belongings they stole from the Elves. Are you kidding me? No wonder you reek so bad. That wasn't a compliment. And if we can kill that guy, I think we got everything. We might have missed one. Yeah, we missed one wyvern. Unfortunate. Shoutouts to frame drops. Also, to my point of everything being an engine, um, you can see the frame drops in the cutscene, which is definitely de definitely normal for video games that were produced by studios with a budget. Oh my god. 
Damn it. So cold to keep my brain just froze. All right, try to shoot this guy. Come on, come on. I wish I had more to talk about during this, but it actually is just what you see is what you get. It's not a scroller. You shoot things, try not to die. Even the boss is like that. So you think this is going to change once we get there? Uh, no. Also, building up in toner mode is another reason to kill yeah. things. Because that'll help us during the boss fight. Nowhere left to run. Oh my god. It's so bad today. What? Just... Yeah, like... It's mostly because of the snow particle effects. And also, again, for some reason, there's two McHales loaded in right now. But, um... Like, usually it at least kind of tries to behave, but, like, it feels like it's every three seconds I'm getting a PowerPoint moment, which is unusual even for this level. Yeah. Later flying levels are actually way better about this because they don't have the snow effect. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. It just makes the level look worse and also run worse. It could have just not been there. It also goes away for the boss. So like at some point they must have realized that like it's not good. Do devs even test their own games? Uh, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if this game had QA. And if it did, I'm certain they did not listen to it. Okay, there we go. We got the perfect bonus on the last one. I proved I know how to play video games. And here's four. Racist! Zero. At last. My wayward sister finally arrives. Yeah, it took a while. <sighs> All your chicken shit running around didn't help. Sit still so I can kill you quick. I... I have no wish to fight... Unfortunately, she has twin tails, oh. um, which, if you know anything about me, is kind of a problem, because, uh... Yeah, twin tails are nice. That, that uh... That reflects poorly on, on my wife, Hatsune Miku, from... Digital singers. You can't. You can't. Like, Twin Tails are for her and other people as good as her. Not for... For Drakengard. Also, that's Decadus. He's a character. Sure do be. Alright, fine. I'll play the 80 carry since no one else wants to play the 80 carry. Everyone point and laugh at me as she plays League of Legends. Yeah, I know. Well, I did deserve this. So five had a cool looking dragon. What is uh? What is four's angel? A a floating castle. Which, uh, you know, the progression there definitely makes sense. So, uh, welcome to Armoros, the auto scroller boss fight. So, we're kind of being pulled along here. Thematically, it does make sense for it to be a. Hear me out, though, too. Yeah, my body is fighting me. Hold on. I had a thought that I was finishing. Um, because we're getting dragged along, because that's like Armoros' mm -hmm. power is that it like it like manipulates your movement and traps you in basically like a like an underwater ocean current, but it's magic. Um nothing else to really say there. We're gonna get these like three towers and there's gonna be a fourth one, and each one's gonna get progressively harder to uh to hit because they're gonna move around. Um, we do that because it takes out the cannons, which means less projectiles that can stop us in our tracks, because when we get hit, we can't be shooting for a sec. And if the timer runs out, it's just straight up a game over. It's not super hard, but it's annoying enough that I don't feel like dealing with it. But uh, yeah, so anytime we're not fighting the big, like, 
jet engines here, uh, like a, the Incredibles no capes situation basically. Uh, we're just trying to take out the cannons so there's less stuff shooting at us. And also for more EXP and money, as usual. Again, not that, not that it super matters, the money route isn't that tight. Uh, if you've played the game, you may be surprised about that, but once we get to the point where I'm actually getting, like, grinding for money, you'll understand why um, it's not that big of a deal. But it's still nice to have strength and defense pots as early as possible to make stuff faster. Also, I'm gonna... Also, this is where they talk about the, uh, the, the, uh, the power from sex. And for, like, acts like she doesn't like it, she's not, she's not cool about it, but, like, she's putting on an act. And also, she's well aware of how Decadus works. I won't, I won't outright say it, because we haven't actually talked to him yet, but, uh, if you read between the lines, you can kind of figure out what his deal is, with, with Dito being, uh, being a sadist and all. Um, you can, yeah, that's definitely enough information to make an educated guess. But that is phase one. And now, we've uh, destroyed the tower, and Four, being the coward that she is, is going to sort of just separate here and run away like a coward. God damn, she's stubborn. So phase two, we pop this, and then kablamo. And then uh, we're gonna stop in toner mode, because then when we get it again, we can do this, and that'll sort of stun lock it here, and then we just shoot at it. Also, I forgot to pop the defense pot, but I have the defense pot because then we can just focus on shooting the ball. We don't have to worry about these little blades because they don't deal a lot of damage, and now we have hyper armor. Also, that's the reason we get defense pots. It's not necessarily the damage reduction, because especially later game, we're still going to be taking a lot of damage. But it prevents us from getting stunned, which lets us focus on dealing damage. It, w it won't break our combo, which is super useful later on. And now, but especially later on when we have more weapon types to work with. And that's a fight. Alright, this is also the cutscene of all time. This game has a lot of the cutscenes of all time. Say a little something before you go. Ooh. Now's the time. <laughs> I I won't let you harm Lady Four. <laughs> Kill her. No, no, don't come out. Not now. Where am I? Z Zero? Four? Why am I... What's going on? Where are we? <gasps> Zero! <gasps> You're here! You came back! Oh my god, I forgot about this cutscene and how she what fucking happened? fakes. What about our sister? Yep. Where are they? That poor shit works. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and then yeah. just... Just to explain this, because the game never will later, 4 has false memories. There's stuff that comes up later where you'll be like, huh, why did that work? Uh, that's why. Anyway, got him. It was all an act, Lamau. Thanks for the info. I can't believe you fell for that bullshit! You honestly thought I'd have a split personality? Stupid son of a bitch! Oh. 
Yeah, it really does not get brought up that Four's memories are all fucked up. Please, kill me as well. I kill my sisters. I take their men. Go clean up. Front and rear. We meet tonight. Front and rear? So who's next? Three, huh? And, uh, yes, front and rear does mean exactly what you think it means. This game is not subtle. But, you know, we have two, uh, we have two disciples. Dummy, come here. Don't you look different from before? Different? Whoa, what the heck? Whoa. 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 Also, yeah, Mikhail evolved. We have we Mikhail's level two now. Um, it pretty much means nothing. Um, it just means like technically speaking, we're stronger during the dragon sections. But like, which level Mikhail is doesn't really. Uh, it depends on where you are in the story. It's as mission by mission. The bigger effect is that Zero's sword levels up alongside that instead of the regular uh, weapon upgrades. But we don't. We don't. We don't use Zero Sword anymore, so uh, it don't matter. Also, we have uh, we have Combat Bracers now, the third weapon type, Masochistic Joy. Um, so again, remember you can make some educated guesses about uh, Decadus's personality. Uh, there you go. The game spells it out for you with uh, the name of the weapon he gives you. Uh, I'm gonna top up on Strength Pots, and then we are going to get into the mission here. So now we're in the land of forests to kill three, because again, we go five, four, three, two, one. Um, and our first order of business is going to be tracking down the fairies, because the fairies will be able to lead us to where three is. After murdering four, Zero flew off to her next destination, the land of forests. It was a place steeped in insanity and the home of her sister, three. And also, mechanically speaking, we have an airship now, which does change how the game's played a little bit. Um, it's nothing significant, it's still, it's still a, uh... Still an action RPG, it's still mission-based, but this sort of operates as like a hub of operations now, and as you play, you find some keys and stuff, explore more of the... More of the airship, get some upgrades, get some loot, get some lore stuff. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Are we going to be spinning to win? That is coming soon. That does, that does. We do unlock that in this chapter. But not for a little bit. Not until we meet the disciple ever. He sure is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So we fly our airship over to the forest. And, uh... Zero's pretty excited about it. We do, like, the RPG thing. We're like, woo, our airship, yeah! Just kidding. Lamau. He's blown up immediately. It's Jover. We did it! We got her! We've slain the demon! Lady Three's gonna be overjoyed! And they did it. Yeah, our characters are dead. Our main characters are dead for real this time. They did it. They 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 got her. Just kidding. Get dropkick, loser. Strike. After nice cock. To get that airship. I wish they would have played a bowling pin sound there, actually. That would have been funny. And, uh, yeah, now we're on the level. We're not actually going to kill those guys, though, because me, the player, I'm not upset about it. I want to get this done so I can go to bed. And also because of speedrun. And speedrun is supposed to be fast, you know, as they are. Um, but, uh... Yeah, Zero kills all of them. We'll just imagine she did for the sake of the plot. Because she's upset. She's not very happy. She liked having an airship. She wanted that airship, yeah. Yeah. Which is also kind of weird on account of she has a dragon, so it's not like she can't fly anyway. And I never really got the excitement. I guess it's just kind of like aesthetically pleasing. I can kind of I can kind of vibe with that. That giant tree sure stands out, doesn't it? Also, there's not the Deku tree from Not Zelda. Let's go. 
As you can see, uh, Zero Zero is not very happy about the airship. She has even more reason to kill three now. Okay. And now we just kill these guys for for free stuff while we wait. Uh, the combat bracers are really good for single enemy targets. And now we get introduced to another enemy type, the undead. Dragon Stinky? Oh, true. That's a really good emote. I want that emote. I want Ezra doing that. I want Ezra licking the screen as an emote. Hopefully I remember that like eight hours from now so I can find someone to commission for that tomorrow. That's incredibly based. What's up? Nothing, just... League of Legends. Playing League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uninstall the game. I mean, I mean, I'm bullying you because I care. I know. <laughs> I needed something that I don't need to pay attention to so that I can watch Drakengard on one screen while I progressively get further and further and further behind because I keep having to watch fucking ads. Oh, word. Oh. Um, What was I saying? Oh yeah, no, the, uh, the, uh, the undead. Yeah, they like, uh, they block your stuff and also when they die, they're on a timer and you have to kill them again before they can respawn because then they get their health bar back and infinitely revive and stuff. Also, yes, they do a cutscene there and the arrows do get fired during the cutscene. Uh, game design is, is, is a thing these people learned at some point. More of that jumping around I talked about earlier for, uh, not getting hit, not getting launched. Also, this is the Gygus, but red. Oh, He's thank called you, the Soft. Undead Gygus. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna blast them with a strength pot and then we're gonna immediately do some intoner mode shenanigans. And then yeah, get that full combo. And then we got enough of the combo counter to get a second one, which means we can kind of just uh, stay in for longer than we would normally be able to. And there we go, he's already below half health. Okay, we get over here, and we do heavy attack combos. Um, as with the other Gygus, his attacks can do a lot of damage, so for stuff like that I unfortunately do kind of just have to stop and jump over it. The soldiers here actually kind of help out though because they do hit you for less damage and uh, that allows us to get more in toner mode which means we can just kind of kablammo get another 30 combo to get more in toner mode and then we are donezo the bracers are actually just the best form of combat for now so weapon swapping is going to go away for a couple of missions here because uh yeah, we, uh, we don't need it. We'll just do more damage, and this movement is only marginally slower. Like, the time it would take to do the intoner mode animations just for an attempt at, uh, the weapon swap wouldn't be worth it. For how short these levels are. You sure do bitch a lot, Z, you know that? And here's the fairies. They're normal. Think Tinkerbell, super nice, super normal, super... Innocent. They're doing their thing, man. They've done nothing wrong, right? They definitely don't suggest that all of the main car party uh, unalive themselves. They definitely don't say that in less uncertain terms. Definitely not. Nope. Among other heinous shit. Yeah, they're nice and perfect. And now they're dead. <laughs> Just need beautiful. Right then. And, yeah. yeah, Zero's not a fan. And Zero is not a Disney princess. I wish she was. God, could you imagine? That'd be the best Disney movie. Imagine Drakengard 4 is a fucking Pixar film. Jesus. That sure would be the thing of all time. I kind of want that now. Yeah, it would be a fucking film of all time for sure. I don't remember. I think I need 11,000 and a better material to upgrade the bracers. I can never remember if it's two or three here, so I'm going to check. 
Uh, yeah, we need better stuff. But I do know we bought the three strength pots because that's all we need for now for the next two levels. So it saves a trip to the shop. Um, so we're going to go here. And yeah. Say it's a level. We sure are playing the game. The alien queen from Alien is a Disney princess now? What? Yeah, uh, Disney Is this a Kingdom alien. Hearts? Oh, uh, no. I thought this was going to be like a Kingdom Hearts thing where it's like they had an alien world. So now Disney like, owns, they've canonized. Disney owns Alien. Yeah. Um, Disney owns Alien now, and technically, by the rules of what a Disney princess is, the Alien Queen is a, isn't. Can, can you explain that to me? How does the lore work on that? Like, why does that make her a Disney princess? Is it just because she's a woman in a Disney film? Uh, I'm not precisely, but yeah, kinda. And now another new type of enemies. These are ogre trolls. Trolls. The ogres were different. They look pretty goofy. Um, it's all ogre now. They're pretty. They're they're pretty. Nothing. You just kind of attack them and they die. Occasionally dodge out of the way of their gunch. Perhaps some questions are best left unanswered. There we go. Blast one of them down, and then kablamo. Thank you, Decadus. Uh, don't ask what's in their little baskets there, by the way. Definitely not human parts. And do this, so we teleport a little bit. And kablamo. And nice. And cool. And usually I'd have intoner mode here, but I actually got hit less than I usually do. Um, not that I really plan around getting hit, but it just kind of happens because I'm not paying attention. Their attacks hitboxes are strange. But luckily they can't really deal a lot of damage very fast, so we just kind of... Just kind of ball out. Just kind of just kind of whack. Just, just whack them. Smack them. Whack them all. Whack a troll. And got him. Everything in this game is a big old bag of HP. Yup, yup. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, there. Once we fucking... unlock the fourth and final weapon type, the chakram, though, um, that stops being a problem. Did you see him or not? I guess that means I'm a fairy. That's crazy. And then we go from a cutscene immediately, like hard cut, to just fucking fake loading screen. Pixely zero. Alright, checkpoint go brrrr. And uh, oh yeah, also Mikhail's missing again. That's, uh, we can't, we can't reach Mikhail and we don't know where he is. Uh, Again, Mikhail is pretty much the source of all of our problems, especially for ending A. He, he causes us a lot of grief, makes things take longer than they need to. Um, turns out he's tied up in here. Zero! Zero! Generic help background me. color. I could put myself in like an asylum. What's good, Mash? What's poppin'? I don't really know what else I would do as a background. We're just, we're ballin'. Didn't really think about it. Yeah, Zero's like tangled up, not Zero, uh, Mikhail's tangled up here, so we gotta cut these vines down. And nice. There we go, now he's down. Also, thank you for the good luck. Also, I've always found it really cute that Mikhail wears like a saddle for Zero. Because like his back's spiky. Shut up, this was no picnic for me either. Now hurry up and destroy that wall. But uh, yeah, now uh, now Mikhail's back. He can break through these walls. We can, uh, we can finish the level here. There's one more fight. Oh, yeah. um, we get to see the spirits interact with the Skelly boys that we we first encountered in the last level. It's uh, not my favorite because they make it significantly harder to actually kill the Skelly boys. 
but uh, yeah, now we can uh, teleport here and take out a lot of them all at once. But the thing is, we don't actually have to kill the skelly boys, we have to kill these spirits. Whatever happened but what's to Segoy? Segoy was that? in the chat for a single message and then died. Damn. Yeah, rip Segoy. Yeah, the annoying part of these spirits is like you'd think, okay, we'll just kill them before they get in the get the skelly boys, uh, which like yes, ideally, but uh, they like to just continually go into the skelly boys, and uh, Zero likes to not target the thing that you would very obviously want to target, so uh, it, she won't actually hit the spirit even if you knock them off, uh, like is happening right now. So they just keep going back onto the Skelly Boys. So I need to pop in toner mode again, just to make it easier, because I don't feel like dealing with that headache. And in toner mode actually targeted the... No, it didn't. I mean, it did. It targeted it, but, like, it didn't kill it. Again, this is, this is the game ever. This is the game ever. Um, but there we go. We did it. We got there. And then advancing. That's over this way. We. We did it. Hope things have been going well. I, I mean, I'm, for my part, run's going pretty okay. Yep. Um, not that, uh... Not that there's too much going on that could go wrong. Pretty straightforward game. Yeah. Since I'm not doing the out-of-bounds stuff. But, you know, we're balling. We're having fun. We're having a good time. I haven't really screwed a bunch up yet. We're going fast. Those change looks with those evolutions. I think the saddle on Mikhail's back is actually a part of him. Interesting. That's a good point, yeah, because the, the whole model does change when he evolves. Huh. I wonder. I wonder about that now. Also, this is the king of the fairies. He's equally as nice and awesome as everyone else. Where's three? She's in the forest shrine. All right, where's the forest shrine? Oh. <laughs> if I were to hand over that information, you'd kill me on the spot. I'm not going to be making that mistake. I'm the fairy king, remember? No one is more wise or clever or boundlessly intelligent than I. I'm not gonna kill you. I find that hard to believe. I, uh... Promise? I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Also, yeah, Zero uh, got fed up with the king of the fairies and killed him, causing the death of all the fairies in the forest. Um, this will definitely not be an inciting incident for one of the alternate endings we're going to get later. Nope, not at all. Yeah, that that won't cause bad things to happen at all. No, why would it? God, <laughs> also, uh. Mikhail's so like stunned by what just happened that he just freezes up entirely. I love when he does that. Mikhail. Better just start staring at motherfuckers. <laughs> Mikhail's just about to start staring at motherfuckers like, whoop. Uh, Mikhail is just, uh, fucking, uh, that one Spongebob. That's true. Alright, I should have enough if I... ...mathed my math... My, my math correctly. Um, to upgrade... ...to level 3 bracers. Yep. There we are. And... We are good to go. <laughs> Gosh. Um... Yeah, I really don't have anything to talk about at the moment. I'm sort of just waiting for the lore to pick yeah, up, which doesn't happen until ending A. So yeah, it's like we're basically we're basically in uh, in movie movie night mode for now. All right. 
Well, now that we are about to get the chakras, do we want to talk about how they work? Uh, we still have one more level before that happens. Because yeah. we haven't, uh, Met we haven't Octa actually yet. fought no, with Octa yet. Mm -hmm. It was a really, really hard boss fight. It's one of like the first major hurdles for the uh, for the team. It happens at the end of this level. Because Octa is pretty powerful. And be thankful you've still got a oh yeah, to strongest member. Unironically, like, isn't he like actually the best fucking AI partner? They're all roughly the same in the sense that none of them are useful outside of a certain few very specific situations. But um, in terms of like in-game, in-universe power, um, I think Octa is probably second. I would say Sense probably the most powerful. Yeah. Alright, so we gotta fight some wolves here, as you do. Me when I see a wolf VTuber. Yeah. Y'all know the drill though, just fight them. Uh, I need to try to get you stunned. Cause like, they like to dodge around, and then you can't hit them. They're the most annoying enemy to fight in the game, in my opinion, at least of the small ones. Um, there's some boss fights that are more annoying, but like those don't really count. Luckily, they don't throw a lot of wolves at you. It's like very rare arenas where those actually show up. Because they prefer to throw very big enemies with very big health bars at you. Uh, so we could talk about that now, Riker, or we could wait until later when it like actually like shows up in the story. Yeah, because this, uh, this game is a prequel to Drakengard 1. I believe I mentioned that earlier. Um, certain endings lead into certain different, uh, different Drakengard games. Uh, specifically ending A is the... Well, it leads into a manga that leads into Drakengard 1. But, I mean, that would mean that ending A leads into Drakengard 1, just that you have to read a manga to fully get how. Alright, here we go. And then, uh, Strength Pot and Intoner Move. Which also kind of works out well, because this run leads directly into Drakengard 1. Ow, 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 it's fire, ow. Like it was planned. Yeah, it's, it's RR lap god block, the, uh, the tradition or so I understand. This is my first time being part of it, which is pretty cool, but, uh, I mean, I've definitely heard about the Drakengard block. And it makes sense, it's a lot of long games, and this is really, really long a thought. Also, yeah, this game actually has like two and a half mangas, I think. Because there's also Urahime 5, which is about like the the sisters' childhoods. Um, and it also has some interesting lore implications, but it's mostly It's mostly supplementary. There's nothing like in that game in, in that manga that helps you further understand the plot of this game. It's just kinda like neat little references. Like there's a line about like, there's some lines about Four and her childhood that you you saw while we were killing her. Um, stuff like that. But, um, no, nothing more important. I would say the, the one that I forgot the name of, um, but the one that happens after ending A of this game is uh, definitely more important for understanding Drakengard 1. Which is also fun because the manga came out after Drakengard 1 came out, so, you know. Um, Something something Kingdom Hearts, something something writing the story as you go, something something, something, I don't know. Uh, the statement is that Drakengard is better than Kingdom Hearts, uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Uh, you are, because Kingdom Hearts is bad. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely God's greatest Kingdom Hearts hater. By the way. In case anyone had yeah. any doubts. Yeah, you got two people in call that actually really fucking hate that game. <laughs> yeah. And just demolish everything. Um. Actually, I think probably the best way to describe it is that Drakengard is just Kingdom Hearts for people with... Haste? At least two mental illnesses. 
Yeah, that's fair. I'm allowed to say that. I have at least two mental illnesses. Also, it's been happening, I haven't pointed it out, but another fun quirk about this game is sometimes it just turns the camera around so that you're facing in the wrong direction. The reason for that, the reason I think that happens uh, is because, like I said, some of the levels later on, they just reuse existing maps, but have you go backwards. And I think at certain points they forgot which one was which, so they think you're supposed to go the other way. <laughs> so they face you the other way. Oh, you move? My cat moved. And here we, we got go. tired. We got tired of me bumping him. It's clearly only requiring one mental illness. True. But yeah, we got to fight two undead Gyguses here. But this fight actually ends up being really easy. Unless uh, you aren't able to parse video games that run in MS PowerPoint, because then it's actually very hard. Uh... <laughs> Because what we do is we call Mikhail here, and then we switch to the the uh, the bracers, and then we just try to group them up. And what'll happen is um, I'll get hit and lose a bunch of health and be in danger. Um, but no, they'll get grouped up here, and uh, we can just kind of like keep them stun locked here because Mikhail will knock them down, and then like the cannon boy up on the cliff that's firing at us will knock them down and. It'll just be a feedback loop for a little bit, so we can get a lot of damage without them really being able to retaliate. But the unfortunate side effect is that uh, the screen, the, the display ends up looking like it currently does, and um, you know that's not super ideal. If I'm honest. Just, uh, just, just, just kill him, and then here's the other one. They actually did get separated, which is kind of sad, but that's fine. That tends to happen if one of them gets up or you get hit by one of the cannonballs, which I did because I was standing at the wrong angle. But yeah, our strength pot wore off, but it's not the end of the world because uh, friendly fire is on. All this hell divers too, the way I be dropping explosives on my friends. Um, yeah. And there we go. That's a fight. And now, we have the Octoboss fight. It's very intense. Blink and you'll miss it. Yep. And the lead-up cutscene is also really good, so I'm gonna shut up for it. My name is Octa. I am the disciple of Lady Three, Mistress of the Wood. Oh, really? That's awfully nice of you to come to me. Those goddamn fairies were starting to piss me off. All right, Grandpa, you ready to get crushed? <laughs> if you only knew the surprise I've got in store for you! I surrender. You what? I surrender. I came here because I want to join your cause. Well spoken, my winged friend. <laughs> uh, sure, whatever. Yep, so Octa shows up and he's just like, hey, I surrender. Let me join your team. I love that cutscene so much. I don't I I don't know how they timed it out so perfectly, but like the comedic timing on like when Dito sneezes and like when people say things 
It's so good. It's peak. I love that part so much. I think that might be my favorite scene in the game, actually. But yeah, now we have the chakrams. So this next level is a tutorial level for the chakrams because they operate a little bit differently from the other weapons in the game. Um, at least in terms of how you're supposed to... Uh, how you're intended to interact with them. How much do I need to upgrade the bracers? Uh, 19. Okay, yeah, that's right. Cool. So top up on health pots and that should be all we need for now. Um, but yeah, so this is the tutorial level. We get a sense of how we're intended to use them, and then we'll only use them like this, like, one or two more times ever. Uh, because using them with weapon swap is a lot more interesting and a lot more useful. But yeah, now that we have Okta, he can lead us directly to where, uh, 3 is. Which, uh, big surprise is the big-ass tree we saw when we entered the forest. So, realistically, we probably could have figured that out on our own with no trouble. Also, I picked up a weapon in the last level. Um, I didn't really draw attention to it, but that did happen. Um, it's a weapon. That, that's all I've got to say about it. We won't be equipping it. There's three more to pick up in uh, ending A. Alright, here we go. I'm going to switch to the sword for a little bit just for movement. And then there's our tutorial. So we switch here, and then more tutorial. So, as intended, this is a ranged weapon. So if you hold triangle, you get slow-mo, bullet time, you can target people, shoot them, boom. That's what this entire level is, pretty much. There's going to be these puzzle cubes that show up. A uh, puzzle in very, very large, exaggerated quotes, because the puzzle is uh, hit them with a weapon. Um, and that's going to get us used to locking on the enemies with the chakrams. We will start doing the weapon swap stuff next level, um, because this level doesn't really have any enemies worth uh, using the, uh, the weapon swap on. It's pretty much exclusively these weird-ass cubes. So yeah, there's a cube. There it is. When I... Also, there's these weird riddles that uh, that three says whenever they show up. Uh, they they don't mean anything actually. Don't waste brain power solving them. The entire point is that they're nonsense. It gets even worse later. Uh, at one point, uh, she tells you to brush your teeth five times daily. She just she just says stuff. It's it's really kind of like me to be honest. Just just kind of says stuff. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't really have to make sense. Uh, the the nonsensical nature of it is the point. And now more cubes. Not again. So we go over here to get money, and then we target all of them, and there we go. From that angle, you can actually see and hit all of them as they open up. And then you just wait. What makes you say so? Hello. She has Counterpoint, is she wrong though? About brushing the teeth, not necessarily. I definitely do need to brush my teeth more in general. But everything else? Mm, no. No. You think so? Oh. Actually, that's fine, because we'll get to hear more dialogue, because there's actually some interesting stuff in it. In a normal run, you would actually want to wait there for that dialogue tree to end, because if you if you do, it'll skip another one, and this section will end earlier, instead of making you wait for dialogue for a door to open. How am I not in range of that? Hello? Anyway, this one is just a big circle of cubes. Certain ones will open at certain times. As you take them out, other ones will start opening. <laughs> God. Some in my throat. Oh. There we go. And there's one. The blammo. Uh, okay, damn. I thought it would open up, but it didn't. There we go. Heck that chest. 
It's not too bad, but you do kind of have to know it's there ahead of time or else it's annoying. Because, like, you have to keep the gargoyle cubes alive so that you can ride one of them up to where it is. Okay, there's something fun we can do here if I get over here fast enough. Here we go. So, all the cutscenes are in engine, as mentioned. Not that it's anything revolutionary, especially for Unreal 3, but uh, if we stand on top of this cube, it, uh, it has some fun results. And here's the results. She just kind of just kind of rides it up. <laughs> seems like a royal pain, all right. Indeed she is. Although her body more than makes up for it. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> well, she must be and uh, you can also get a sense of Octa's personality here. Uh, Dito is a sadist. Uh, Decadus is a masochist. Octa is just regular horny. Vanilla, if you will. That actually comes up later. He, uh, at some point, he will get roasted by Zero for being too vanilla. And also for not showering. But yeah, here's the actual lore that I was talking about. So every, every disciple is 22, despite how they may look. That's kind of weird. I wonder what's up with that. And there we go. Now another cutscene of all time. You may have noticed Mikhail's been nowhere to be be seen in this level. Wonder where, wonder what he's up to. To reach it. We must first navigate through the dreaded lost forest. Oh, he's just taking a shit. Let's go. Okay. And Octa being Octa gets a little bit too curious. <laughs> so uh yeah, that's that's that level. <laughs> One more regular stage and then a boss fight. And uh, then we're done with uh, chapter three here. Yippee. Still don't have enough, uh, enough money for the last bracers upgrade, but that's fine. Um, we ball. Uh, we get it for sure on this one. And uh, this, we've been teasing it a little bit up to now. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is the first level where we're going to get spin to win. Yeah, welcome to how we're about to play the rest of this game. Well, if I do the weapon swap correctly, we get spin to win, but hopefully I will. Um, you'll definitely see it at some point in the run. Hopefully a lot. Kind of depends on my hands. But it's pretty neat. And now the Lost Forest. Another definitely not Zelda reference. So there's these babies, they point in a direction, we go in that direction. That's, uh, that's the gimmick. That's it. And here's a bridge. Uh, nothing bad ever happens to this party on bridges. 
definitely not everyone in the game thus far. More orange cat behavior. Yeah. And now he's in the river. You may be asking yourself, why didn't he fly? Who who knows? Who knows? Orange cat behavior. Lady Zoo. What am I right? Peggy that. Bad. Yes. And that should well, put us over the edge for being able to get our last uh bracer upgrade. There are actually a couple of skips you can do here. One that's fast, one that's a little bit less fast. Uh, the one that's less fast, you, you kind of just skip the gimmick here. I'm not going to, though, because it's kind of funny. It's kind of goofy how they just kind of, like, steal from Zelda unapologetically. Thank you for the raid. What's good, everyone? It wasn't his turn with the brain cell. That's true. I wish it was my turn with the brain cell. I don't think I've ever had a turn with it. So yeah, the definitely not Zelda jingle. Do orange burbs share brain cells with the orange cats? Uh, depends on the day. Sometimes the orange cats have more brain cells. I will say the babies are kind of creepy. Also, you may be wondering if, if you know. Hey, is that a reference to that other Dragon Guard game? Yes. Yeah, this, this is directly... This has much to do with uh, that uh, enemy type from that video game. <laughs> and then they keep getting funnier and goofier. Like, that one does a full 360 for no goddamn reason. Like, I just love this bit as a joke. Like, it could have gone the quick way around, but it did a full circle and then some. Also, yeah, it also pushed me in Dito. Let's see if we can get that to happen again. Nice. Alright, there we go. And then, uh... Shroop. I think this is the last one where skeletons actually show up. The last one that just, like, you go there at points. Because, like, Lamau. These babies are definitely me when the uh, when the pizza rolls are done. And there we go. We got to the end. Uh, we're finally free ah. of this stupid ship. All right, here we go. Now the fog's gone, and uh, here we go. This is a, is a minotaur or a centaur. I think it's a Minotaur and the Centaurs are later, but I might have that backwards. Yeah, Centaur. Um, so we pop this, we pop in toner mode. And then we do a combo. So you'll notice I switched to the Chakrams before this, and now... There it is! Alright. So square triangle, and then we sit here. My hands are not on the controller. Yep. And so that's how, a fight. How's it hanging? I should have let that dialogue play out, but I'll just summarize it for you. Uh, Okta got distracted during that fight and decided to measure his peepee -pee instead of fighting. He wanted, he wanted to see how long it was. Uh, I'm not kidding. That's what that dialogue led into. Unfortunately, we uh we kill things a little bit too fast now because we have all the weapons. Yeah.
So we are going to miss a lot of dialogue that way, unfortunately, especially at the end of levels, but I don't know. Most of the most of the end level dialogue is is just comedy. It's very rarely actually lore important. How big was it? They don't say, but uh, probably pretty large. How big was what? Uh, Octa's PP. Oh yeah, Octa's PP is like massive. Yeah, it's pretty significant. It's sizable. All right, that's the last weapon upgrade for. Ending A. So we just top up on like, strength pots. Because, like, that's the whole gag with Okta, is that he is who he is. Uh, and he's standing there with massive dong. Yeah, he's a horny old man who's also a 22-year-old. Yeah, those ages aren't important, not at all, nope. I mean, the actual numbers are arbitrary, but it, uh... The, w the way that that fact pays off, definitely. I think of all the plot twists in the game, that was actually one of the ones I, I expected the least, because, like, when you find out what the disciples actually are, it it's something... It's, it's it, it, We'll just say for now, it's something that you would not expect them to be. Like, you could not possibly guess it before it happens. Keep your eyes on the ground. Yes, we don't want to stumble here. It's not that. Looking at that dummy just pisses me off. But yeah, Mikhail got uh, Mikhail got captured again. Got a little bit captured. So before we can actually do the goddamn it, shield boys, uh, can I just like there we go, move them out of the way a little bit, and then just walk by him. But yeah, before we can actually do the fight with three, also we made it to the big ass tree. Turns out the big ass tree is the forest shrine, and three is here. Uh, yeah. You're not going, oh, and we walk over here, way. and Kablamo, there he is, just kind of, just kind of hanging out. You're not going, oh, or... <laughs> and Kablamo, bonk. Now we can fight three. You can whine at me later. Hey three. So her whole thing is that she enjoys uh, experimenting Three. on anything that breathes, and also being a shut-in. Octa, please, let's put an end to this here. I don't understand. What are you doing over there? I'm just hanging out. I betrayed you. Is that so? <sighs> She's just like me for real. In any case, you might want to pay a little more attention to your surroundings. Hmm? Oh look, human experimentation. This is fine. If you uh, play the DLC, you can get uh, you can get some some lore documents if you if you level up uh, Three's character, and uh, it turns out that these guys actually let her do this because uh, they thought she was hot. Yep. But yeah, we gotta kill 99 of them. They spawn in pretty slowly. Um, slower than we can actually, like... Well, like, we kill them faster than they can spawn in, so we're kind of just waiting and just chilling. Three more. There we go. Nice. 
you don't say. Alright. You must put an end to these attractions. Angel time. You seem to be somewhat confused, Octa. A disciple doesn't choose his intoner. An intoner chooses her disciple. So that thing earlier about Dito and how Five was able to mind control him into summoning the angel for her, that's a thing all of the intoners can do. Behold the third song! Quickened puppets of antiquity! <laughs> The raging demons deathly gaze. The army of heretics that rejects the natural cycle render into ash the powers of reason and order. I, Octa, summon thee in my name. Army Sire, invade! I'm sure this is fine. And why the tree purple? This is Life how bad he made. So yeah, those statues from earlier, not only are they linked to uh, that one enemy type in that one Drakengard game, um, the statues from earlier were also just her angel. But yeah, we gotta do the same thing. So there's 50 of these, they'll trickle in a little bit, and we spin to win, and then if they jump and grab onto us, we just dash, they'll go flying off, and then we perish. So this goes by a lot faster, and then it's actual boss fight time. There we go. So they do a fusion dance, and now they are Mega Baby. Bonk. Bonk. So we just do that to get a little bit of chip damage out while it does this. And then it shoots a big ass laser. And then when the laser's done, we bonk it a couple more times, then wait for it to start firing its laser again. And then same thing, it'll become vulnerable after. Bonk. Alright, now that the head is detached, we pop a strength pot. And we just follow it and uh, blast it and shoot them. We want to avoid the middle of the arena because the body's still active and it's like swinging its little knife hands around like a freak. And uh, that's not ideal. Ow. Okay. And we wait. I kind of screwed up the intoner mode there. I thought if I did it early enough it would blast the head away, but nah. Not so lucky. So this might be a three-phase fight. The blammo. Also, yeah, Mikhail's, uh, Mikhail's feeling a little weird around three. That's kind of, that's kind of strange, isn't it? Huh. I wonder what that's about. Okay, we still have uh -oh, our strength pot for now. Uh oh, stinky. stinky! Okay, there we go. And shoot them, bitches. Shoot okay, them, bitches. I'm gonna head. I'm gonna head to bed soon. Oh, okay. Um, Sounds good. If you wanna fully like mash or something into coming and hanging out with you, I think I'm good for now. If I start to fall asleep, I'll I'll see if anyone can hop in. But yeah, you're good to head to bed. Also, this fight. Zoo, that oh yeah. By the way, this fight's pretty. Yeah. Baby plastic. It's just kind of long, because you can't do a lot of damage when it's full body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't kill three because you had to kill him with uh with dragon. Did you really think something like But uh, that? speaking of dragon, I wonder what Mikhail's up to. Yeah, what is now Mikhail up to? Miles. Yeah, that's normal. That's fine. Oh, hey, Mikhail. What's up, buddy? What the? Did he really just do that? The dragon shows his true colors. Is 
Ki Hongi. And uh, there's the boy. There's Scent. Oh, well. Hello there. There he is. Scent. And I yeah. was sent here by Lady Two. I've come to take this horrid dragon off your hands. Uh, what? Wait. Ooh, sorry. Out of time. I'm kind of a busy guy. See, fact, I only had eight hours of sleep last night. Yeah, that's not enough. If I weren't as powerful as I am. I'd likely be dead by now. And that would be a shame of epic proportions. <laughs> but listen to me go on. I'm gonna be late, and then Lady Two might get angry. Not that I'm scared of her or anything. Oh no, nothing like that. Wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea about me. Anyway, gotta go, kids. Ta ta for now. And then they just, uh, they just, uh, they just leave. In, in the, the funniest looking way they could have possibly left. They, they just, they just float up with rocket boots. I guess they can do that. They just stole your dragon. Yeah, also they took Mikhail. Which leads us into my least favorite chapter of Route A. Yeah, two's level kind of sucks dick. Yeah, every actually. every desert level is just kind of like mid at best. The final boss is kind of cool though. You get to do some cool speedrun stuff with it. Yeah. Also, for some reason, this level keeps a little like purple overlay from uh, from that stage over the screen until the next loading screen. I don't know what causes it. It just kind of happens. Uh, yeah, looks kind of strange. Kind of cool though. Zero defeated three, but lost Mikhail to the disciple sent in the process. The group headed for Saint's home in the Land of Sands to try and rescue the dragon. So he's the twos just yep. So they're just talking about Scent, because Dito knows him. Really? She's got And they're wondering, like, huh, what's two up to? What's she cooking? We probably shouldn't let her cook, because we want to kill her. And if she cooks food, she can she can eat food. And if she eats food, she'll be healthier. And if she's healthier, that'll be uh, that'll make it harder for us to kill her. Correct. I don't know if they've caught on yet that our whole goal is to just murder our sisters. Oh, you yeah, know that's like that's like our char entire character motivation. That's that's what's been going on. Nothing has changed. Our goal is to murder all of our sisters. We are the protagonist, by the way, and I, I do mean that. You wouldn't you wouldn't think it based on the information we have now, but but I assure you, we we are the protagonist. God damn these wolves are annoying. Wolves can sense the murderous intent. Of All right, so this level has some archers that are kind of out of reach. Um, like there's actually like you could get up there with a weapon, but like it'd be annoying. So just chakram. And then try not to get hit with an arrow. Ow. And then Kablamo, and then we get our bracers out. And Kablam. And just do shit. Just, just slap him. I probably didn't need to do that there, actually, in hindsight. Um. I don't know. A lot of these like regular enemy fights is not really like an optimal way to do it because their movement's so unpredictable. At least, at least for 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 my money, anyway. I'm sure if you play it more frequently than I, you can probably get used to it. There are definitely people that are significantly better at this game than I am. Um, I am just like I said, the only person who can who can consistently finish a run of this specific category because of the final mm. boss. 
Yep. And bonk. There we go. Burb go burr. What's good, Tackless? And yeah, door animation. I'm sure we haven't gotten tired of this yet. Reminder that we're not even halfway through the game. My throat's on fire here. Oh, oh, oh. Perhaps it's the lion steady says sure Raka. whatever whatever you want to say he has some weird ways of phrasing things love pantry also comes up at some point later yeah Raka does have some weird names for vaginas okay there we go and i actually got a good weapon swap here um I don't usually even go for that, because you can just teleport around with the intoner mode, but for some reason I decided to get the weapon swap, and that actually is going to help us do a pretty decent amount of damage here, plus move faster until we get to uh, the last enemy of the area. But here we get introduced to uh, cannoneers, uh, or at least ones that we can kill. There was one in that uh, double Gygus fight earlier. Ah. Bruh. But yeah, now we they're actual enemies that we can kill and they're annoying. Um, there is some interesting depth to them. If this was a better put together game, it'd be kind of cool because you can destroy the cannon and then they just sit there and cower in fear. Then you could like theoretically use that to go focus on other more dangerous enemies. But like this game never really makes use of that, so you just, you just kill the dude. Um, but you can kind of see what they were going for. They were trying some neat things with this game. And now wolves. But yeah, with the doors, I, I did I did uh, mention earlier, I haven't been drawing attention to it when it happens because I'm just so used to it that I don't even think about it most of the time. But like, yeah, sometimes they say now loading, sometimes they don't. It is always a loading screen, but it's random whether it decides to actually tell that. If, if it decides to be honest about it or not. You all right, Decadus? Also, Decadus is really enjoying the desert because having sand in his eyes is painful, and he likes that. Uh, most normal disciple. Unironi unironically most normal disciple. Unironically the most normal of these motherfuckers. It's not even funny. Alright, get the ass. Come on, slash him. So, having the weapon swap there is good, because I can get to the wolf faster. The thing about the wolves in this game is they like to burrow underground. Um, in the desert, specifically, they can do that. And then you have to, like, figure out where they're going to spawn, and it's really obnoxious. With the weapon swap, I was able to kind of just keep on him, and it was fine. And now we can, uh, brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
he'd work in like marketing at a, at a big marketing so if, firm if sent, no, but no, no, happened no. to be sent into was in the modern well. day is sent lived in the modern day he's a crypto bro no, I, I was saying Decadus. Scent is absolutely oh. a crypto bro. Scent absolutely yes. okay. owns multiple silly monkeys. Yeah, fucking, yeah, Scent is a crypto bro. Oh, exactly. And here I thought you'd be smart enough to stay away. Well, I suppose that's just the curse of being... Decadus is that white collar guy that buys feet pics online and lies about it. Yeah. But he's able to mask it pretty well. Like, you wouldn't know it to look at him unless you were, like, you were like chill with him. I guess that's yeah. Too much of and then he'd talk about it too much and be uncomfortable. I mean, uh, but that's still more normal than being a crypto bro. I, meet, I, right? I would I would definitely rather hear about feet pics than uh than NFTs. This guy's really starting to piss me off. You're two's disciple, yeah? Should I kill you too? <sighs> oh, you see, now we've gone from bad to worse. Have we? Can you stop doing that with your eyes? It's making me uncomfortable. Really How do you get up there? You know that? I guess the universe simply can't help those. Who what if, why don't we just throw a sword at him? What are you trying Zero. to do? One of these days, that dragon is gonna be your downfall. Haha, <laughs> foreshadowing. And when that moment comes, it'll be too late for regrets. Traitor. Also, he teleports away during this. He can't do that at any other point in the game. They just never acknowledged that he did that once. Yeah. Um. It's like the one time... You'd think there'd be a lot more like plot holes and inconsistencies, but as far as I can think off the top of my head, that's actually the only one in the entire game. Everything else is actually like explained. I don't know why you can teleport there. You just kind of can. Bro's chilling. Excuse me. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna go to bed because I'm going to Disney tomorrow. Okay. Enjoy Disney. Please. Thank you for hanging out. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Thank Yo. you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the game. Bruh. Bruh. I, I would have played the metal pipe sound back at her, but, like, y'all wouldn't have been able to... Actually, no, y'all would have been able to hear it because I'm just capturing Discord's audio. You know what? Fuck it. Let's do it during this loading screen. Uh... If I can clip find it. <laughs> There we go. What was the meaning behind this ominous we did prophecy? It. In search of information, Zero traveled to the ruins. But yeah, go check out Mew Minty on Twitch. I just ran up a god. Well, there's no such So, guess we'll I heard good enough. So also, my bad on that being loud. I I, I wasn't going to say anything. I wasn't going to admit my my own fault, but I forgot that 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 soundboard effect specifically was insanely loud because i haven't used it in a hot minute <laughs> my bad my fault i uh oh it works out that mean that means that means y'all get to stay awake a bit longer so i have i have chat to to ship post with before before real ep hours wake the fuck up Wake the fuck up! What the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> anyway, now we're in a cave. Um, nothing really else to. Oh wait, no, this is the last unique enemy type. I'm going to say that, and then there's going to be another one again at some point, probably, because I'm a freak who forgets. Because a lot of the enemies in this game are super forgettable. But, uh, yeah, now we have wizards. They're like regular soldiers, but instead of swords, they shoot fireballs at you and teleport nice. around. They're really annoying. Um, but, yeah. That, uh, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. 
Later on, there's a Necromancer version. The only difference between these and the Necromancers is the Necromancers are purple. That's it. That's the only difference. But they do have a different name, so honorable mention. Uh, the the attempt was made for some type of variety in this video game. Bonk. Bruh. Bruh. Lock onto the right one, please. There we go. Bonk. Slap him. But yeah, if you do like the dive kick, it uh, knocks him down and then they're open to damage for long enough to kill him. So that's what we do. And then last one. Unfortunately teleported pretty far away. But that's that. Boom. Try to get over to the door. Pretty much everything you've been seeing is what you're going to continue to be seeing. Uh, we go fast through the level, kill things, etc, etc. Uh, again, I am really just holding out until we get uh, the first ending because that's when lore happens. Or, or I guess like really starts again. kicking off because I mean technically the lore is already happening but you, you wouldn't really understand it. It requires a high IQ, kind of like Rick and Morty. Um, high IQ uh, video game, high IQ story. Um, only the most wholesome of Reddit users can understand Drakengard 3. I hate this bit, I'm gonna stop doing it. Um, and yeah. But for now, I kinda wanna kinda wanna just keep it keep it on the low. So y'all y'all, if you don't know, discover it with the cutscenes. Because it is really, really lots of lore. And if I do all the lore now, then the back half of the speedrun will have not lots of lore. It'll have very little lore, in fact. Also, I screwed up the platforming, Lamau. But if you angle it right, you can kind of just sword dive into these doors here and not have to mess with the moving platforms too much. Alright, bonk. And then... Over here, and... Whee! And... Whee! I don't know what those shield guys thought was going to happen, being on a ramp that goes downward, where we have the high ground, we can kind of we can just dive over them, you know? Just not really, not really impeding our progress at all. Not the greatest job. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand why, uh, why two hired them. Also, this is two's domain. Again, we've been counting, we've been counting down from, uh, from five. So you probably already expected that uh, the next one we're going after is two. But uh, the next one we're going after is two. Yeah, we activate spin to win. We have our uh, defense and attack pots up so they can't hit us out of it. And then uh, if you want to get out of the spin to win but keep the weapon swap, you just have to pull up the weapon wheel and then uh, immediately close it without clicking a button to switch weapons. And there we are. That is two golems dead. There's a door. Oh look, a hallway. And a checkpoint. Very cool. Thank you, Kanye. Very cool. Skip that, because it's just showing you. Oh look, platforming. Usually you can kind of just go uh, up on this one. Or actually, there's even faster way around, uh, if I recall correctly. But you can just kind of use your big sword to clip through that uh, that hole between the pillars, but up here is one of the weapons we need. So I do have to slowly ride the platform up, because there's not really a way I can get up there any faster than I did just now. And then, uh, yeah, there we are. And yeah, there we go. This is where the, uh, the, where the soldiers' barracks are, as it turns out. They have them in an underground temple. Mm. It appears to be an underground this is where the soldiers live. But unfortunately, not where Chu is, it would seem. No Alright, so just, uh, you know, what you're, what, you're, what you're used to seeing here. Just, just the usual. And here we go. And oh look, uh, what are they? What are they called again? Fucking uh, ogres? I think so. Whatever. Something. Y'all have seen them before. Y'all know them. Y'all love them. The big sword boys. Oh look, 
her other arm. But luckily, she can just Ethan Winters it back on because uh, the swords they're using were not made out of dragon. Hope you can stick that back on. Let's see. Yeah, she's having a normal one. I hate when that happens. Probably happens to me every couple weeks. There. Shall we finish this? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, Zero's thighs have been on screen the entire time. I that's that's like that's the most normal thing this game does, I would say. Oh. We did get spin to win, but I need to heal there. Like I said, we're at that point of the game now where uh Despite um, having the defense pot on, we still take a lot of damage from enemy attacks. Okay. I'm gonna try to push myself forward a little bit here, because it's possible to get them in a position where they uh, they get stun locked before they can get far enough in the circle to take a bunch of damage. There we go. Um, kind of like that, but they'd only be taking one hit before they got stunned, and that's a level. I must learn all there is to know. I want to get that checked to the doctor. You should only lose your arm every three months at most. It doesn't well, feel pain it's been happening since I was a child, and Seems I'm, getting I'm still alive, so I'm going to say it's fine. I'm going to say it's fine. Three down, two to go. Yep, that's how numbers work. Congrats. You've graduated preschool, Zero. Oh, and don't tell Mikhail about this. And keep on clicking through as you do. Very nice, very nice. Luckily, the desert chapter is very short. Unfortunately, the next level feels very long. You'll see why very quickly, I imagine, unless my PS3 plays nice today. So remember what I was saying about particle effects in this game not really playing nice? This is, uh... This is, um... This is particle effects town. For real, for real. After decimating the enemy's base, Zero discovered documents pointing to the location of the Shrine of Sands. But the path that would take her there was a blistering hell that punished all trespassers. <laughs> yep. So as you saw in that, that little, like, pan over, uh, this level? Very big. Um, so I, I sort of, sort of dropped hints at it earlier about a level we'd be playing a couple times uh, this being the first one first time we we are in this area of two in the game um and you'll see it's a pretty big area and some of the dlc and the way they reuse this map actually uh does add to the theory but my theory was that this was one of the first levels they made because, like I said, previous Drakengard games let you, um, oh my god, uh, let you hop on the dragon at will to move quickly and take out enemies from the sky. And I think they had intended for that to be how this game works and made an open area level before realizing uh, it runs the way you are currently looking at. So... I think they probably scrapped that idea, but uh, but repurposed the map because they spent time making it. Um, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, that means that this level is ass because of the little like sun wavy effect. It uh, it causes the game to be even more PowerPoint than usual, and I hate it. 
Not to mention it's big and most of the levels spent running around. So the front page of speedrun.com. Yo, what's good, gamer? Heck yeah. We got front page time. You love to see it. And we got weapon swap. That's perfect. I usually miss it here because of how much is loaded in on this level. It uh, it's hard to get the uh, the timing correctly. But uh, with this, we can kind of ignore the heat mechanic. Also, the heat mechanic. You may notice that uh, our health is going down whenever we're not in the shade, and then it goes back up when we are in the shade. So that is temporary damage. If we don't stand in the shadow uh, to heal it, it'll keep going down. Um, if it'll heal when we're in the shade, but if something hits us while the damage is gone, it deals that much damage. Nothing revolutionary. Pretty, pretty easy mechanic to follow, but uh, that's what's happening in this level. But uh, the weapon swap does let us move around fast enough for it to not really be a problem. So uh, yeah, here we are. Hello, wizards. What y'all doing? Ow. Ow. Fuck you. Hit me with fire tornadoes. Like freak. Yeah, that's definitely the one I wanted to lock onto, not the one right in front of me. Thank you, Drakengard 3, for always having my best interests in mind. I don't want to risk losing weapon swap for the next little uh, little run, so I'm just kind of keeping the weapon swap, even though it would technically be faster to do gauntlets here. I don't really feel like dealing with the consequences of missing it if I were to. So, bonk. And then off we go. door opens up and I hope we're done with the wizards I hope no more suns show up oh look another sun what do you look at that more wizards to go kill you love to see it went the went the suboptimal way hold on there's like a straight line you can take to get where we're going so we need to go over here now and then you know get past those wolves we just move fast enough that uh they don't really matter. Can't really do anything to us. And boom. And here we go. And then there's four wizards that stay in the sun. We just want to bonk them to stop that from happening. So we can uh, we can get our frames back because that animation is a problem. And there's not going to be any more traveling, luckily. So we can switch to the bracers here and just let's kill the wizards. God damn it! There we go. And hit him before he can do fireballs. I don't know what you were firing at, buddy. But uh, you won't be firing at anything else, you freak. And kill you before you can teleport away. And then here's the last one. Just, uh, just hit him. There we go. Cool. And then over here. Another fight. We get introduced to a new form of the centaur. Edge time for me. Have a good run. All right, see you, Riker. Have a good night. So we're going to switch to the Chakram, pop strength, pop defense. Wait a little bit just so he gets closer, so that way when we get out of here, he's right here for us to wail on him. And Kablamo. Oh. Fuck, I missed uh missed weapon swap. Unfortunate. No spin to win. No bitches. That's fine. We can still melt him relatively quickly. There we go. That's fight. And boom. Up ahead, I'd imagine. A 
So the way the flame centaur works is regular centaur, but whenever it's active in the arena, it does that uh, the heat damage like the sun. Luckily, without the uh, the camera filter though, so it doesn't delete our frames like the suns do. Um, yeah, and that's my second least favorite level in the game. So it is mostly uphill from here. Ugh. Okay. Death. Boom. 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 And boss time. Yippee! Yippee! Oh god. I'm trying to hold off on drinking my energy drink for as long as I possibly can. I know I'm gonna need it at some point to finish this run, but uh I'm trying to I'm trying to save it for as long as I can. But uh the eepiness is gonna start kicking in here soon, unfortunately. Because it is three in the AM. But yeah, so this one starts out again, just a bunch of soldiers. They like to be annoying and only spawn in behind you after you reach a certain threshold, so we kind of have to go back every couple of couple of areas here and clean up a little bit. Boom. Bang. But y'all know the drill. Spin the win. Let me try to get over here as fast as possible. If I had flown, I actually could have uh, could have probably done it a little bit faster, but... Um, the goal is to land on top of that barrier as it spawns so that right after you just fall into the hole. But hey, there's two. And scent. Friends. Something Welcome seems a little off, though. Two. Wonder what's up with that. Lady two is a tad exhausted at the moment. Just like me, for real. Uh, for yeah. real, for real. <laughs> well... What can I say? I guess my physical gifts speak for themselves. You know, I actually try to make sure she enjoys our little liaison just as... Lady Two is lost in her dreams right now. Perhaps you could try not to interrupt. Her mind's gone, isn't it? She wasn't fully developed. Her body couldn't handle the power of her song. Hand her over. I'll end her suffering. Yeah, I'm afraid I can't do that. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Well, of course I don't. <laughs> Duh. I mean, look. I'm just some idiot old disciple after all. It's pretty simple, really. All I do is put my nose to the grindstone and follow orders. Speaking of which, she kind of ordered me to kill you, so... You really are an idiot. All right, milady. Open up and say, ah... Uh... Yes, perfect. Just like that, keep it up. <laughs> Behold, the second song, Great Fist of Antiquity. The blood wind storms that slash through fate, the steely hand that has sworn allegiance. Cross the countless swarms of writhing death. I sent some of the in my name. Edward death! So here's Egregory. This fight's actually kind of interesting. I have to do math. Um, but to explain what just happened... Uh, God damn it. You to go and the game doesn't place. really explain it that well during the main story. 
but uh, between when we saw her in the opening and now, something very traumatizing happened to them involving an orphanage that they ran, and two basically went uh, catatonic as a stress response. So uh, that's why she is the way she is. But I have to get four hits on each of these. Um, which is annoying because we have to wait for stamina, but the uh, the strength pot stops us from getting hit out of the sky when we get hit by their attacks, so that's why I, that's why I popped a defense pot. So four. Also, yeah, banger soundtrack. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to need you to... There we go. Now we pop this and this. Cool. And see, now they're both small, so what we need to do is we need to chase them around. And one of these pillars, not that one. But one of them is positioned in such a way that, yep, here we go. So now we just uh, keep them in this corner because they always run away from us, and that is fight. I'm a fire in my laser. <laughs> Mikhail, stop complaining. That's a free back massage, dog. Or I guess a wing massage. Nice. He exploded. Hangy. All right, time to eat, brother man. Or you can do that, I guess. Oh my God. Me when the uh, me 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 when the when when the uh, meet me when meet me when the uh, the the me when when the. You evolved. Also, yeah, Mik Mikhail's okay. level three now. Huh. I guess that's that. Sup, well, fucker. Never an handsome man like me knows when he's beaten. I and no sense on the team. On. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be serving Ow. you, Lady Zero. You're not going right. to follow two to the grave. <laughs> Heavens no. I just want a servant and toner. I really don't care which one. And that too is a bold faced lie. I'm just a big idiot, right? Unfortunately, his character kind of regresses from this point, save for a couple of scenes. Um, I feel like they really did do my boy Scent dirty. Because he has a lot of complex stuff going on with this character, but they just never explore it in the main game. Kind of sucks. But yeah, no new weapon type was sent. He just gives you another sword. But uh, that is the last of the disciples. So now we are on our way to Cathedral City. To we're on our way to Shell City to to get King Neptune's crown. Um, now we're on our we're gonna we're gonna go to Cathedral City, the area from the start of the game, the prologue. And, uh, I'm going to kill one. The last sister. There's one more. One has no disciple. Yep, one has no disciple. Finally, so you got a priest and well, do you no, I don't. Wow. Which you may be thinking then. Lady wants us. Huh. huh. <laughs> She's not very powerful then, yeah. right? Okay. Cuz like there's nobody to be horny for her. And uh, that's where you'd be right. But she did do a unholy ritual on another dragon and turned it into a demon named Gabriel. Um, 
and that is the dragon that bit Zero's arm off at the start of the game. You may remember. I didn't really point him out, but uh, yeah, that was like a that was like a really messed up dragon. Bro is not having a good time. In the cathedral city, Zero's group decided to stage an attack from the air. But what they found waiting for them there was none other than one herself, the final intoner. And another thing you'll see about Cathedral City here um, that I didn't really have a chance to draw attention to uh, when we were here during the prologue, but uh, it looks suspiciously like modern Tokyo, huh? That's kind of strange. I wonder what's up with that. Maybe so, but the city's still dead. And soon it'll be drenched in blood once more. Lady Zero? Yeah. Rick. But yeah, this level is just another one of these auto scrollers where we uh we 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 do the we do the Mikhail thing, we we shoot enemy. Yeah, yeah, destroyed modern Tokyo, but modern Tokyo nonetheless. Um And I guess really we could talk about some of that. I could give y'all some of the answers. Because really, the game never explicitly goes into it. So I said earlier in the game that uh, that this is the same universe as ours up until about 300 AD when something happened that changed the course of human history. Uh, well, the thing in question was this city showing up out of nowhere. Alright. This is more auto-scroller, kind of. We have to get Gabriel down to a certain amount of health. There are some things we can do to make it faster. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for us to turn a corner here. Because we are in an invisible time limit here, and certain things will happen at certain times. Uh, right around here it should happen. Whenever he like opens his mouth, that's when he becomes vulnerable. So what we want to do is, and getting hit there was actually probably a good thing. We want to pop these, pop those, and then in toner mode, because that'll knock them over. And then just keep shooting indiscriminately. There we go. That knocks them down. And keep going. And kablammo. But yeah, for functional purposes, Gabriel is basically one's disciple, but the relationship is not the same. Uh, it's more just like, hey, I'm protected by a powerful dragon, so I don't really need powers. But then she did a lot of reading, and it made her powerful anyway, because she learned a lot of tricks about magic. But anyway, around 300 AD, uh, this city showed up, along with magic and dragons. And if you're wondering where that city came from, it came from Nier, um, as well as the dragons. So the dragons were, uh, they were made by humans in, or I guess probably androids at that point, humans or androids, someone in the Nier universe, some research group, based on the corpse of the dragon Angelus from ending E of Drakengard 1, which got teleported into modern Tokyo and then killed and impaled on Tokyo Tower. Uh, so the Drakengard and Nier universe slash timeline is a flat circle, essentially. Uh, the dragons existing in this universe allowed the people in the Nier universe to create dragons and send them to the Drakengard universe, where one would eventually be born named Angelus, who would get sent to the Nier universe. Um, don't worry about that being a uh, chicken and egg situation, it's fine. We just, uh, we just act like that's not a thing. But yeah, more flying. And if you're wondering where that information is, mo for 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 most of uh, well, the entire series history, really, uh, you had to read between the lines and some of the supplementary material to pick all of that up. And then some of it was kind of just uh, fan theory that ended up becoming canon. But uh, there actually is a game for now that uh, covers 
the creation of the dragons and what they are and how they work. And that game is Near Reincarnation, a uh, mobile game which is ending service very soon. God, I wish it was a regular game and not a mobile game. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that's why Modern Tokyo is here. It's uh, because Modern Tokyo got sent to... Sent to Drakengard. It got sent to... D Brazil. And by Brazil, I mean, I mean Drakengard. Alright, let's uh, top up. And Mission 2 here. So Mission 2 and Mission 3 both have... Um have weapons we need to pick up and I should remember which one is which once I see them hopefully maybe but uh yeah we need to we need to not forget to pick those up but this first level here will look familiar to you because this is the exact same area we were in in the uh, prologue. And here we go. Now, uh, now we actually have to fight the haunts, boys. Here they, here they come. Hort. Me, 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 me when, when the horse. And you know what they say about horse? If you horse, then you horse. Drakengard is also part of the Soul Calibur and Grand Blue Fantasy universe, and also the Final Fantasy XIV universe, which means it's also part of the Final Fantasy XII universe. Hmm. And the Fall Guys universe. And, uh, and Amogus. And, and Persona. Because near reincarnation had a uh, Persona 5 collab. Oh, that was the wrong one, I think. Yeah, it was that one. Rick, or is it? It might not be this one either. It's not. I'm just a freak. Okay, and then we fight the same titan from before. I think Reincarnation had other collabs too. It had a Drakengard 3 collab. Uh, it's the only Drakeneer adjacent mobile game that had, uh, that actually got a Drakengard 3 collab in the West, which was kind of a big deal. Because if you know anything about Drakeneer, uh, adjacent games, you'll know that Sino Alice, uh, is another one. It had a near collab and a Drakengard collab, but in the West, it uh, it never got uh, it never got uh, it never got the Drakengard collab for who the fuck knows reason. I think at the time, Square Enix still assumed that nobody in the West actually cared about Drakengard, which uh, they could not have been more wrong. And yes, yeah, spin the win there. I forgot the first time I intoner moded, but we recover. Whee! Whee! Yeah, the weapon chest is actually over here. On this bridge. And then you'll remember a trick we did. We're gonna do that same trick again. Gonna teleport. And I did not want to lock on to my boy there. I also forgot to weapon swap. We actually have a unique opportunity to do the sword weapon swap there. But, uh, I forgore. Uh... 
and here it is. There it is, weapon obtained. In fact, you usually just hit it by doing the doing the, the weapon swing in the air thing. But oh look, a bridge. Nothing ever goes wrong on bridges. Oh look, the bridge collapsed. What compelled you to speedrun Drakengard 3? Um, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> um, that's, that's a really good question. Um, part of it is really just that I like the game. I was before that into near speedrunning a little bit. I was never like super good at it, but just like casually like, hey, it's kind of fun to speedrun these games I like. Uh, so I decided to try it and it turns out it actually does have some interesting uh, combat stuff going on. And also there are some interesting skips now, but those are... I'm too much of a Drakengard 3 boomer to know those currently. Masochist? Yeah. Also, if... if uh, you know, there's only so many people that can reliably clear the final song. Um, so those of us that can are uh, duty-bound to actually do this category, because otherwise nobody will. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, do I'm, I'm doing the work nobody else is willing to do. I'm doing important stuff here. So, spin to win, and then just melt the boy. That's a serious wish to me. Whatever, Decadus. Sometimes I wish you'd never been born either. Nice. And that's the level. Oh. And yes, all of our characters are floating. They didn't put the floor on the right, uh, the right y-axis. Cruel words. All right, the right part go. of the y-axis. I don't know. I don't develop cracks. video games. Yep, that's the door. This door here is made out of door. Man, this stupid dust is getting into... Did you know this stupid dust is getting into all of his cracks? He only tried to say it three fucking times. All right, so that is chapter five, verse two. And here is chapter five, verse three. Soon, after, after we top up on uh, strength and defense pots. And uh, I think I spent a medium healing item. I did not. Imagine needing to heal. Could not be me. I'm, I'm too goaded. And, uh, oh, there's a loading screen tutorial about the combos, and I've kind, of, I've kind of mentioned it. When your combo hits certain points, you'll get either a health or a, or an intoner mode uh, drop. And you can kind of use those to, if you do it at the correct time, if you pop intoner mode and then continue the combo, um, you, uh, Zero's actually here. You, your body self-destructs. That's, that's exactly right. Thank you stomach hot girl stummy problems as 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 is common oh right there's this enemy type there's the imps i forgot about those i like to try to wipe these guys from my brain because uh they suck I hate imps all my homies hate imps and this is why they 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 do a bunch of they do a bunch of bullshit but uh, you knock him down with two uh, two stomp dives here. So bonk, bonk, and then this one's down. They're actually kind of playing nice. Uh, that one's not. That's unfortunate. Okay. And then boom, and boom, and now you're down. And they actually played nice. This fight can take way longer if they decide to do their uh, their charge a lot. But I'm fairly certain now that that is the uh, last new enemy type. But again, I could end up being wrong, so uh, take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, we do this for movement because we can. Um, it's a pretty long stretch here of just moving. 
and uh, there is a weapon on this level. It's kind of annoying. We can speed things up a little bit by... Uh... No, not the enemies. Hit the box! Uh, ow. Oh wait, no, we actually managed to get through it somehow. God. The frames, brother. There we go. Um, so it's right after this barricade that these uh, sword guys behind us like to hit us into a trigger that spawns a thing. There we go, we got the weapon. So now we don't have to run back and grab it. We got lucky that time. And uh, Cerberus recolor, here we go. I think this is the first Cerberus recolor we've seen. Alright, bonk. And bonk. Bonk. Okay, switch to Chakram. Get an intoner mode combo in. Damn it. Alright, just keep bonking him. We'll get there eventually. Also, there's Sense straight up admitting that he lies all the time. They're talking about whatever, like something, something, I hope there's peace, I hope we don't have to fight, a bunch of lame shit, I just want to kill the big three-headed dog. And uh, there we are. Got spin to win right at the end here, and... Blood is dead. He's Jover. Completely. And now we just wait for the dialogue, and then that's level. Here we go. So remember earlier when I said uh, you would not, um, you would not guess what the disciples actually are? It's what, my lady. Give it a sec. I won't be needing you anymore. I can handle the rest by myself. My lady, please. If you're worried about us, no. we. It's unavoidable. Disciples can't remain in human form without an intoner's power. Sooner or later, you'll disappear. So before that happens... I'm giving you your old forms back. So, um... And use the otter system here. How many of you guessed... Pigeons? Because uh, that's what they were. Goodbye. That's what the disciples were. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There it is. <laughs> Alright, we got our weapon. And last level of ending A. Had a full boyfriend, yeah. That's a good visual novel right there. That's that's peak gaming right there. Peak Otome game. All right, we stock up on strength and defense pots, and we go to the final level. <laughs> Twenty-two-year-old birds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back then, I didn't know. I didn't know that defeating one wasn't the end. I also didn't know the truth about Zero and me. Man, I feel bad for Mikhail. 
If you don't know this game, you don't have context for it yet, but uh, you will. You will feel bad for Mikhail. Okay. I actually thought about spending a defense pot here, but I'm not gonna. Ow. Bruh. Okay. Here we go. Now we can start doing the uh, the slash and dash technique to clear out this room a little bit faster. Because the problem with these smaller guys, they're honestly my least favorite enemies to fight. With the damage sponges, at least it's just like one or two. But these guys can be like so spread out. And especially later game, they can have so much health. Like it's when they have you have a bunch of them in a room together, it's it's kind of the worst. And you actually can't use spin to win on them either. You're probably wondering, like, why don't you just go to the center of the room and spin to win, right? Uh, they, uh, they're too short, believe it or not, to get hit by spin to win. It is, it is the most frustrating thing I think I've ever found out in this game, because I tried that strat once, and straight up none of them got hit by it. I, I was I was upset because this level would be so much faster if that worked. Ow. Bruh. Okay. Sorry if you have motion sickness there, but that maneuver makes us get over here a little bit faster. Um uh, here we go, here's one, and then where's the last one we're missing? Uh... There it is. Nice. Okay. Oh, wrong way. Okay. And there should be a health box up here. Fortunately, each room after that's a little bit faster, so we ball. Here we go. Bonk. There we go, yeah, it gets us back up to half. And then, uh, here we go. And there's more. Oh. So we take the cannons first because the cannons are obnoxious. And then we will, after that, have enough uh, in toner mode to teleport around and probably just clear the room. And these guys are so unpredictable that it's just kind of like, okay, well, do it as optimally as you can and just, just plan your route around these rooms based on vibes. I'm not really doing anything fancy that we haven't already seen. And there we go. Now there's only seven left. That worked out pretty well. Alright, nice. And then you. Nice. And then two more. I think it's just both the cannon guys that I didn't kill. There we go. And, oh nope, one of them's Archer. How about you perish? There we go. Nice. One more room and then the boss fight. Grab this mostly for safety. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So here I'm gonna go for the wizards first. Bonk. So you can see here the wizards they count as um, 
soldiers, so there's ten enemies in here. Seven dudes, three wizards. And then there we go. Now we just in toner mode and clear up the rest. Nice. Cool, cool. So all in all, pretty short level. Nothing crazy. There we go. And keep schmoving. And here we go. We have some chests. They're free. I grab them. It's free money. Has the potential to save us a little bit of grinding later. And like, they're right there. So, let's get them. And here we go. There's one. There she is. Here come that boy. Oh shit, what up? What you reading? Ah, uh, zero. It's a record of life in the Cathedral City. A record of life? Zero. Rem reminder to stay hydrated. Don't be like me. This city is said to be the origin of all magic. Stay wet, if you will. Spells were crafted here that even now are far beyond our abilities. Where did this? Yeah, basically she just sits in here and what reads all day like a nerd, while her dragon does everything for her. To the people who once possessed it. Ow. I thought if I studied that, I might be able to learn the purpose of intoners, of us. Only an idiot tries to learn about a bunch of shit she doesn't need to know. Or did you not know that? That's rather close-minded. Though, in the sense that we cannot ever truly know everything, well, I suppose I agree. Whatever. I'm about to kill you anyway. That's all that matters. So predictable. Come to me, Gabriel. Man. Paid a lot of money for that roof. You all right? Yeah, but that guy's strong. He's really, really strong. Zero, get on! Let's beat him together! All right, so Gabriel phase one is on the back of Michael, or Mikhail, rather. Misspoke. Technically Michael. But uh, the way this works is it'll shoot projectiles like this, and we can't really do much damage most of the time, but when it stomps like this... It will do sometimes that. do... here it is. There we go. And this attack will let us hit it for a little bit. And then we do this. And then get as much damage in as we can through this. There we go. Alright, it's halfway. And then if we're lucky, that can bait it down and it'll... Do the do the breathe fire attack again? Okay, I guess not. I guess that's not happening. Go ahead and stomp, brother. Okay, never mind. Shoot some projectiles like a freak. There we go. Now you're on the ground, bud. And you're backing up. That means you might do it. There it is. Hell yeah. Okay, pop these. And fire breath. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Get another one in. 
and then pop this, and that should push face. Yep, there we go. Next one is on foot as zero, and it can be kind of annoying. This is the fight we would usually buy and upgrade one level of another spear, because you can kill this guy slightly faster, but eh. Eh, save our money. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Mikhail has been blasted by the big laser. And he's gonna get blasted by the big laser again. Just kidding, here comes Zero. That's not the problem here, Mikhail. Like, like, you can't. Like, like this is bad. We do end up getting lucky in this ending, but, uh, but, uh, this is, this is kind of a problem. Um, we'll get to why in, in a few hours, but, uh, but, uh, I'm good. It's not good. Stop repeating things. I like to think that Zero actually does start caring about Mikhail a little bit, but her main reason for wanting him to reincarnate instead of doing this is uh, mostly utilitarian. But yeah, he used his dying wish to uh, fire an even bigger laser back at Gabriel. And then he's he, he's done so. Uh, that 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 kills the Mikhail. The only one who's ready. Packwatch. Rest in piss. You won't be missed. Except he he will be missed. I love Mikhail. What a, what a lad. I love him. My only goal in life is to fire a huge laser when I die. Yeah, me too. Me too. Even if I forsake my life as an intoner, come for me, Zero! <laughs> Alright, let's get it. So like I said, we're on the ground now. The way this fight plays out, you, uh, you, you hit his leg until you deal enough damage to uh, talk, knock him down. And then... Uh, we uh, deal a bunch of damage to his head while he's on the ground. Except, uh, for some reason, it uh, wasn't a fan of letting me do that. It uh, didn't like that idea. But that big laser, or not big laser, the spear would come in handy, but... We still melt him pretty quickly with the gauntlets, as you can see. There it is. And that is the final boss of ending A. But yeah, um, since we're watching cutscenes, this is a pretty long one, and I need to pee. 
So I'm going to go on a piss break. Enjoy this. And I will explain what this has to do with Drakengard 1 when I get back. So uh, stay tuned. Because we are far from done. Yeah, it is. <sighs> Mikhail. It's over. Now I... But how? Brother. I'm one's brother. <laughs> Are we bad? Do We're so bad. No. You only had your five sisters. But in the same way you created your sisters. Your sister, one, created me. I was a failsafe, in case you managed to kill her. I was her final weapon. So... See the sword? It's made from a dragon's fang. Pay attention to how this guy looks. That means it can kill an and then if you manage to stay awake long enough... See. Pay attention no during uh, during Lady Hadria's run of Drakengard 1 and see if you can spot any I characters that look similar. To kill the Intoners. All of them. You think after all this, I intended to survive? The world doesn't work that way. That's why I love his reaction to that. He's like, man, now that I know you wanted to die, I don't feel as good about killing you. Wah. Wah. But yeah, her whole plan the entire time um, rested on s something made of or being a dragon. Uh, killing her after she killed her sisters. We don't learn why yet, uh, though we will. But, uh, but, uh, this is good, actually. What up? Good luck on the run. Yo, thank you, Ganon. Appreciate you. She's dead. Dragon D is nuts. So true. Zero is dead. Does Dragon Guard 1 follow off of ending A? Yep, one. this leads into Dragon Guard 1. Do you hear me? Let him finish his speech here first. I finished off the intoners. He'll kind of hint at Just it. Like you said. But what should I do now? How am I supposed to live in a world that lacks the intoners' protection? Or actually, I think he says it in the post-credits, but we're going to skip the credits and go directly to the post-credits scene. So, 
Um, I'll just I'll just let him say it, and then I'll explain it. He'll make it easier. Here we go. <laughs> I see. If there are no intoners left to protect the world, then I'll just protect it myself. We'll form a new religion. A religion that worships my sister one. No, I am the true one. From this day forward, all will call me one. <laughs> so, without the intoners to... Oh, wait, no, something else important happens here. Never mind. Never mind. It'll blue balls you a little bit longer. Also, well, welcome back, uh, welcome back, uh, disciples. There they are. The boys. Seems like we should have taken a different branch somewhere along the way. Who this? That was kind of weird. Wonder what was up with that. Wonder who she was. Um, okay. So, without the intoners to protect the world from the gods that want to kill, uh, everything, um, something else has to happen. So what Brother One does there is he goes on to uh, to create a cult dedicated to his sister and himself, who takes over the role of his sister and starts calling himself One. <laughs> also, we unlocked Ending B. Um, so now we're doing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so he goes on to make a cult. If you know anything about Drakengard 1, you know about the Cult of the Watchers. And, um... You may know that the logo is two people with the same haircut as one and brother one, and similar looking faces to one and brother one. Um, that is because the Cult of the Watchers is the cult that brother one would go on to start and uh, create the seals and then subsequently get kicked out. Uh, because eventually the cult gets the red eye syndrome and tries to destroy the seals that they created and they're like hey brother one you wanna you you want to keep the seals no get out of here Lamau and then uh one of his uh descendants like great 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 grandkids is uh the antagonist of Drakengard one so uh tune in for the run after this one to see that character It is now April the 1st, 1000 AD. Also, haha, April Fools. Days since the singularity known as Zero resumed activity. I think that choice of date is actually intentional, the by the way. The occurred when Zero encountered the old man known as Octa, and the forest they were expected to enter manifested... Because for all intents and purposes, this ending does kind of end up being a, uh, a joke ending. QV. Begin recording. Be an hour in branch B. So remember earlier when uh, when Zero killed uh, you mean you killed the king of the fairies. All right. So that caused a divergence in the timeline. And now, for some reason, all the disciples are with us and have no memory of how they got here, or their intoners. That's kind of weird, huh? I wonder if that happened because uh, because the fairy king died and all the fairies died with him. I uh, I wonder if uh, I wonder I wonder if that is what is causing this weird thing to happen, huh? It'd be kind of be kind of strange, huh? It'd be kind of weird. I hope that's not what happened. But anyway, hopefully that made sense. Uh, how that last ending led into Dragon Guard One. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to make it make sense. He's gonna watch yeah, real hard, guys. He's gonna watch real hard. Alright, and that's a weapon, so we gotta grab that. I'm telling you. Something's weird about this forest. Yes, but... But what? 
if you say the discomfort is exquisite and so boom cut your head off. and then uh, here we go with these boys um there are spirits here and it's annoying also each subsequent playthrough the enemies get significantly harder um we will uh like the game gets way harder you can see like they do a bunch of damage and that's without them being the, the spirit ones so what i'm doing is i'm sort of trying to group them up here so that i can tear through a big uh handful of them here and then yeah, but each subsequent playthrough, the enemies get a huge boost to their defense, health, uh, attack, pretty much everything. Um, it's the classic uh, increasing difficulty by boosting stats uh, method of making a game hard. The one we all know and love, I'm sure. Let's, uh, come on. There we go. And there's the last spirit. Just uh, get over here, bud. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Again, room full of small enemies. My least favorite type of room. Dragon D is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Me when I'm me when I'm Dragon D's nuts. Got him. All right. There's some Skelly boys. Bonk. Give me the give me the gold. Give me the give me the frame the the, the frame drop. Kind of unfortunate that Miu had to go to bed because because uh, uh, now she's not here to click through the PowerPoint. So the slides are gonna move a bit slower. This level also has some part particle effects going on, so uh, that's that's the big issue here. If you're wondering what's causing the slowdown, it's those uh, those like green thingies. But yeah, here's here's the here's the necromancer gunch I was talking about. It's the wizard, but purple. There is genuinely no other difference. Actually, no, that's wrong. Uh, one of their other projectile types will also uh, it'll home in on you for way longer. Um. So that's a thing. And keep going. Trying to save my... Ah. Save my intoner mode for the next fight. See if I can take it out faster. So that's why I'm not teleporting to these boys. God damn it. Stop targeting the, the not important ones. I clearly only want to take out the targets and not the other ones. You freak. Where where did he are you cannot be serious. You you cannot be serious. Really? He can do that? True! So true, Zero! Speak your truth, Queen! That's what I'm saying! You allow the 60 FPS hack. Um, I'm playing on hardware. <laughs> this is this is not this is not emulator. <laughs> I don't actually know if the 60 FPS hack is is allowed though. That's an excellent question. But no, this is being played on hardware. This is a real PS3. You're an idiot. Is that what you were waiting for? But uh, yeah, here we go, Babu. We gotta fight these again, but this time without Mikhail, cause he's uh, he's scouting real hard. I think I'm the only person who ever does runs of this game on console. I will say I do know I do know someone who tried it for the uh, final boss, and it makes it significantly harder. Which uh, makes a lot of sense, obviously, because again, it runs in engine and it kind of hinges on uh, the game running the way it runs. Like for better or for worse, it was built around the jankiness. I was mostly curious if you knew or not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there may be other people in the chat that know, um, but I do. I do prefer playing the game on hardware. I would say if you're gonna play it casually, though, uh, don't play it on hardware. That would be my advice to you. Um, 
but I'm a freak, so... <laughs> if that wasn't already abundantly clear by the fact that I, I, I am speedrunning Drakengard 3 all endings. But with that being said, I actually don't know if the 60 FPS game would make the game easier or harder to speedrun. I feel like it'd be harder, because enemies would be moving around a lot more, and like, generally doing things a lot more. Doesn't Rod also play on hardware? I know he did play on hardware at one point, but I don't think he does runs on hardware? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe he does do runs on hardware. I don't think Aloe does hardware. I could be wrong, though. The two times a decade he plays this. True. People should play Drakengard more. Also, I need to activate Mikhail. I forgot that he popped up. That clears out a bunch of them. This fight is really long and annoying for the same reason that the regular small soldier fights are annoying. And spin to win also doesn't work because they like to do that run away and then jump at you attack, which puts them out of the range of your spin to win. So the best thing to do is just clear out what you can and then let Mikhail, like, demolish everyone else. Hello played hardware once when he was at Rods. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why anyone who's not like a speedrunning boomer would ever not play this game on hardware. Except killing. Killing is It's like taking And yes, that does include me. I, I consider myself a Dodd 3 boomer, even though I'm not on leaderboards. I've known how to run this game for a long time, I just don't do it very frequently. And that's a level. Very annoying level because of the baboos, but mods and third party applications that modify or manipulate the game are banned. Well, there we go. That actually answers that. That's neat. I never really thought about it. <sighs> What's up, three? What's good? What's poppin'? Oh, look who's here. It's zero. No, it's not. Who's Zero? I'm, uh... I'm, I'm Biro, a girl you've never met before. I suppose. But... Something's wrong. With the forest. You think? Can't you hear the voices? The crying? No, actually. Alright, there we go. So that saves us the uh, the need to go track down three. So that's probably good. That'll that'll speed up the process of us uh, killing our sisters. That'll that'll we'll get to the we'll get to the, the, the intended result a little bit faster. That'll be that'll be nice. I guess I should say we're getting ending B, ending C, and then some side content out of the way before we can unlock D. Because like I said, we have to get all the weapons. Um, and clear all the main story chapters. Um, but fortunately, the B and C playthroughs, as well as what they call the Lost Verses... Um, like I said earlier, they take after um, Nier Automata in the sense that they don't make you replay the entire game. Uh, they actually don't make you really replay anything. Um, they reuse the same maps, obviously, but uh, these endings are basically only one chapter long each. 
This and you can't first. Haha, <laughs> foreshadowing. In case you missed it, Mikhail just asked if he would ever glow, grow a flower out of his eye. And uh, yeah, that definitely won't happen. Haha, hee hee hoo hoo. Didn't know Chiana's done runs of this on console? I didn't either. That's pretty pog. That is very pog champion. <sighs> Sick. And to be clear, I do like the speedrun, and I also like some of the developments they've made uh, to make it faster. There's a lot of cool tricks and stuff now. Like I said, there's some uh, there's some neat out-of-bounds stuff that uh, some people, people who are not me, know how to do. So I definitely encourage checking out uh, probably New Game Plus A ending. Um... Because there's uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with a with a with a bonus uh, outfit you get um, for the new game plus save file. It uh, lets you do some stuff. Lets you do some neat stuff. But yeah, we got uh, we got six hort, six haunts. And uh, apparently I missed one, which is annoying. I wish he'd like zoom on over here with his horse feet, like the freak that he is. I don't know, I didn't see him. I scanned around. I did a 360 with the camera. I didn't hit him. That's obnoxious. But, uh. There we go. Uh. Here we go. And then uh, if we turn this way, we can teleport. And there we go. And get the last guy. And bonk. There we go. And we're out of there. But as far as speedruns go, especially Draconeer speedruns, I'd say that this one's up there. Uh, both versions of Nier are kind of mid, if I'm honest, in terms of like speed tech and stuff and just things happening. Um, Nier Automata, pretty good if you like uh, being upset because that game is hard. Uh, and... I mean, Drakengard 1 and 2 are Drakengard 1 and 2. They they play like Drakengard 1 and 2, so you have to, like, speedrun that. Um, it's basically the same thing as, as OG Nier. Um, just not really much going on. So if you're looking for a Drakengard speedrun, uh, you, definitely, you can definitely do way worse than Drakengard 3. I'll say that. I'll say that for sure. Bro, can y'all, like, die? I hate skeletons. They're spooky and scary and skeletons. And they send shivers down your spine. Their freaky souls will shock your soul. I mean, just, just a lot of, like, just a lot of cons and not a lot of pros, you know? That's another pretty slow fight usually because they're so spread out and they don't activate all at once. It's zero. She's here. The traitor is here. Protect us, Lady Three, please. This is bad. Speedrunning games with skippable cutscenes. True. This is probably a different level than it actually is. If only, he says. What if he did grow a third nut? What then? Anyway, uh, ambush time. Uh, 
Yeah, me too. This is definitely me when I chew five gum. What? This would kill me. So regeneration time. But uh, this time. Also, thus far, Dito would have been the only one who, uh, who's seen this. And boom. And now she can't regenerate because there is a spiky boy in her flower. So, uh, that's not ideal. What do we do about this situation? Uh, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play as Mikhail for a little bit while we kill three titans. Arch titans, even. Or just spit fire at him, as you do. So what? The big dummy was able to sense Zero's pain? Such a Can you, like, pain. spray your fire, please? There we go. Didn't register my button input. And... There we go. And there we go. That's it. That's fight. Now's our chance to haul ass out of here. Well, that's spiky boy in the flower sounds like a euphemism. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I I'd be inclined to believe it is because uh, this game uh, has a lot of uh, segs going on. Feet for free. Why she look like a Dorito? No, nothing at all. And uh yeah. That happened. Just uh just a normal Thursday night as far as I'm concerned. I say on Saturday morning. Everybody's remarkably chill about a party member taking a sword to the face. Well, yeah, Zero is immortal. One way or another, she would have uh, she would have figured the situation out. She's fine. She's fine. Okay, keep moving. So this one also has a weapon chest. I have to remember to grab it. That's about all there is going on in this one. It's pretty standard level compared to the last one. No dragon bits. Nobody getting stabbed. Well, besides the enemy. Nobody in our party getting stabbed, I should say. Well, this is odd. What? There are supposed to be fairies in this area. I don't see anything. Ha! <laughs> see? The poison gas has killed every last... And here we go. Shut up. And we're gonna bring Mikhail out. I don't remember if this is faster or not here, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna do it. There's better odds that it's faster than that it's not, because he can stun lock the enemies. But yeah, nothing really unusual for this. We pull out the bracers, we kill, we kill the trolls. Nothing new. This is what we do to trolls in the RR Lat chat. For legal reasons, this is a joke. I also don't even represent RR Lat outside of this one run, so... Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully y'all would assume that this is not something we do in real life on account of it's illegal and dangerous and probably takes a lot of energy that I don't have. I don't really exercise much. If you couldn't tell by the fact that I'm good at Drakengard 3, I don't really go outside. <laughs> so I don't really know what my point was here. I don't really, I don't really know. I don't know what I'm saying. As per usual with me, to be honest.
I just say stuff. I can't stand silence. If it's quiet, I gotta say something. Doesn't matter what, I gotta say something. Gotta make noise. We them boys. We making noise. All right. I wonder what Lady Three is she said Lady Vern is in this forest, yes? Yippee! And that she Yippee! amongst themselves. Yippee! Yippee! And it is Titan time. Pop these. Get her in toner mode. Switch to Chakram. And then... Schwack. And spin to win. There it is. Blood dead as hell. Take a sip of coffee, we earned it. Again, reminder for people that may have shown up after we introduced this tech. Uh... I am not pressing any buttons on my controller once that move is activated. I just sit there and watch the health bar melt, and that is the gameplay. And we zoom. And here we go. Then where do we go? We can go over here, right? Yeah. And then over here is the chest. Boom, here's our weapon. And then in here... You can get on top of those, fun fact. There's an invisible wall above them, even though there's nothing there. But you can get on top of them. Bruh. There we go. In toner mode. Luckily he pushed us, but we did take a hit there. Not that it should matter. Okay. Keep the combo up. Fuck. I missed the spin to win timing. That sucks. There we go. Got another combo out. Do this one more time. Whack, 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 whack. Whack, whack. Whack, 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 whack. And spin the win for the last little bit here. There we go. Kill him. And you may be thinking we're getting diminishing returns because, you know, now they have bigger health bars, they have more defense, they're dying slower to the spin to win. That'll get fixed after ending B. That's mostly a now problem. It picks back up once we get a new spear. Health bars will melt like three times as fast as they are currently. But that is a stage. Alright. Now saving. Please do not turn off the PlayStation 3 system. So true, Dragon Guard 3 for the PlayStation 3. Okay, strength pots, defense pots, and in we go. And something interesting will happen after this uh, stage. We, uh, we're going to get a weapon from two of our disciples. And then after that, I need to remember to change which, which uh, disciples I'm bringing into the levels. Because this game does a weird thing after ending A. It's kind of like a social link, I guess, in Persona, but not really. I guess a friendship system in general. Um, if you play four levels, um, ending B onward with uh, disciples, they give you a weapon. And if I forget that, um, I will be missing two weapons and I'll be very confused and I'll have to look up which ones I'm missing and then that'll be that'll be that'll be annoying 
and we'd have to play four more levels. We'd have to grind. QV. Begin recording. So hopefully I don't forget. Hi, Scent. What's poppin'? He's starting to remember too. It was kind of neat, kind of weird. Because he, he couldn't really remember her. Now he remembers what she looked like. But she doesn't remember anything else about her. I wonder, I wonder how that'll become important here. Also, this is the last level of ending B. And here we go. This is, uh, we backtrack through three's level from before, but this time instead of the puzzle cubes, there are a bunch of statues of three, and they're each going to spit out a annoying uh, riddle or statement or whatever. Just some, just some bullshit. Nothing actually significant or meaningful. Do not overthink three. You can't fix her. I hate the wizards in this level, by the way. And I also hate that the statues aren't a aren't a target. Uh, so she locks on to enemies instead of the thing we actually need to destroy. This level is all sorts of annoying, and I hate it. Where, um... I doubt it means oh, it's in the middle. Duh. I'm like, I'm missing one. And I'm not necessarily trying to be fast here, I'm mostly just trying not to die because these wizards like to spam that, like, homing pee pee poo poo attack. Also, I forgot that we can't do triangle because it'll teleport us away from what we actually care about. Uh, this level sucks. I hate it. Um, this is also one of my least favorites in the game. I think I might actually dislike this one more than um, the desert level, now that I think about it. But I don't play this one nearly as often, so uh, I tend to forget about it. But yeah, there we go. So that's this room, and now we just have to not get hit by any fireballs until the door opens. I said not get hit. Also, a one-armed rabbit chases a future lizard. Um, that's super lore important. So remember that one. And here we go. Now we just uh, we we noom on ahead here. We go fast, if you will. We, 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 we proceed with speed. We run with speed, even. You might call this a speed run. Also, I lied, actually. I forgot. This isn't... Again, I tend to forget this level. This is not the last level of ending B. Um, this is the second last, because the next one... It's just a boss, but it is, it is a level. I thought this was the boss. I didn't want to think about this level, I guess. I guess my subconscious was trying to... Uh, protect me so another statue hey yeah you know like a statue and uh, eventually it breaks there we go and another statue my favorite thing to do punching a freaking statue Bonk. So true, three. So true. So factual. What is it? You finally done? The nimble dog arises from the underworld, sounding a drumbeat from the grass. Yeah. That's true. And Cerberus time. All 
Alright, now we can pop this, and I should probably pop uh, this as well. And then in toner mode. God damn it. I'll screw up the timing. I'm getting kind of impatient. This level actually tilts me because the statues are so obnoxious. Like, to an unbelievable degree. Alright. We'll get in this time. Really? Really? Okay, whatever. We missed it. Oh, shit! Almost died there. Okay, well, it's fine. That fight sucked, but it's fine. That level sucked. <clears throat> Wee ball. Yeah, I actually forgot that was an ending B. I thought that was, like, earlier on in ending C. But this part of the game does kind of blur together a little bit. Because it's just ending and then another ending. Back to back. Yeah, that's a good point. Zero. I screwed up. You fucking think? I invited one to the forest so I could kill her, but she's. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Is she dead? She's totally dead. Thank you, Dito. Thank you. Thank what you for the, the observation. What's going on here? Your input is noted and appreciated. And mission complete. We ball. Yep, here we go. Dito and Decadus give us our weapons. Then we have a boss fight. We don't need to change before the boss fight because it's going to change us back anyway afterwards um, because of stuff that happens in the story. So we're just not going to worry about it until the beginning of ending C, but I do need to remember to do that. So don't let me forget. That would be bad. Or do let me forget if you want to deal with me for longer. Up to y'all. Up to y'all, really. The choice is yours. Will you fight or will you perish like a dog? Ooh. For you trust the chemicals in your brain to tell you that they are chemicals. I really do just say every intrusive thought I have, don't I? I don't know. I'll just have to find one and beat the truth out of her. All right, let's see if we can get lucky. We did. Okay, we uh, we managed to get over the shield, boys. All right, here we go. And then in here we go. And huh, something weird's happening in the uh, the spooky fog forest from uh, from this level. And huh. Well, that uh that's one dead. One. <laughs> and that's two uh spinning. I think she's a fan of Dragon Guard 3 speedruns. She likes the spin to win move they do when uh when they fight big enemies. She's trying to trying to replicate it. She's a big fan of uh, Ezra Andromeda and their Dragon Guard speedruns. Bonk. <laughs> and suddenly, Scent remembers who Tu is. And he has turned... 
he 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 switch sides. He uh He is he is an enemy now. Why did I leave your side in the first place? Why did her mind decide to shatter like this? Because of the orphans? I'm just a fool. So Which need I remind you sent was actually your fault. But I am gonna make it right. My lady, I swear it. This time I shall give you everything. <laughs> Yeah. That was pretty funny. I, I agree too. As you wish, my lady. What are your two cents about this scene? Ah, Sponge boy, me boy, Bob. That was a good one. I don't know why I didn't Mr. Krabs laugh there. That, that made no sense. Why am I the way I am? Um. Okay, we pop our we pop our pots here, and then we just uh. Also, I, I haven't drawn attention to it, but, um... You may be wondering why I'm not using intoner mode when I'm fighting these uh, on-the-ground fights with, like, uh, with, like, two here, or uh, I won't be doing it later. I didn't do it during the prologue, I don't know if anyone caught on to that, but, uh... When you do it and an intoner's on the field, they will also do intoner mode for the duration of your intoner uh, meter. And uh, that will melt the shit out of your health. So you really don't want to use intoner mode when fighting intoners. But luckily we can melt her pretty quick anyway. And all we have to do is kill two there. Or scent. You only have to get one of them, basically. Doesn't matter which one. We locked on the two, so I went after two. Also, scent's belt uh, looks like uh, looks like the tiles in a swimming pool. And I just noticed that. If they get a close-up shot of it again, tell me I'm wrong. It looks like a swimming pool. Like on the back. And uh, they did a little bit of premarital hand-holding, and God wasn't a fan of that, so God is sending his strongest soldier to smite them and everyone else on this wretched earth. That's what's happening in the plot right now. Give us your blessing, Raphael. Nope, just kidding, it's Raphael, and it's a giant poison spider. A furry poison spider, even. It has hair. Bro needs to shave. Alright, so this fight's pretty easy, it's just time consuming. So we have to do this when he gets the circle out, and then dodge the spider web, and then get into him. And then uh, we actually do still have our defense and attack pots up, which is pretty good. So then, boom, bam, kablam. And now that that's done, we blast him. And that is going to turn him into another cycle, but that's fine. I'm going to wait to pop the strength and defense pots for... the next time he's down, so right now I'll pop them. And yeah, that's just what we do. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Uh, if the timer runs out, game over. But we're not really at risk of that. He dies pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. Is every death in this game uh, caused by sword through stomach? Uh, most of them. I feel like that's a fair statement to make. Okay, this one I don't have stamina to do fire breath, so I'm just gonna go up here and fireball his ass. And then blast him. Bonk. Oh, never mind. I thought I might be able to get a bit of one in, but that's fine. 
Alright, do something quick, bud. And bonk. And dodge. And bonk. And get down. And hit him. You wouldn't shave a spider? True. Yeah, I would, though, actually. This one in particular I would shave, because, like, what the fuck? That's too much hair. This isn't allowed. Alright, one or two more cycles. <laughs> Most A tomato are sword and stomach, too. Yes. Also, stop swiping at me like a freak. Just spray your poison like a good boy. That's right. Who's, who, who's, who's Burb's good boy? It's you! It's you, Raphael! It's you! You're the good boy! You sprayed your poison in my face! You're the good boy! What was that voice? I'm... Do I already need to crack open my monster energy? Am I this tired? Alright. What are we... What are we doing here? Alright, poison? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother! Don't fuck with us! Fuck you, Baltimore! And that's it. That's the boss. So there's ending B. We killed him, but uh, the poison is already too deep in uh, in Mikhail's system. Move it. The poison's gonna... You're gonna... Do it now. That's what Dragon Guard 3 does to people. Yeah, that it is. Sorry, Zero, but I think I'm done. I'm really sorry, Zero. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me when really, really long a thon makes me play Dragon Guard 3. That's my reaction. That scream exactly is the noise I made. I'm kidding. I, I do enjoy doing this. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope y'all are too. This is just the game of all time. Anyway. Uh, so this is a thing, and I've never really understood exactly what they were going for with this. But in Drakengard 1, there's a concept of a pact where um, you basically combine your soul, a human soul and a creature soul. Yep, there it is. Um, and uh, they essentially their lives are tied to each other. So one dies, the other dies, they have a mental connection, um, and they both become more powerful. This is the first ever pact, and I think what we're meant to get from this is that, like, Zero in this timeline created the pacts, and it was such a, like, strong singularity event that it spread to the other branches, which is why it can happen in Drakengard 1, even though that ending didn't branch off of this one. But it's not really clear. That's just sort of how I choose to interpret it, because it makes the most sense to me that way. Um... But yeah, that, uh, that's a pact. That's what just happened. And uh, remember earlier when Mikhail said, hey, I wonder if I'll ever grow a flower out of my eye. Uh, well, would you look at that? Hey. Uh, what you doing? My boy uh, grew a flower. Also, Babby Zero is living in his brain. It's not 100% clear that that's what's happening, but that is. They uh, they essentially combined into one person. It's not normally how packs work, but like Mikhail was already mostly dead, so I guess it's like kind of, you know, like like it kind of makes sense. And that's the end of branch B. Update. By utilizing the reprogramming function of the flower. The singularity known as Zero has created a new concept known as a pact. I do not know how this will affect the future. 
However, I will continue to observe events as they unfold. M3250 E0970 FL End Recording But who is this mysterious lady who is recording everything we do in every timeline? How can she do that? Is she hot? Can I romance her? These questions and more in uh, not Branch C either. But here we go, Ending C. So before we do Ending C, we have some maintenance to do. So let's um, let's, uh, let's do some menuing, gamers. So, first off, we need to top up our items as usual. That's all fine and good. Boom. Boom. Get them. Buy weapons. Now, we buy and upgrade Imperial Tears. Uh, you get it in the shop, I think. Uh, it kill the skeleton is good. Um, that, that was word for word what the notes say to do, for the record. Um, so, Imperial Tears. Upgrade it. And we can't upgrade it anymore because we don't have any white material. So now we need to change weapons, Twisted Hunger, Imperial Tears, and you can see that over doubles our damage. Um, and then choose Disciples, swap Dito with Octa, Decadus oh, with Scent, Time to bring some class and continue campaign. Like in hit game, fear and hunger. Yeah. Yeah. Divergent. Also, I love that drawing of Octa. April the 13th, and the fucking uh, Neon Neko Sugar Girls scent on the top right of the screen. I never realized it, but that probably is a direct reference to that. I detected her imposing some kind of magical influence upon him. Until now, only Zero could enact such influence. This is the first known exception. And as such, increases the likelihood of an unforeseen accident occurring. This matter So the singularity that caused this branch was sent taking Mikhail. Um, like the narrator just said here. Um... And this is the sole reason why I believe Scent to be the most powerful, uh, disciple. Because, um, he was able to essentially completely change how Mikhail works. Um, and, uh, you'll, we'll, we'll get more context for what I mean by that in a bit. Because, like, you know, right now, Mikhail's fine, right? Like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's the dragon. Um, well, after this mission, uh, weird things are going to start happening to our boy. Weird and unfortunate. Okay, we should have enough in toner mode now. Uh, we start using the, uh, the spear because it just does more damage. It can just generally, like, hit more enemies in one combo than the bracers. Because they are ten... They, they, they technically are meant to be used on, uh on single enemies, not groups of them. But the damage output is just the best we can get at that part of the game without grinding for a lot of money or just generally like wasting money and time trying to get stuff. There probably is some improved routing I could do if I really like dug deep into it, tried to figure things out. But like, again, this isn't a run I do frequently. Um, it's like a special occasion sort of, sort of, sort of gunch. Ow. Bruh, y'all can't be hitting me with attacks and stuff. That's that's mean. Let me in toner mode. My controller's starting to starting to shit out. This is unfortunate. I have a really like cheap uh, off-brand PS3 controller that I got when I bought the uh, the console originally, and uh, I've had it for years. And sometimes the uh, stick likes to misalign. But there we go, that's this room. 
makes it harder to push it in because the input for doing the intoner mode is uh, pushing both sticks in at the same time. But uh, it doesn't like to register the one on the left sometimes, and that's uh, that's no bueno. Damn. No health. I always forget which boxes aren't aren't health. Can't do just be doing shit and branching timelines. True. We are not allowed to branch timelines. We need to preserve the flow of time. Also, uh, if you didn't already notice it, we're we're in the we're in the desert again. Except this time, the gimmick is uh, cold instead of warm. So instead of shadows, we need to be near these torches. Um, it is almost equally as annoying as the previous one, made worse by the fact that enemies now deal triple the damage they did during that level. So yeah, we just gotta just gotta make our way downtown, walking fast, faces pass, faces piss, if you will. Um, here we go. That's uh, that's it. We're at the wizards. We found them. Surely there will not be a second or third uh, cold ball. Surely they wouldn't make you do this three times again. Haha. Haha. -ha. Definitely not, right? Like, why would they, why would they do that? Right? Why would why would they ever? You know? Like, why why would they? Why what what purpose would that serve? So when it said kill the skeletons, good by the way. Um, if you didn't know what to look for, you might not have picked up on it there, but, uh, you know how we used to have to, uh, we used to have to kill the skeletons again after lowering their health bar? You do not have to do that with Imperial Tears, because it is strong against undead. It also knocks the spirits out immediately, which is another super nice thing about, uh, about being strong against undead. God damn it! don't teleport away from me, you freak. There we go. Get away from me. Don't try to give me unconsensual Baja Blast. Finally down. That should take care of this cold spell. And oh look, they're doing it again. God damn it. Yeah, me too, Zero. Alright, so we're gonna try to get the sword weapon swap here. So we can get across the desert a bit faster. Oh. I thought I was being clever, also fuck. I hit the wrong button. Stop locking onto him. I screwed so many things up there. I thought I was gonna teleport to these guys and it'd be like kinda fast, but unfortunately I am a fool. And pressed the wrong buttons in possibly the worst way imaginable. So now we gotta walk across the desert slowly. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Attack. We're fine. Attack. Attack. Attack! My balls. My balls. Okay. So in this room, we're going to pop. Boom, boom, bang, boom, bop. And fuck these dudes. Ow, ow, oh, ow! I said ow a little bit earlier, but uh. Seriously, Z, who talks like that? Shut up, fight! Ow. These guys can hurt, like bad. When they have these spirits in them. Like, um, when I say they can hurt you bad, I mean at the current level we are one-shotting us if we don't have a defense pot on. So, uh, that's why I'm very careful around these guys. Ow. There we go. And there's the door. And there's a weapon on this level. We're gonna have to go out of our way to grab it a little bit. Um, unfortunately, we don't have intoner mode to even try for weapon swap, but that's fine. Oh look, a third blue ball. 
Oh no. Who saw this one coming? So true, bestie. So true, Umfi. So true, Zero. And the weapon is over here. Shut up, Sent. Why don't we retreat for a bit so we can recover? All right, boom. Wait a little bit, cause that's kind of scary, and I don't have a whole lot of uh, health pots remaining. And the next fight can also very easily kill me. Boom! There's our weapon. Can we kill Sora again? Uh, maybe. Not for a little bit, though. He needs to be alive to advance the plot. And here we go. Down into the pit. Down to the blue balls. Okay. So here we have imps, which is the annoying part of this. Ow. Okay, if we if we can in toner mode, there we go. And I'm gonna pop this, unfortunately. Um, and I need to get you. You weren't the last one? Really? The hell? Which one's still keeping it alive? Not you. You. There we go. Christ. Okay, now we stop losing health. There we go. Take the wizards out. And then... Here's the last sorcerer. Boom. And then we need to get this boy. We need to get the imps. Oh, actually, if I pop in toner mode, that'll do it. That'll knock it down. That's right. The whole, like, special, fancy undead spear thing doesn't work on these guys, unfortunately. Because we can only do flying attacks when they're up in the sky like this, so we just kind of got to whack them and hope that the boy pops out eventually or we get in toner mode which is not happening brother this is actually the worst this is agony this is agony this is agony I hate when this specific thing happens. Can you, like, attack me, bud? There we go. Hit me. Hell yeah. There it is. And bonk. There we go. And that's the level. So, uh, yeah, Mikhail just devolved. He has gone from level 3 to level 2. What's happening with the toner mode that makes her scream like that? I don't know. I was just kind of assumed she was pissed off. Alright. Progress saved. Doo doo boo. Shoo boo doo boo. Doo doo boo. Dragon Guard. Okay. Top up on all our shit because we actually spent all of our consumables. Jesus Christ. That level is terrible. 
And we ball. All right, and what's up, Mikhail? You good? You chill? It's time to very well. You. Thank you, Sent. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're fine. And you may be wondering, oh, there was a chest behind you. Why didn't you pick that up? I don't need it. I don't want it. I only care about the ones that have weapons. Yeah, now we're in the underground area from the desert. And uh We uh We ball. Keel over already. All right, and platforming time. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just I know how you feel about these types of situations. And Here we go again. there we go. Give me some money because it's right there. I don't really need it that much. And here we are. Big room. A lot of uh, a lot of trolls, but like fancier trolls. Pop of defense. Pop of strength. Nothing we haven't seen before. Okay, if we uh, do this, we should be able to... Damn it, I missed it. Okay, try it again. There we go. A little bit too late, but uh, this will make life a little bit easier. Oh my god, we're almost dead. I hate it here. But yeah, that'll melt them. Child's rib, by the way. That, uh, that was the item we picked up. So remember when I said don't worry about uh, what was in the troll baskets? Um, yeah, don't, don't. Yeah, some things are better left unknown. Alright, and jump them. After that, I start kicking balls. Me too. Damn it! You're hallucinating. I was going for the, I was going for the fancy, I was going for the fancy shit. I was going for the, going for the ledge grab. Sucks. And we can just kind of jump over now. You can go for that way earlier, but I'm always terrified of frame drops for that. So like, yeah, you know, this game performs very well. As, as we've established. And over here, spin to win. And that's level. We have a little bit of uh, like some platforms that are gonna show up. And we gotta get up there, but that's it. That's uh, that's 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 it. Red novels with better frame rates than Dragon Guard 3. Real. Real. I am no such thing. So real. Then let's head to the Cathedral City. So now we go to Cathedral City. To get King Neptune's crown. I think I made that joke last time, but uh SpongeBob movie's a banger. Peak cinema.
If you disagree, uh, no you don't. I love the Spongebob movie. I think my favorite piece of media even is a tie between Drakengard 3 and the Spongebob movie. Discuss. Give me, a, give me your hot takes about that statement. There's a weapon on this level, but I don't remember where. I'm sure once I see it, I will remember, but I don't off the top of my head. And that might be a problem. Oh, it's this level. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, I remember. Yep, I was right. The moment I see it, I'll remember. So this chest behind us we do need, because it is a weapon. If two and one are both in Had a good nap. See, Not things seem to be going well if you already being in Branch C. Yep, we're balling. We're zooming. We are speed running. Sure. Fly up and scout ahead, okay? Alright, we don't need that chest. So, uh, we can just kind of, uh, boom, boom, bang. And we don't need to fight the horse. So, give me that. And get the spear out. And kill this dude. And I hate wizards. Get out of here, you freak. I said get out of here. Don't have one tiny pixel of health. That's evil and mean. I'm a witch and I'm evil. Shadow wizard and money gang. We love casting spells. This speedrun was sponsored by the Shadow Government. Shadow Wizard Money Gang. We love casting spells. Okay, kill you. Should just be Skelly Boys now, yep. The Blamo. And take you out. Cool, cool. Just pick them off. Here we go. Here we go. And here's you. Could SpongeBob and Patrick beat the Intoners in a fight? Oh, no doubt. Because uh, the Intoners are humans. They cannot breathe underwater. Okay, that was very lucky timing. Because that would have been a lot of health that we would have had to recover. Alright, kill this dude. Get him out of here. And then you. And then you. And then you. And then one more. Kablamo. And Kaplawi. And then we'll just pop in toner mode here. And then just teleport around at the speed of sound, and we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, and others, we got him. considering they're near immortality. I mean, they wouldn't die per se. They'd just be stuck in a perpetual cycle of spawning in and then immediately drowning. And then respawning and drowning and it would just uh, just it would be endless. It would be it would be hellish. I I don't think I would inflict that fate even on 4. Like like that sounds that sounds like too much to me if I'm being real. I don't actually know if that's how that would work, but I'm pretty sure it would. Because I'm fairly certain they still breathe. They just, uh, they just regenerate when they die. God damn it, I keep going too early, I think. 
I wanted to spin to win. That makes this fight so much less annoying. But at this point, we might as well just, uh... There we go. And then another one's gonna jump out. There it is. There it is. Nope, never mind. I am... Um, the sand that it keeps kicking up is causing problems for my ability to do things on the correct frame. Oh boy. God, I love Dragon Guard 3. What a good video game. I'm just gonna do this because I'm lazy. I don't feel like playing anymore. Ow. Whatever. Just kill him. It's fine. Is this- is that this content has been deemed inappropriate actually a real part of this game and have I missed it? Yep. It happens in the first, uh, half hour of the run. And yes, it is real. And there we go. The party travels onward. Hmm, I wonder what she's doing here. Who is that? We've seen her before. Hmm. And her voice sounds weirdly familiar. I wonder. I wonder who she is. I wonder I wonder what she's up to. I wonder, I wonder if she's a devious, dubious little creature. A devious little creature is up to mischief. Very icky. No good. Ugh, the beast is demonic in nature. Very icky. No good. All right hop back up and we did get the chest in that level yes this one also has one and it's pretty hard to miss Definitely the loading screens ever. Update. Significant anomalies have been observed in the group of singularities centered around zero. Mikhail, meant to be the group's harmonizing factor, has devolved and demonstrated other anomalous behavior. Okay, the nerd. Toners and their disciples seem to be entering unstable mental and emotional states. I shall continue my investigation, keeping an eye out for any signs of a full collapse. M5110, E0020, DM, begin recording. Alright. So we're back here. We're going backwards through Cathedral City. Gotta, gotta climb up some uh, debris here, which, uh, you know, fair enough. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta jump, you know? Yeah, you gotta jump. Jumpy jump gaming. You can hear in the ambient soldier noises that they're starting to lose their friggin' minds. We don't really know what's up with that. And then here's a Cerberus again. You fight three Cerberuses back to back and there's no difference between any of them. Um... That is intentional. It's not like a flaw of game design. They did do that intentionally. Um, it has to do with the game's themes. Um, I could get into that, but I'm not really that type of person. I'm not like a literary analyst or analyst, whatever the word is, uh, clearly. But uh, 
something something about like cycles cycles of abuse cycle cycles of uh of, of, of pee pee poo poo um yeah and then uh we continue onward also we got the spin to win we're so fucking back um i think that's the only fight between here and the 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 fight with uh with two but yeah we're about to fight two Spoiler alert for the next, uh, literally 15 seconds tops. Alright, here we go. Just a game, don't overthink it, it's not supposed to be deep. True! So true. Anyway, hi too, what's, what's poppin' gamer? What's good? Two. Yeah, good point, too. I agree. Oh, never mind. Die. I disagree. Alright. Same as the fight with uh, two in the last branch, pretty much. Kind of annoying, actually, that our strength and defense pots were still active. Also, we can corner trap her here. That's ideal. So that's what we go for if she dodges over here. Uh, there's not really a consistent way to make it do, do it because uh, she uh, she kind of just dashes around, like you can see. It makes it kind of hard to know what the hell's going on. And then uh, once she stops blocking, keep doing it, and there we go. We have killed our sister too again. Or play game me go snore real not if i play the fucking metal pipe dropping sound again what's good frosty could you die now I mean, like, really die? Guess it's time to die again? Yup. And you're probably thinking, huh, Sense probably gonna, gonna, gonna change sides again. He's gonna switch teams. That's kinda, that's kinda, that's, that's, uh, that's what happened last time, right? Nope. This time he's our boy. Character development. And then uh, Lady 2 uh, explodes. It's a trap. Run! You know, a thing that can happen, I guess. Was this always her plan? What divine punishment. Don't act so goddamn happy, freak. Yes. Damn, it's Wimdy. Oh. No, I think they're fine. Th th they'll bounce back. They'll bounce back. They'll rebound. I believe in them. All right, and then Let's right go. over here is the weapon. Killing two didn't break your curse, so I have to kill one. I have to kill all the atoners. But I can be okay like this. Like hell you can. One's going to pay for this. For Earth. And there we go. That's mission.
And also Octa and Scent are able to give us the weapons. They they count as uh, having completed that mission. Uh, don't worry about how that's possible. Like I said, they'll rebound. They're fine. That uh, that was red paint on the ground. Um, we are uh, we're fine. Everyone's fine. Yeah, now we have all of the friendship weapons, so we just, uh, we ball. And by we ball, I mean we upgrade our spear, because we can do that now. Uh, I lied. I need a little bit more money. We do it after the next one. The Church. A religious organization that has existed since antiquity. The group has grown rapidly since the Cataclysm. Creating organizations like the Magic Academy. An academy where all they do is play Magic the Gathering. But uh, yeah, the Cataclysm refers to uh, Tokyo showing up in the middle of Europe in 300 AD. Uh, that's, uh, that's the Cataclysm. So this level is supposed to be thematic. You're supposed to like go down with uh, Mikhail and he like breaks some barricades for you. Um, but he like moves slowly so you so you really get a sense that like, oh, well he's not nearly as powerful as he was. That's not good. Um, but uh, and if I can not get hit here anyway. Uh, luckily, Unlike every other place in the game where that type of barricade shows up, that one does not have an invisible wall, so we can just kind of jump over it instead of waiting. And then, as you saw with his wing, he just kind of teleports behind you, and we ball. Uh, slap him. Give me that money. And then it's boss fight time. The big golem. Girl, when you'd have time to build all this, though? Like, where even are we? Intoners offer only pestilence to this world. Is this the Gooning Cave? They will be the disease that brings ruin to all human life. That's why you're trying to kill us. To save the world. And once you succeed in killing your sisters, you're going to finish the job. And kill yourself. Yeah, that's the plan. And you'll use that dragon to do it. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, you seem to know what's going on, don't you? Uh, Zero? What's she talking about? Fortunately, I suppose, I came to the same conclusion. This world has no place for us. Great. Then you won't mind dying. I know about your flower. I know it's behind all of this. Yep. That it but is. I imagine that's it's true, not that's true. going to let you die until it succeeds in destroying the world. True. Any truers in chat? So it's like this, right? We're both prepared to die. But since you don't trust me to off myself, you're gonna try and kill me first. Yes. Funny. I was thinking the exact same thing. One. Abdiel, sing for me. I always love the the visual filter on uh, on that shot. It almost looks like one of the pre-rendered cutscenes, but uh, it is not. Anyway, this boss fight's annoying. Um, let me. The first one's always a crapshoot, but this boss fight's gimmick is basically just cup game. We both feel the same threat, and yet here we are, fated to kill each other in the end. Yeah, destiny's a real bitch sometimes. And we guessed wrong. But now we get to see which one, and we just have to follow it. 
For some reason, I felt like you and I might understand each other. What would some offshoot create? So it is understand? gonna go in Don't there it is. A pity. Truly a pity. And we just blast them. There's gotta be a magic core controlling them. Yep. I don't know what there sure is. And then shoot them. Try killing them. Damn it. I usually get that in one phase. I think I didn't take enough hits, so I didn't have intoner mode. Because if you pop intoner mode with that much health left, it dies. But uh, there we go. Get him. Like, I think the worst thing about this fight is just that it's time consuming more than anything. He's gotta, like, do this bullshit, and then you gotta shoot it. And it's like, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like kind of a bruh moment. Not, not an epic gamer moment, if you will. But, uh, it is back from the dead. And it has turned into Super Bitch. Look out. You two, you know. Zero. But if you just zoom in and blast it, it, uh, it just ends. You don't have to wait for it, it to become vulnerable. Which is pretty nice. Pretty sick, if you ask me. And, uh... Up next in Scenes That Go Hard. The two dragons piss at each other for a little bit. They have a bit of a pissing contest. You did it. You actually... And, uh... Yeah. It didn't end well for either of them. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like in Wheel of Fortune, how you can win half a car. Uh, we won half a Mikhail, half a dragon. I don't know where the other half went, but it gone. And now we are fighting one, one on one, or perhaps zero on one. One's kind of annoying to fight. She likes to move around a lot, kind of like two. But her movement patterns are a lot harder to, uh... To adapt to. When she does this move, we want to, we want to see that move a lot, because it, it forces her to sit still for a long period of time without dodging. But basically, as long as we can spam this whole, uh... Spear poking gunch... And also, we don't want her to block like this, because she always stays in that state for a while. God. And she is not doing what we want her to do, unfortunately. Can you, like, can you do the one where you sit still? Please? There we go. There it is. And that's an ending. So I'm going to go take another piss break and a snack break. Uh, enjoy. This one's really depressing. Mikhail. <laughs> it 
you're not here, then who's gonna kill me? <laughs> Stupid one. Who does she think I am? <laughs> Idiot. Find a dragon somehow. There's still time. Update. The Intoner Zero completed her objective. However, the Dragon Mikhail has died. And Zero's mental health is in a rather alarming state. I'm afraid there's little chance yeah, me too. of finding a solution in this timeline. As such, I recommend sealing off... So I came back, but I was... Uh... M5120. I have a block of cheese in my fridge, and I was a little hungry, needed a snack, needed something quick. So I just took a big bite out of the block of cheese, and I was eating it. <laughs> so I didn't want to, like, talk, because it would have sounded disgusting. So, uh, but yeah, we're back. Um, that ending, uh, basically the world ends. Uh, that, that, that will lead to the end of the world because Zero needs to die, um, or else the world ends. Uh, if you're wondering why, uh, wait until after the next, uh, little bit, because we have some money and weapon grinding to do, and also we gotta do the, uh, Lost Furuses. So we got that too. But, uh, Branch D will explain all of that eventually. But, uh, but basically what you need to know is, uh, what just happened? That ain't good. That, that ain't good. <laughs> It, uh, it, it's, it's kind of bad, actually. It's, it's really not ideal. That's really not the situation you want to be in. Like, uh, like, like, really, really don't want to be in that situation. Like, possibly, possibly the worst situation you could be in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade both of those now. But, uh, I'm gonna keep Imperial Tears on for the time being. And we're gonna go. Am I crazy? Like, what happened to one's brother? Uh, I don't know. He's chilling. He's somewhere. Presumably, he died. Somehow. So. And they just never actually strange, say it. Then... Wait, what? Just find another dragon. Oh, True. By accident, True. And what happened to the branches between A and C? But yeah, the premise behind the Lost Verses is, uh, as the name would imply, uh, this unnamed character lost some of the recordings. Rut row. She's gonna be in trouble. The land of seas. You know what about it? Oh, we're here. That makes sense. All right, what's up, Mikhail? Yeah. You looking big, brother? Yeah. Getting them gains, hitting the gym. Taking creatine. Drinking your water. Eating that protein. 
I don't know what else to work out people say. I don't, uh, I don't do that. I just take naps. But anyway, uh, this is where we meet that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, weird glasses girl with the big briefcase that's been, uh, following us around. We, uh, we get to meet her in these. Get a bit more context for, uh, who she is, what she's about. Ah, shit, here come that boy. What up? All right, and melt his ass. This land fell into chaos after Lady Prime's death. And melt his ass. And then we should be able to intoner mode him down pretty well. There we go. And slam jam. There we go. So the big boy's dead, now we just gotta we just gotta take the rest of them out, so nothing nothing out of the ordinary. That should be enough. We should be able to do the uh, the teleport strat now. Bonk. Damn. Never mind I lied. The game kinda screwed me over on that one. With uh, where it chose to teleport me. But uh there we go, and hit you all here on the ground, and then you're the last one. Bonk. Oh, I thought that would kill. I said, I said! There we go. Jesus Christ. Yeah, me too. I love staring at walls. And cutscene jump scare. Oh shit. I've always found this level cool. In terms of, uh, you know, I've talked about level reuse and how it's like very clearly a budget me measure. Um, God damn it. I cannot get the timing on uh, weapon swap anymore. I am getting eepy, eepy sleepy apparently. That's going to be a problem for money grinding, actually. So hopefully I can get it back before uh, before we get there. What now? But yeah, we're playing this one backwards. And you may remember this was the first level of the game after the prologue. And Mikhail didn't want to kill the uh, kill the ships. Ah. He didn't want to kill the ships. Uh, and now you just go straight for it. We don't even have to order him to. Um, if you don't piss also Piss mentioned. Um, and another thing that's cool about this level, and we'll see it here in a bit after this fight, the first chest we grabbed with a weapon was at the very start of the game in a lake near Zero's house. And... The... I'm trying, like, not to die here. Hold on. Let's make this a little bit faster, hopefully. There we go. Um, it, the, the first one that uh, we grab in the game is also the last one we grab in the game. It's a cool way how the, the way we play the levels and unlock the weapons is kind of funny how that works out. There's still some to buy from the shop, but uh, it's just deep. It's cinematic parallels, I think, is the word. All right, where's the last cannon here? Here it is. There's a glitch that can happen here sometimes where uh, one of these guys will spawn in or go flying out of bounds. Um, but I found that uh, if you just don't activate in toner mode, you don't have that problem. Bookend. Yeah, that's the one. Like I said, this is that same barricade you might remember, um, but... Uh, this time it does have an invisible wall. But yeah, here we go. And that's a weapon. That's the last weapon we get out of a chest, unless I missed one. 
So now we just gotta do money grinding and uh, side quests. Or you can just soak bread in eggs and sugar, cook it up, add honey and cream. Now I'll blast these guys out of the way, fuck them. God damn it. And we're at Zero's house. I need to go look for something. Boob. Booba. Okay. Uh, fucking, uh... Fucking, uh... Inspect all the stuff. Something, something medicine. Here's some more spare arms. The arm, if that's... A mirror. Could there be a wonder and uh, another sword. I think it. Who is this? A cord person. I thought she was just a weapon, weapon, weapon saleswoman with uh, with with nothing else going on. What's uh, what's going on? Who's a cord? What's what's the deal? Oh, accords the glasses, lady. Whoa. I see. What a what a twist. Wouldn't it be an even more insane twist if she was also the narrator that was recording the branches? Hmm. Big think. Figured I'd give you a heads up. So how come you can see the future, huh? I can't tell you that. Or maybe... Hmm? Maybe you don't see the future at all. Maybe you're the one who's making it. That would explain a lot. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not that talented. I see. Yeah, that's a strong suitcase. What the hell? Ooh, scary. Well, until next time. All right, let's uh, top up what we can. We don't have a lot of money, which I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, we ball. We ball. We'll get it back. We'll bring it back. I think I don't usually upgrade Final Nell there. I think that's I think that's what the problem was, but eh. figured to save a menu later on. Meh. What's up, Octa? Right, next up, we've got this recording from Branch B. No, not that one. That's Branch C. And that's Branch A. Come on! Uh, there we go. That's Branch B. Finally. Okay, then. Let's have a look at recording M2410E0005FL. FL is in Florida? April the 14th. Everything makes so much more sense now. We were pursuing three in the land of forests, but after obtaining a vital piece of info from Scent... All right, now we're back to uh, the mountain place. Because, uh, because Scent tipped us off about, uh, something. Some, uh, some fruit. 
are the intoners from Florida? That is the only explanation that makes sense. They do seem like Florida people. All right, pop these, and then. But this better be the best of the food I ever tasted. Don't you worry, it is delicious beyond compare. The fruit okay. is called a Mendes. And then keep keep fucking killing him. I mean, there's nothing we haven't seen here before. Just melt the boy. And we didn't really get hit by anything, so we didn't really need to. Uh, didn't really need to need to do any weapon swapping there. Neat. Take those. All right. And here we go. Tell me, is it any good for the old trousers, mate? Good. It's nothing sort of special. So we got to get over here and then uh Black them. This one we just have to go collect these chests basically. It's a collectathon. None of them are going to have anything in them. Uh as as we've come to learn, uh scent scent is a a habitual liar. It's actually in a chest up ahead. A bad feeling about this. So uh, I don't know why we trusted him in the first place when he said there was fruit here. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, doesn't seem like the smartest play. I swear I'll kill you. Okay. And then we need to pop this and. Hey, we got it. Yeah, there we go. What the hell? Okay. All right. All right, Drakengard. Yep, that's who I wanted to attack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ow, 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 ow. There we go. And we did it. We beat the level. Didn't even have to heal. Right here. This is it for sure. And whack him. And then just for funsies, I like to see how far I can get in this direction. Because we just have to wait for some dialogue and then the level will end. Next Pretty time short, Cerberus, we're gonna all things considered. And uh, yeah, sent uh, sent lied. He spread misinformation. Battered and exhausted after following scent like a bunch of idiots. But luckily, as a consolation prize, we do get the cutscene of all time. Snowy mountainside. Bruh go around this way. I always forget. I love how Decadus sleeps, by the way. He just fucking spreads out. EP time. I'm just kidding. It's talk to accord time. I know I've said it before, but if you don't change course soon, things are not going to end well. Is that what your little book says? Indeed. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Bruh.
So you're not gonna show it to me? I've been instructed not to interfere with the world. A liar. No, it's true. But, well, nobody said I couldn't give little bits of advice at least. What the hell are you anyway? We're recorders. Recorders? Right. It's our job to record world events from the ancient past to the distant future. You know the old world you people are always going on about? Well, I was sent by folks from there. Listen, I don't know jack about the old world. But if you're following me just to make records... For the sake of clarity, the no, old world she's on. referring to is well, the near timeline. That's all I'm supposed to be doing. But after all these bad endings you keep encountering, I'm really tempted to help. Now let's try and wrap things up in a way that benefits all of us, hmm? Like I need you to tell me. I can wrap things up myself. Nice. Sure, it's not the Bayonetta universe? I don't think it is. It could be, though. This franchise seems to be connected to every universe ever created. So, uh... Who's to say? I'm gonna top up on those. I don't actually need to, though, because this level's a dragon level. It's also pretty short. But also, this is a level that sort of proves what I was saying about the desert level and the original intention behind it, because, uh... Because, uh, it takes place in the desert level, but you're on Mikhail. Also, she's running on a wall like Sonic. I'm, I'm honestly kind of impressed. I don't know how she's doing that. That doesn't really make sense. Parkour. I suppose you did all right. It may not go so smoothly next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero. Hmm? Are you sure about this? Yeah. When the time comes. And she's awake. It was all a dream. Michael's still dead. Bad dream? What's up, Cord? What's good? You've been running yourself into the ground here. You think you'll get the future? Shut up, would you? At least I'm not sitting on my ass. Maybe you should just let us handle. I started this, and if you get in my kill me. We've seen many times, Zero, that you are incapable of doing that. She has Whatever. the suitcase of all time, but like literally, because she's a time traveler. Is this some Zero Time Dilemma type shit where they're trying to find their way out of the whole loop? Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like that, a 999 game, uh, nine beers, nine dogs, nine innings. That one. But no, it, it, the game actually does have a very similar, like, uh, April the 16th, like, uh, 1000 AD. The Land of Sands like a uh, timeline thing you can look at that menu is slower but it does have a very similar uh sort of vibe to that in that sense there's a lot of branching pathways and the goal is to find the one where the world doesn't end up ending somehow 
And you may be thinking, well, that's ending A, but uh, only kind of, because it does lead to Drakengard 1, which Accord would know. And in Drakengard 1, the world also ends. So, uh... Still not ideal. Yeah, this level, we just have some wizards. We just, uh, we kill them, and it breaks the tower. And then we go on to the next one, and that is the entire thing. But as you can see, the desert level is more than big enough to accommodate a dragon. So, uh, at one point, I feel like they definitely wanted that to be that to be what this level was for. Ah, motherfuckers, stop. Stop shooting me. I've never had this much trouble with this. What the hell? What the hell? Oh my god. There we go. Fuck you. Eat fireball. What the hell? Oh my god. Stop shooting my boy. Stop. I'm the main character. You're not allowed to hurt me. There we go. That's the level. Now we just chill. Look at this dude. Also, uh, if you're looking at like the town in the distance, by the way, and you're thinking, oh, facade from uh, near, uh, you're probably right. Yeah, that's the last thing I need right now. Huh? Don't you want to see everyone? You must. No, actually, I don't. I really don't. So, uh, we ball. That's this it for the Lost Versus. Supplemental repairs made to recording M4510E0900FL. Please ensure that such mistakes do not occur again. With this, all conditions... Please ensure that done. such mistakes do not occur again. Now, all that remains is Branch D. The final record of the singularity known as Zero. Alright. So now we get into weapon grinding. And in honor of that, I'm going to crack open a cold one. Actually, it's a room temperature one because it's been sitting on my desk since I started. But uh, it's monster time. Need that energy, brother. More like uh, Branch P for uh, piss. Bet you thought I thought I was gonna make a D's nuts joke. Well, uh, well, I have unfortunate news for you. Uh, D's nuts, uh, D's nuts. Okay. So mountain payday, and we can afford this. So I guess I might as well. Um, so now it's money grinding time because we have a lot of weapons in the shop to buy. One branch left and five hours on estimate. Yep. I would say the estimate's pretty generous, but also uh, Branch D is uh, relatively long compared to the uh, the other branches. But we can't actually access it until we uh, until we get all the weapons. Okay, pop this. Kill this guy. So these payday missions, the way they work is uh they throw a lot of enemies at you and when you kill them you get a gold multiplier and they also drop a bunch of money as you can see hey we got it and then uh i think yeah it's here this should work so what we do is we just set up where these gold soldiers spawn and frick. We want to get as far away from them as possible so they spend more time in the damage zone here. And this is what I was saying about elevation with these guys, that they're kind of short compared to compared to zero. So if you don't angle it right, like you kind of need to be above them. Okay, we're just going to kill this guy. And every time you kill these gold soldiers, they... Uh, They give you a another multiplier. We were close. That could have been a lot more money, but it's still a fair bit. 
But uh, this is why I say that the money route isn't super tight, because these give you a lot of money. So we do that. And then... Uh, we need to do Flint Stint in this one. <laughs> Which uh, isn't too bad. It's not too bad. It's just uh just uh, just a level. We uh we ball. Uh my fellow Americans. We're fucking balling. Michelle, bring me my copy of Dragon Guard 3. All right. So these are Accord side quests. The way they work is there's a bunch of enemies in the level and they'll drop an item, a, a quest item, and uh, well, some of them do. It's random. And we just have to get all the quest items. Also, there's these bomb guys that make it easier to kill these guys in bulk. But uh, since we're over leveled at this point, all we really need to do is mow them down and we're good. Uh, none of these guys have had the thing, so... Uh, this is a travesty of epic proportions. All right, can we, can y'all like not, can y'all like blow up please? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah. Also, we're not allowed to use items on these stages. That's another uh, requirement. And we got it. There we go. So yeah, no, only 19 out of 30, but we got all the things, so we're done. That's how we speed these up. But uh, certain ones of these will give us a weapon. And also, uh, every three we do, we get a uh, payday mission. So uh, that's the other benefit to doing these, because more payday missions means more money. So we, we, ch we chew through these in a, in a weird order. Um, or at least it'll seem weird, if you've never seen it before. But here we go, now we do Lant. of uh, Forest, Forest Payday. Uh, Ow. Death. Death. That monster do be hitting, though. Uh, yeah. And then we do On the Move, and Food Fest all the way through. Yep. First, we do the payday so that the uh, timer starts on it. So that's what we're doing. There we go. Very nice. Damn, one sip of monster and I'm fucking gaming. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm gonna get over here. Because this is where the gold boys are gonna spawn. And then right before he hits us, I'm gonna pop this. Oh, another thing is, uh... When you activate in toner mode, it sucks up all the gold that they drop. So, uh, that's another aspect of this. So, when they're, like, dropping gold, I can activate in toner mode and it'll suck it all up. As you can see by the frame drops, it's trying to, like, process all of the big money moves I just made there. And that's gonna be a huge amount of money. Because we killed, what, five soldiers? Like, that was a really good one. Like, that might pay for half of the weapons just there. But as you can imagine, because of the sheer amount of uh, money we get, it was uh, almost 400000 by the way. Uh, there's not really an exact amount we go for. I just kind of uh, get as much as possible, and then buy all the weapons, and if I can't buy all of them, uh, we do one more payday, and that's usually enough. So uh, that's what we're doing here. That's pretty much how this plays out. <laughs> mm. 
For these side quests, on the other hand, these can be kind of annoying. Uh, this one I can realistically lose. This one's a different genre from the previous one. And uh, there's a certain part where we can get knocked off of a platform by an archer. And if we do, we really have to scramble to get back up there before uh, time runs out. This one is, uh, they have these three chests. And uh, you just have to break them open. But since you're not allowed to use items, I can't abuse defense pots to not get knocked out of the way. So I have to, like, hope that the uh, the enemies uh, cooperate with me. Uh, which they don't seem to be doing. There we go. And Kablamo. Kablawi. And we get over here. And we get over here. And we get over here. And then... Uh, we get up here and then pop in toner mode so they can't blast us off. I'm going to hope we can deal enough damage to the brick, uh, to the uh, to the chest. But we didn't, so we're going to have to run back up there. But it should be one shot. So I'm not too worried. I think we got it. But this one's stressful. Pretty much all the forest ones are stressful. The forest ones are my least favorite for a number of reasons. Because this isn't even the worst one. And like, like this one this one's nothing book club sanctity makes me want to die but uh there we go so that's another weapon Foodfest. Foodfest is like the one we did on the mountain stage. There's going to be a bunch of enemies, and uh, they're going to drop stuff. But the catch here is that this one has Skelly Boys. <laughs> For the first two here, we're going to be locked to just the gauntlets, because uh, that's how that works. The weapon for that area is the one that... Uh, that you use, with the exception of, as we'll see in a bit, uh, Cathedral City. That one lets you use all of them because it doesn't have a particular weapon. Um, but the third one gives you free range, and the spear makes killing these skelly boys really easy. But also the bombs will uh, will kill the skelly boys instantaneously, which uh, also helps. So like that right there, boom. And the other aspect of this is uh, the Skelly Boys are always guaranteed to drop an item that we need. That aspect of it is not random. So the best thing to do is kind of like group up the regular enemies to see if we can kill any of those. And then um, sort of hit the skeletons so that they stay still. And then boom, bam, kablam, they blow up. Try not to get blown up with them, because the bombs can damage you. And uh, that's no bueno, because they can deal a lot of damage. So we just uh, let that happen over there, chain reaction, and then suck up all the gunch. Because this will also suck up those items. And then we just kill the soldiers until we get our stuff. Um, I said kill the soldiers, there it is. So pretty easy, right? Uh, wrong, it gets so much worse and more annoying. So we do that one, and then we do the one below it which is uh, Ifergore. Doesn't really matter. Stinger meds. Yeah. The whole point is just to get to the end of this uh, side quest series, because each type of side quest in each area has three <coughs> sequentially. And uh, we got to do them to get to the last one, because the last one has a weapon. So these are unfortunately not optional, even though I'd kind of like them to be, because... They're annoying and stressful. Alright, there we go. Blow them up. Get the ass. Alright, hello. 
Uh, bring the bomb over here, friend. Blow him up. Blow him up. What? How did that not kill the skelly boy? Hello? Uh, did I accidentally knock him out of the way? The fuck? Whoops. There we go. Okay. That might put a bit of uh that might make this a bit difficult because we are low on time and the bombs boys are not walking over here they are not being nice they're not being kind they're not being respectful of my time as a speedrunner of the video game there we go that should be enough nope the range on the bomb is also confusing as shit sometimes there we go now uh this one it's actually easier to identify who has the other uh things because it's the soldiers with the spears uh, problem being only certain ones only a certain amount spawn at one time before uh, before we have to take out more to, to spawn them in so uh, it is gonna be down to the wire Okay, show me, show me the, show me the, show me the spear boy. There it is. Yeah, reel down to the wire. Two seconds left. But, uh, we're good. We're good. That one's done. And that just gets us some material, but again, that's fine. We, uh, we're only doing this to get to book club. Because we like books. We like reading, I guess. Uh, but first, because we cleared out three, you'll remember, uh, we unlocked another forest payday. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Show me the money. All right, so we get our chakra out, we pop in toner mode, and we go to town on our boy here. Same as last time. Nothing's changed, same strat, just try to kill as many gold boys as possible. We did not get it. Oh, you're not dead? Hello? What do you mean? What do you mean by this? Bro had like 0 .001 health. Alright, suck that gold up. You get down here. You freak. Yeah, this is not gonna go as well. We didn't get to spin to win. Frick. Frick! That sucks. Yeah, not getting spin to win kind of kills it there. That's why I was saying like need, I need to be able to get that timing. Um, oh well. It's not super tight. Again, the worst case is like, oh no, we have to do one more payday mission. Oh oh god, what a what a what a what 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 a time waster, you know? Um, not a big deal. The real time waster is book club sanctity, though. Um, if I die less than two times on this, I am going to be shocked. This one is annoying. Not even just because of the time limit, you also die very quickly. Like, they have bumped up the damage numbers a lot. But another mechanic that hasn't come up yet is uh, when you do die, if you restart the level, uh, it does lower the amount of damage you take each time. So the more times you do it, the easier it gets. So, uh, eventually we'll beat it. Eventually we'll get there. Um, but yeah, we got a, we got a Cerberus gunch here. Ow. 
Okay, we're fine. And this guy can one-shot us, so, like... It, I, before he's dead, I have to be, like, insanely careful. Alright, here we go. Okay, and get out of there. Kablamo. Okay, Cerberus is dead. Alright, and again with the spear, we can just kind of kill these guys outright. It makes life way easier. Uh, we don't like getting hit by the soldiers because they do still deal damage. We also don't like being close to the bombs like that because uh, doing that, um, doing the spear attack that does a lot of damage also locks us into an animation for a bit. So dodging out of the way of those bombs can be kind of scary. We still have one undead here. Okay, now we're just looking for spear boys. Okay, so we're just going on a rampage here real quick to try to get the regular soldiers out of here. And there's one. And then one more spear boy is all we're looking for. Whoa, shit! Okay, I think we got it. I think we're fine. Brick. Oh, there it is. We were close enough. Okay, first try. We ball. We actually ball. I am I am goaded. I'm goaded with the sauce. Corked up white burb. Busting it down Drakengard style. All of that for one weapon, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the type of game this is. Okay. Next up, I'm gonna do the Desert Payday. I'm just goes on the way down. <laughs> you ever just sneeze? All right, let's get it. All right, intoner mode. All right, mess this dude up. And we got it. Alright. Now we should just be able to stay here. Because the money guys, they drop from above. Yep. And then they just kind of... Yep. And then we'll take him out with intoner mode. And we do this away from them so that there's more time before they can hit us. And then same thing, just activate it away from them and god damn it. I hate it here, can y'all get hit please? And there we go. Unfortunately did not get a third kill, or a fourth kill rather. But that's still a pretty substantial amount of money, so I'm not upset. We're doing pretty all right. Because we need a little bit under a million if memory serves. And uh, we're just about there already. Because that one forest one was actually a friggin' banger. All right, Cathedral Payday. This one can go really well or really terrible. It all kind of depends. This one also likes to glitch out a lot. <laughs> Death. Let's 
So here's you. We take out the Gygus, as you do. Nothing new about this. Problem with this guy is he likes to just sit here for a little bit before he uh, comes out. But we got spin to win, so now we just uh, murder him. And then this guy, he comes charging out, and we just immediately stun him. And here we go. This is what a good one looks like. Now we have you. You're going to charge at us like a freak. And then we're going to pop in toner mode so we can teleport over there as well as pick up the money. Boom. Kablamo. And then we are going to position ourselves like this and hope for the best. All right. Pull that money in, kill this guy. And Kablamo. God damn it. Get over here. Freaks. Hey. There we go. And that should end up being all the money we need. If, uh, if I'm mathing correctly. We can find out. So, we need to do Comet's Trail and Shooting Stars, which are both Cathedral, to get weapons. So, uh, Shooting Stars. And before we do that, we're gonna go to Buy Weapons and... Click on through all these. And you can see all that hard-earned money just melt away in the top right. And there it is. The shop is cleared out. So all we gotta do is the rest of the side quests. That was really good money grind. Like, actually kind of insane. Over here, there's another chest one. Like I said, you can use all your weapons, so that makes this pretty nice because we can just kind of melt the chests and then dodge or not. Go uploading these screens. Uh, unfortunately, me. Um, the screens do be loading though, for real, for real. Ow. My balls. Suck them. Put them in your mouth. There we go. And we got 30 seconds to get over to this last one, pop in toner mode, and then do the thing. This shouldn't be too bad. There we go. And Kablamo. There it is. Yeah, the, uh, the Cathedral City ones are pretty easy. So uh, there's only one more stressful thing for the rest of the run. And uh, yeah, um, if you know, you know. There's one more mission, but one more side quest, but it's it's easy as well. Just have to kill one Titan in like two minutes. Which like we're speedrunners. We we know what's up. Alright, Comet's Trail.
All right, blow him up, blow him up, blow him up. Oh, there it is. Okay, we did blow him up, actually. I thought it might not hit. Ow. Oh, wait, no, that's fine. Ow. Piss off. But yeah, we just, we just, we just whittle him down. Whenever the bombs show up, we try to hit him. And then here we go. And see, that bomb didn't hit. Suck my nuts. Perish, Titan. They do inflate their health a lot, I will say, for, for these missions, because uh, they want you to make use of the bombs, but, you know, it's whatever. You just pick up the things, and we're done. And that's the last weapon. Ending D, here we go. I guess branch D, not really the ending yet. Route D, whatever, whatever you want to call it. There it is. You managed to unlock every weapon. Branch D unlocked. So I did not miss any. I'm always kind of paranoid on the last one. Like, uh, I'm like, oh god, did I miss one of the chests? If so, I'm screwed. Because then I have to figure out which one I missed. But no, we're good. So uh, we go over here and we ball. Am I topped up on items? I think I am. Or at least close enough to it. Yeah, we're... We're, uh... Oh, yeah, because we unlock another medium slot. I'll go ahead and buy it. And here we go. Back to uh, cutscene movie night. After that burb commercial break, where I actually play the game for a long stretch of time. And by long, I mean like maybe half an hour. Divergence. Branch D. I do remember when this was originally being routed, a lot of people thought that like it would so be really long because of how long it would take to get that money, Maybe but like, no, the payday the missions are uh, kind of a little There's bit really broken. <laughs> and it begins in the land of mountains. And here we go. What's up, Mikhail? What you got to say to me? I mean, I'm going. So this one picks up right around where um, where chapter two was in uh, in in branch A, but for some reason the uh, the disciples are with us. Uh, don't worry about it. the The reason they're here really isn't as important as the fact that they are here, because them not being with their intoners. Uh, combined with the flower uh, accelerating its growth in this branch causes uh, not so good things to happen, we'll say. And that's that's the important factor here. Um, so we start out with... Uh, oh, I forgot to switch my uh, spear. The spear I have equipped, but that's fine. Um... The, the difference is going to be marginal for now. Alright, bonk. And bonk. And bonk. And bonk. And bonk. Mess him up. Don't you dare stay in Lady 4 with, uh, these nuts. Got him. God, I'm tired. <laughs> um. Okay. This is what they call the fuck around and find out phenomenon. I, I put myself down for degen hours. Uh, for this run, when I submitted, uh, which is the fucking around phase, and I'm now in the finding out phase where I have to actually do the run during degen hours. That That is the situation we are in right now, gamers. And that clears that room out. And 
and the way Branch D essentially manifests is uh, Dragon Guard does not belong in non degen hours. That's fair. That's real. Real and true. But the way Branch D plays out is essentially you get an abridged version of every chapter from uh, from Branch A. So, well, every chapter besides chapter one, I should say. So it's pretty neat in that sense. Again, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, what was it, book ending? I'm not a film student. Well, I'm not a student at all, but when I was a student, I wasn't a film student. I was a person who plays video games and wears dresses. Alright, boom. Five gets absolutely nothing? Uh, not quite. But, uh, we do not get an abridged version of her chapter. <laughs> because in order for, for events later on to make sense, she does have to have been killed by Dito. So that's why we don't go to the land of, uh... The, the land of the sea. At least not yet. We kind of do, but it's in a flashback. Way later on in the branch. Ah. Actually, I guess I should probably uh, try to do this. Fuck y'all. Yeah, and then we can just sort of new them. I'm a car. They call me. They call me the Zero Car because I. So my name is Zero and I'm a car. Eight. I I really do just say anything that pops in my brain, huh? I really do. I really, really do. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you want more of that. I guess I never did shill my channel. I was gonna wait until the end for that. But uh eh. anyway, I'm a YouTube streamer. But uh my channel is, uh, is the name that's on the screen, if you're curious. I do mostly JRPGs, but sometimes I do speedruns. I usually save, like, this run and sometimes Drakengard 1 for, for, like, subscriber milestones and stuff. But, uh, what, what, what you see here is pretty much what you get on my streams. I exactly this level of commentary all the time. <laughs> All right, bonk. Yeah, of course. She's worried her little accessory will go out of style. Can I get to this chest before the cutscene happens? I can. Yippee. I don't think I actually need it. I think that's a white material. I need black material for the spear, which we don't get until later on in Branch D. Worried her little accessory will go out of style. And uh, right. All right, and keep on trucking. Do we think Decadus is uh, forklift certified? I think Decadus is forklift certified. I think it would make sense for him to be. Seriously? What will Lady Zero do once the Intoners are no more? And pop these. Why would I care? Right now, there's lots of killing going on. And that's and over I here mean. we get more of this. Nice. Nice, nice. And I think it's time to pop in toner mode. And we go sicko mode. We teleport around. Like uh like someone who teleports. Like Ant-Man in uh, Thanos's Rectum. And nice. This should work. Damn monster! 
God damn it. Am I really gonna use all my healing items? On like regular ass dudes? Like on God, for real, for real. Okay, and blast him. There it is. That's that that's game. Alright. Four is up ahead. Let's go. Yep. Not the base material I want. I always remember that, but it's always like after I grab the chest and not before. Um, so I need to remember to switch out my spear for the one with better damage. Yeah, that like doubles our damage almost again. We need to top up on everything. Oh, we still had a max recovery. Cool. Outside of uh, upgrading Final Nell two more times, we don't really have any reason to uh, save money anymore. And we should pretty much always have enough to top up on potions. So post, uh, post weapon grind, money kind of stops being a factor. There's enough chests on the way to get us the gold we need for the upgrades, so we just kind of, just kind of, just kind of vibe. Just shut brain off. Play game. But yeah, here's four. Who's uh, having a normal one? Four. Oh, sweet Zero. I realized something. We don't have to be scared of this world. I wasn't. Because once I destroy it. There won't be a world to be scared of anymore. Not if I destroy your twin tails by cutting them off. <laughs> what then, freak? The flower's taken her over. I always thought that uh, this scene would be a lot funnier. Um, this entire world will and almost like better. If uh, instead of this being a boss fight, when she was skipping around, she just kind of fell down and went splat and that was it. I think uh, I think that I think that would have been a better better way to do this scene. Cuz uh, she is real close to the edge right there. I tell you what. But uh, yeah, hi Zofia. This is uh, the Gabriel fight from Branch A, but again, and uh, green. And in a much smaller arena. That is that is pretty much it. Yeah, me too. Me too, Zofia. Uh, so the best thing to do is to stay on the ground because it'll bait him down and uh, that should trigger him to do like the stomp attack um, that's not happening this is a problem there we go now I'll do it now I'll do the charging up thing And I've seen a lot of people when they play this casually struggle to uh, consistently hit that to uh, stun him. And uh, there's a pretty easy trick to uh, to not miss when that happens because it's pretty easy. You don't have a whole lot of control over where your fireballs go. If you just go neutral, I found it's really consistent. And then if you're lucky and do movement correctly. Oh, okay. Um, how dare I say anything ever. Uh, that that is That is an example of my hubris right there. But usually if you go neutral, you won't miss. And uh, he'll get stunned pretty pretty consistently. But now I can't really keep him in place because uh, I fucked it up. Is this for his personal dragon? Nah, this is an angel. Or I guess kind of a demon? Probably, maybe? Yo, thank you for the dono. Heck yeah. But, uh, nah, this is just an angel, I think. Maybe a demon, but Zophiel doesn't really appear anywhere else. He's not really explained all that well, if I'm honest. He just kind of shows up for this fight, 
and uh, you just kind of have to accept it, I suppose. Yeah, this, is what's, this is what's happening. Frick. Frick! God damn it. The intoner mode, uh. Post mortem animation. Stop me from shooting him the third time. Okay, can you just stomp the ground, please, friend? No? Okay, well. Fine. This fight can be really fast and it can be really annoying. It really just kind of depends on what kind of day Zofiel is having. There we go. But I have to save one strength pot and one defense pot to make Thor's fight after this not annoying. Which is going to make this last stretch of this fight very annoying. Because we're not going to do as much damage and we're going to have to be more careful. Alright, Zofiel, play nice. Holy shit, he actually did. What a legend. Okay, we probably still have to get him to do it one more time. Or if we can get in toner mode here, actually, I think we can... Oh, no, no, never mind. Perfect. Alright, well, that's phase one. Okay, pop these, pop these. Y'all know the drill. Just pop our defense and strength, and uh, don't use in toner mode. So back to the uh, false memories. Uh, this is those manifesting, but this time with more detail, because she's going actually bonkers because of the flower. Stop blocking, freak. There we go. And just melt her. And keep melting her. And perfect. That keeps her in place, and four is dead. Conveniently just off screen, even though they've shown worse stuff like that than that on screen earlier in the game. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Your sisters will be joining you soon enough. Hey, she's all yours. Now Me when I'm a dragon named Mikhail and I eat my uh my friend's sister for sustenance. The evolution of a dragon. Yep. I'm surprised Mikhail was cool with that. Yeah, he's chilling. But yeah, so uh, since um, since the flower is growing in strength, when he eats one intoner, it's enough to bring him back to where he was at the end of Branch A. Which, uh, if uh, if you're seeing the writing uh, writing between the lines here, or reading between the lines rather. Uh, that means that uh, there is a there is a level four Mikhail now, um, which means he might actually be powerful enough to uh, not get killed when confronting one. Which uh, which would be good, generally speaking, because uh, then we can kill one and then uh, save the world. How fun this game, yo! It do be this game.
The sisters are coming undone. Went to sleep for a few hours? Heck yeah. Good morning, gamer. Hope you had a good nap. Two levels at once. In the midst of all these anomalies, Zero is heading for the land of forests. Accord with such a vibe? Yeah, I love Accord. So see, what a gamer. Drag and the stronger an intoner's magical force, the stronger that craving. That's, that's why. Yeah. Mm, true. But why? I'm afraid I can't. So like. My name. <laughs> yep. So now Accord is making herself known to everyone. Hey. The. Uh, you don't. Does this. One day. No. I don't. Well, track down. Oh. Don't worry. Well, good. Do take this brand. Thanks for. Of course, that. Glad I woke up in time for the last boss. Yeah. Which ending are you on? This is Branch D. We have all the weapons. We did A, B, C, and the Lost Verses. So we are finishing things up. And I'm looking at the time and realizing I think I might have, might have, might have inflated my estimate a little bit more than I than I had intended. Um. So we might have to might have to stall for time a little bit. Uh, my bad, but uh, we'll see how the rest of this goes. We do still have to actually do the final boss. That could take a bit if I'm having an off day. Zero. Hey, zero. All right, here we go. Forest level, and slice through these. And we'll open this gunch, mostly because this guy is going to charge over here, and cool, perfect timing. Can we in toner mode? There we go. And spin the win. And then over here, we just uh, just keep on keep on trucking, keep on trucking. No, keep on balling. She's already here. <laughs> Check out all the blood and guts. Still just same levels, pretty much same uh, same strats, just uh, harder because the enemies deal more damage, take more damage, etc., etc. But uh, really, really nothing new going on here. Um, here's a chest. Give me that. And pop these and these. And then uh, Kablamo. 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 Get they ass. And then boom. Cool, cool. And we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. We're good. Somehow in toner mode is still active. I don't know how a spirit got all the way up there, but we're fine. Take the skelly boys out. Collateral that spirit. Cool. And then get both these dudes. There we go. And then do this to get those guys out of the Skelly Boys. And then use in toner mode to just absolutely demolish those Spirit Boys. Take you out. Kablammo. And this is the last Skelly Boy. And we broke his guard, which brings him out. And then cool. Can you perish, please? There we go. Got him. And yeah. 
Nothing more to say about that, really. Here we go. What do we fight here again? I forgot. Oh yeah, the undead giants. And boom, and boom. And Mikhail causes us some uh, frame drops, but you know what's new. That's been happening since we started. And get another combo out on this guy. Cool, cool. Oh, shit. I couldn't actually see zero to time the uh, spin to win correctly. So, uh, pop these and then switch here in toner mode. There it is. And now we just sit here and kill. Nice. Question is, remake when? Hopefully soon. I would love to see this game remade. But, uh... Unfortunately... Square Enix doesn't like acknowledging this game. They have opened up to it a little bit more, but uh, they still don't really like name-dropping Drakengard. Which, uh... I don't know, I have mixed feelings on because I get it, but also, like, Drakengard is goaded. So, uh... They should really be proud of what they got here. But I don't know. I don't know. It's whatever. Like, to be honest, I don't really think it needs a remake. It just needs to exist on a console that it can, uh, that actually has the hardware to run it. Um, I'd say if they made it backwards compatible with PS5, that would be, <coughs> that would be equally as good as a remake to me. The game otherwise holds up pretty well. I feel like I feel like that might be the way to do it. But then Sony kind of sucks about uh making things backwards compatible. So, you know, there's another hurdle. <laughs> so anyway, now we're here. This is the boss fight for uh Chapter 3, I guess you'd say, of, uh, for the forest bit, uh, you could say the forest part of, uh, of, of, of Branch D here. Um, and you probably think you know who we're gonna be fighting, which Intona we're gonna be fighting. You don't. Uh, unless you've played the game before, then you probably do. Drakengard 1 definitely needs it more. Oh, absolutely. Also, the big flowers. <laughs> but yeah, remember how I brought up 5 earlier? Well, uh, she's a zombie now. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's all I got to say about it. She's, uh, she's a zombie. And Dito, being the freak that he is, he's into it. You're looking better than ever now. This is exactly. 
exactly the kind of insane world I've always wanted. It's just perfect for an undesirable sap like me. I think I'm gonna stay here forever! Sure you are, bud. I love this new U5. You can do whatever you want to me. Anything at all. Hey, Z. <laughs> Looks like your number's up. <laughs> Which one? Manuel, arise! Which number? 69? I hope it's 69. Um, also, we summoned the crab. Zagrigori. And yes. sent summons Egregory. And they're gonna have like a little like Godzilla tier fight in the background that we don't have any input on. It's just kind of set dressing. It's almost disappointing, but uh, this fight is also faster than that one probably would have been. So uh, the way this works is the first thing there's a bunch of uh, there's mad dudes. There's dudes everywhere. And we gotta kill them. We gotta kill 99 of them. Because uh, they needed to pad out the length of the game. They knew that uh, people would try to speedrun it, and uh, they planned ahead. They made it so that this fight would take forever because they're super spread out. And it's hard to kill more than like two of them at a time. Alright, bonk. 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 Also, Lady Two's already dead in this uh, this timeline again. The memes don't really matter. It happened off screen. Um, that needs to have happened for the story to make sense. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Um, my head cannon would be that she probably game ended after the uh, the uh, orphanage situation from the DLC. Um, Tragic, but also one less intoner we have to fight. So I'm 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 about it. I'm about it. it saves me a bit of time. Uh, keep killing Gal Galio. And Bonk. And Kablamo. And uh, Kablamo. And Kablamo. And here we go. Now uh, that's over. We uh, we can finally attack five. So here we go. High five. Do you like having a health bar? I hope not, because uh, you don't anymore. She uh, doesn't dodge around that much, or really block ever, which is nice. But the reason being, she can regenerate. So now we have this weird sequence where she's going to, like, do that. Um, yeah, I wasn't really sure how to describe that. But uh, that's that's what happens. And then uh, she gets her health back again. And then, uh, yeah. Let's go in Ariosh mode? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. This part is... Hey, can you, like, not clip through the floor, friend? Thank you. There we go. So this section, you have to wait out the timer anyway, but the goal is just get rid of all the guys before the timer's up so that she can't eat any of them. And then uh, we just melt the rest of her health bar. And then... That's fight. Get stabbed, Lamau. <laughs> 
But uh, Dito and Scent, they uh, they summoned angels. And you may have noticed that no intoners were singing to, uh, to do that. That's a problem, because uh, that turns them back into birds. That uses too much magic. Yeah, fuck you. Go back to the bird dimension where you belong. But Sen's cool with it. He's chilling. He's vibing. He's balling. I honestly had no idea. I am just an idiot after all, right? Oh well. <laughs> There's no point in living in a world without Lady Two anyway. Now I can rest. F. So there goes two of our party members. That's probably fine. Surely the other two will, uh, will remain with us for the rest of the game. Right? Right? Did I miss two dying in this route? Nah, it happens off screen. It's one of the weird things this game does to, uh, save on having to explain things. It's like, okay, well this character that's not important here just, uh, they're, they're, they're dead. It's, uh, it's whatever. They're dead. Don't worry about it. And upgrade final Nell to level 3. And continue. Oh god, I can hear the disciples outside of my window making disciple noises. But as I continue to it's almost morning time. Zero, oh no. I began to find myself filled with very strange emotions. Oh, oh. so it seems disciples were always meant to be paired with certain intoners. Yep. This explains a lot. So Dito and Sent reverted to their original forms as payment for summoning angels without their intoner's power. It takes a lot of energy to summon an angel without the power of a song. True. There was no way for them to keep their human forms. <laughs> well, this certainly mucks up the works now, doesn't it? A little bit. And on top of that, it looks like Mikhail is having trouble restraining. You could say that. What did that accord girl say again? It's a dragon's instinct to consume the flower? I don't think he can hold something like that in check so easily. When the time comes, I'll feed him. He can have me. By the way, Octa. Yes. Here we go. It's the scene of all time. time. My musky odor. Besides, the sweet tang of man funk really gets me in the mood. Wash up or get out. Goodness, this is quite the dilemma indeed. Really? Bro, it's just a bath. Now you two. Yes. Good. Yes. I'm not going to miss I'm actually going to go through this one slowly. I need y'all to I need y'all to hear this. Your performance has been abysmal. Preposterous. My gargantuan joystick is the talk of the town and size doesn't equate to joy in the Huh? Look, it's not about how many times you continue. It's about making the most of your just being gargantuan is worth. So either level up your skills or we're done. Got it? E 
Yes, my lady. Terribly sorry, my lady. As for you, Decadus, frankly, you've always been a perfect gentleman. I seek only to serve. But your preferences are a bit... If we can't go five minutes without you begging me to punish you somehow. <sighs> that kind of stuff is fine on occasion, but if... A thousand apologies. Great, then. I'm glad... Yes, yes my, my lady. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the conversation that just I happened. So. Not tired. I, I imagine not. Still, please. What are you, my? No, I swore to serve you for eat. All right, all right. I suppose, lady. Ho oh, ho! The land of sand. Better tackle them both. One, you fly off and search from above. Okay. Very well, my lady. Understood. My lady? This feels... Perhaps because Ten said... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my favorite, uh, camp dialogue. Because it's so out of left field. Like, something serious just happened, we lost two party members, and it's like... Hey, Okta, you suck. Get good. And take a bath. Stinky. This sure is a video game. All right, here we are. Another just pretty standard level here. Oh, we uh, we do the stuff and things, and then we do the things and stuff, and you know, kill things, fight stuff. Um, that uh, that about sums up most of the game, and that includes what we're doing now. Ow, shit ass. Boom, bang, kablam. Right, let's give it a look. Oh. You're not getting near, lady. I thought I hit square, but I guess yes, I not. Okay. Uh, pop this, then we should have enough in toner mode to wipe them out. Did they get screwed every camp? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, a lot of sex is happening off screen in this game. It's like a core plot point. Like a like an important piece of lore, actually. Because that's what the intoner's power comes from. Um, can you hit the thing, Zero? He's right there. Why are you swinging the other way? Cuckoo. Makes sense for a Yoko Taro game? Yup. Okay, around here, and then over here. Wee! And then around this corner, and wee! Wee! And bonk, and wee! And then here, and here, and in toner mode. Pop in here. Just want to murder three and get this over with. There it is. And spin to win the B. And they're all in range. That's actually perfect. Usually one of these idiots will uh, end up outside of the range where it damages them, but uh, fortunately not this time. We are, we are, we are good. We are good. This room's kind of funny. I'm going to go ahead and skip that, but all it was doing is showing you, hey, there's a chest up there and some, some skelly boys. Uh, what it tries to do is make you think you have to do that entire room. But in reality, the only reason to do that room is if you want that chest, which we don't. So we just leave. We, do, we don't have to do that. Just walk out. You can leave. Dude, if shit sucks, hit the bricks. The share zone. Fine. 
bonk. Okay, we need to get up here, and then we got uh, an arrow boy and another arrow boy, and then fly off here. Um, get up here, another arrow boy, and another arrow boy. Ow! I'm gonna go ahead and pop these now, actually, because it'll make hitting this last guy easier. Because now we're in a situation. Uh, okay, pop you. We already did that. So, in toner mode. And then we just uh, combo. And then get up here. And we hit the ground. And spin to win, baby. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the vibe. I'm gonna go ahead and heal for safety. And then spin to win. There it is. All right. That's level. Okay. This guy. I thought three like dark places. She does, my lady, but well, um, she enjoys high places as well. So. so, if I'm remembering correctly, the next level, and uh, you know, I can't stress enough, the OST in this game so far has been a banger. But uh, up next, we have uh, the best song in the game, hands down. Like, hands down. Goaded. Like, like y'all better be ready to, to, to jam. Like, like, get your rat jams ready if, if you have those. I don't know if this channel has rat jam, actually. But uh, it should. Y'all better fix it real quick, because this song is a banger. A certified hood classic. A certified McHale classic, even. I think it's just level, and there might be one more. I kind of forget. The levels start to blend, uh, blend together. Oh, it is this one. Perfect. Do 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 My name is Mikhail. My name is Mikhail. I really love me some zero. I'm not a stinky dragon, nor am I a dirty dragon. Hop on my back and let's go for a ride. Yay! Do 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 do. It's time for verse two. My name is Mikhail. My name is Mikhail. I also love me some rotten meat. Give me praise, give me praise, give me praise, give me praise. Tell me I'm the bestest. Hop on my back and let's fly through the sky. Yay! Hey. Hi, huh? there it is. <laughs> there better not be a third verse. What? Sing again and I'll kill you. Fine. I love Mikhail. I love the McHale song, it's so goaded. And now we're just doing a regular aerial level. For now. This does have a boss fight component again. Okay. And kill him. Now we get gargoyle cubes, so that's fun. Pretty much the same thing as any other aerial enemy. Same thing as any other aerial level to begin with. Just, uh, you know, try to take everything out. It matters even less now than it did earlier, but uh, we're stuck here anyway. Might as well try to gain. Lady Zero, how does it look up there? 
goddamn gargoyle cubes? Real. What's wrong? Those cubes require massive amounts of magical energy to operate. It's highly doubtful. And mess them up. And got him. <laughs> of course they And got him. Get out of the way of that. And we ball. Ah. Can I stop missing? Thank you. There we go. And that should be another section. Oh, nope, there's this. Got him. That should be it. That feels like it. Maybe not. Gargoyle cubes? Cubes of the... There it is. And we did. 41 out of 41. And here we go. So, uh, three's just kind of chilling on a magical platform out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, she is about to summon... Me. I forgot that was his name, actually. <laughs> Ezra Andromeda mentioned? No, this is an ancient dragon. Um, basically a god. Um... And you're really, if you're a dragon, you are really, really not supposed to kill these things. So, uh, Mikhail's not having a great time. So, this is kind of an auto-scroller. You get opportunities to hit him during this. And, um, huh? what do you mean? the more health you can take out, the faster it'll be in the second part, uh, once we, uh, we do a thing to, to stop him in his tracks. But you cannot kill him during this first phase, because a, uh, story important thing has to happen. So you're basically just, uh, trying to do as much as you can. I kind of want to get hit here, yeah, because then we can intoner mode and got him. Oh, never mind. We wasted it. Oh, well. It happens. It'd be like that. Keep hitting him. And more. One more. And then uh, one more laser here. Damn. I thought that was going to be... There it is. Hi, Decadus. Give me a boost. That's kind of amazing. So if you're wondering how he got up here, they never really clarify how Octa was able to throw him this high in the sky. So I think what you're supposed to gather is that he used his uh well, you can you can use your brain your your brain. You can you can figure it out. Um because it is sizable. But if I use such power. I'll go back to being so uh so do it that way you will your lack of pity is intoxicating what you want to call it off <laughs> do you deny me this pleasure no I must do this it is my reward <laughs> armoros uphold He's pulling his cock out.
And uh, here come that boy. He summoned the fuck you tower. And now Ezrael cannot teleport around anymore. So let me pop another set of these and then we just wail on him, basically. And three is normal. Three, three is, uh, well, she's not. But, like, the flower is having no influence on her. She's just a freak. Okay, safety, because I think that laser, I was in range of being killed by it, and that would have been annoying. I was. And cool. Oh yeah? I can arrange that. Yep, those are numbers. Congrats on uh, graduating preschool. Girls, ladies. Piss fight! Yeah. One to go. Never gonna forgive you if you kill three. Too late. <laughs> Too late. And uh, also rip Decadus. That should be enough to get us our last spear upgrade, I think. Might need a little bit more money. He died as he lived, whipping his cock out. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, top out all of our stuff. And check out upgrades. Yep, we have enough. Yippee. I actually did the money really well this time. I didn't have a whole lot of excess, which means we didn't waste a whole lot of time during the money grind. Whenever I do this, I mostly do it on vibes. If I was more dedicated, I'd have like an actual, uh, actual like list of everything Why that needs that? grabbed, but uh, now nah, I just kind of do it off memory. Let by lay by. <sighs> no, it all. But here we go. So now we have a flashback about uh, what the flower is, how Zero got it, how uh, basically everything that they've been teasing but not fully explaining this entire time. Um, so if you're curious and you haven't really been able to follow everything so far, no worries. Uh, this is the puzzle piece that puts it all together. Just be, be sure to pay attention to the dialogue during the mission here. All right. The first time I saw this flower, hate wizards. Get out of here, wizards. Now I'm just a corpse being kept alive. So yeah, uh, zero is a zombie. A corpse. Big reveal number my brain, one. My heart, my body. It's all being kept in motion by the flower. I'm no longer alive in any real sense of the word. Rick. This flower is a calamity that threatens the entire world. It's growing, feeding off me. Eventually, it's going to consume me entirely. And once that happens, Bruh. once it's fully grown, it's going to destroy everything. No, the wizard. Not the guy, the wizard. <laughs> Pretty shit. Hit the wizard. Her. There we go. Nice. This level also is a cool thing within toner mode. 
you pro can probably already tell, but it adds lyrics when you're in intoner mode. There are some other levels that do that, but uh, this is the one where it's the most noticeable by far. Because uh, the rest of the OST is so, like, quiet. Um, where is the imp? I don't, I don't see it. Uh, bud? Oh, there it is. And we clipped it through a wall. Very cool. Also, I'm getting my shit rock. Very cool. Ah! Uh, can you target the imp, please? Like, the enemy... Thankfully, this is the most annoying part of the level, but, like, Christ, dude. Just let me kill the thing I need to kill and move on. I want to I wanna hear more of the backstory, dog. I don't want to kill imps. I want to I want to I want to feel something. When I realized I was infected by a flower that was going to end the world. I tried to kill myself. Well, Technically, I was already dead, but, yeah. Anyway, I tried to rip the damn thing out, but in the end, that just made things worse. The flower freaked out, started sprouting these children. Five little girls, one after the other. They burst out of me and ran off before I could blink. Basically, to prevent me from killing it, the flower made copies of me. And that's how I ended up with my sisters. Of course, these children aren't any more alive than I am. So now, the eldest corpse is running around killing all of its little corpse sisters. <laughs> Insane, isn't it? Ah, uh, shit, here come that boy. It's weird, because this level really didn't even need to have combat. This could have all been a cutscene, but I guess they wanted to add an extra level. Aside from Michael existing in the world at this point, and that being shown off with uh, with that, um, it's pretty much the only thing that happens in the game that uh, I think we might be dead. Um, well, we were right by a, right by a checkpoint. It's fine. I thought I healed in time, but I guess there's some amount of threshold where it doesn't consider you as having the health. Um, oh well, it'd be like that. <laughs> we didn't lose that much time. Um, yeah, so remember what I said about how the, uh, the ogres can just kind of kill me? Um, well, th th there, there's your proof. I, uh, I was not exaggerating how much damage some of these gunches can do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just, uh, we hop up here and we, and we. And we cool. That's fucking time we're gonna um, not get hit by all that shit. And we're also gonna summon Michael because that shit. Oh my god! Eat my ass! There we go. As I searched for a way to kill my sisters, I learned there was only one option. Damn! If I wanted to put him in the ground for. Good. I was going to need a dragon. See, to break the flower's magic, only a dragon, or a weapon made from a dragon, will do the trick. So I joined up Okay, we should be good with only one left. And the two of us worked together. That was annoying.
funny you can heal while dead and still die see i've never seen that happen i'm not surprised that it's a thing by by any stretch but uh yeah it's definitely new Then you know what to do. Once all my sisters are dead, you have to kill me too. Deal? What's up, Accord? All right, that's level. Glad to see you're finally interested in hearing me out. Yeah. Though you could sound a bit more. We are um, super underestimate, by the way. So I do hope whoever is on timer is awake. Um, I will take a piss break between, uh, between the next level and the final boss, but, uh, For starters, we are very close. Sisters, shall we? This went way better than I expected it to. Ooh! Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, that's Michael, uh... Uh, Telling me the piss break was a good idea. Uh, God damn. And top up. Y'all know the vibe. And we're topping up for the last time. Uh, ow! Alright. We out here. <laughs> The final entry in my recording draws near. It sure does. No matter what conclusion awaits us at the end of this branch, I know that I will never forget this journey. I mean, I know I won't. I play this game like three times a year because I'm a freak. All right, here we go. This is one's home base, is it? I'm fine. Go get that guy. Be careful, Zero. Be careful, okay? Stop repeating yourself. Got him. So we're back in Cathedral City again. I like the last guy that just kind of flops on top of the pile. I've always loved that part. So y'all know the drill. Uh, this is pretty much just a bunch of fight arenas back to back um, on one really long bridge. So we just go down and keep balling. Also, they don't always really subtitle the dialogue during this level if it's stuff like that, but like the one that just played, if you were able to hear it. Pretty neat. The counting the bodies thing, that was uh that was pretty good. Goes hard. She can't count on you if she uh if she's literally counting you. Lamau. Got him. And you won't be 
able to beat her if you keep getting distracted. Play. No fuck. All right. Um. Bonk. Bonk. And one more. It's all right. Here we go. Imagine counting true. So you're just helping me close the book. And toner mode. And spin to win, baby. And you can see with fully upgraded final Nell how fast the Titan melted there, like how far we've come since the beginning of the game. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Bro dies very fast. Okay, we don't need these chests, so we can just run past them, and we. There we go. I sure hope you are. And spin to win, baby. Ow. Piss off. Of course, right as my potions wear off, too. Eat my ass. Sag. Also, rip flame centaur of the mouth. Get torn apart, freak. Oh, I shouldn't have used that last uh, defense pot, should I? Oh no. That might be a problem. I don't think it will be. Bruh. I'm trying to kill this wizard dog. Gabriella. Listen, often I will take care of one, but in the meantime, I need you to take out that dragon. Actually, it'll be fine. Because that fight makes you wait for dialogue cues anyway. And bonk, and three more wizards. Two more wizards. Ow, ow, ow. And got him. Now I wait for the game to load. Jesus Christ. It's taking a hot minute. There we go. And rip Gabriel. Get owned. Oh shit, we're playing. I thought there was more cutscene. The hell? Okay, we have to actually be careful now. We can't just sit here and face tank everything. Because we'll just get we'll just get knocked out of uh we'll just we'll just get stunned. Fuck. Which is kind of annoying, but not the end of the world. More like Gonbriel, true. There it is. So this is the dialogue we have to wait for, so now we can just kind of take it slow. And there we go. Now we just stay back. Ow. Now we just have to land one hit once the cord is done talking. So we just stay away. If the flower isn't destroyed... Mankind has no future in this branch. 
Some of us are of the opinion that this brand should be sealed off at once, but I disagree. I think at least one of them might be able to accomplish it. No, I should stop. I'll erase this entry and hand the recording off to the next pass in its current state. End recording. Honk. And there we go. Now Octa summoned his angel. Oh no. Oh no. A pity we couldn't grind the whetstone one last time, my lady. See, even in times of crisis, my man's sword is as sharp as a witch's. He's whipping his cock out. So, why is he estimate 11 hours? Uh. One, because I severely overestimated it, it seems like, with the cutscenes. Um, and two, because uh, the final boss is without a doubt the final boss ever. And there's a chance we could be here for a while if I'm having an off day. Engage accelerator. Here comes a cord. Is one's brother not made of the flower? One's brother is not made of the flower. That's correct. He's basically just a test tube baby. Estimating cutscenes and also uh, the run went way better than I expected when I submitted it. With some exceptions, I, I feel like I executed things. Like, I don't think I had any, like, really bad levels. So, like... And the grind was also, I think, my fastest weapon grind ever. I don't know. There was a lot that went right. <laughs> And I feel bad because <laughs> now we're going to have to figure out what to do until uh, Corvina's awake. Anyway, uh, one's dead. Ugh. DLC. I do have the DLC installed. We could. We could. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Say something about one's brother. Just basically that uh that he's a test tube baby. He's not made of flour. Also, yeah, cords an android. I thought you weren't going to interfere. Yes. I uh I wonder what's I wonder I wonder what's up with that. That's kind of weird. human wasn't it yeah i guess zero oh god the sun's out hated here i'm a little tired good night accord tell the old world said hi so yeah uh for anyone who may have not believed me for whatever reason 
that uh that near replicant actually functions as a not replicant near uh, reincarnation functions as sort of a sequel to the dragon guard series or a prequel rather um i can't talk apparently um for anyone who didn't believe me when i said that earlier about reincarnation though um there's your proof uh accords a friggin android All right. Well, to kill a little bit of time, like I said, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pause right here before the final bur uh, final boss, and uh, take a pee break. Can she not just be repaired? Uh, with what materials? Cause uh, this is a thousand AD. They don't really have the means to uh, put a robot back together. But yeah, pee break. BRP. Ugh. Oh god. A big stretch. Here we go. All right, still more prep work to do. Um, so first thing, I need to hydrate because uh, water is important. All right, we have hydrated. Next thing is, I'm gonna save the game because, and I probably already saved because this game does auto saving after every mission, but just in case. Um, I have found that uh, if you play this game long enough to get to this point in one sitting, um, there is a fair chance, um, like it's a pretty safe bet that your audio is desynced, and that can be resolved by closing the game and reopening it. So uh, the game is going to say no signal for a bit, don't worry about that, that is the, uh, that's a quirk of the way I capture my PlayStation 3. It uh. It'll come back in a moment here. I am reopening the game now. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually take my headset off and turn on my monitor audio. Um, so as I teased earlier, um, <laughs> the audio being desynced is like actually important like that that causes a very significant issue so i need as little latency as physically possible so if you hear game audio bleed through my mic i apologize but uh, i i do need my monitor audio on so uh sorry in advance All right. Hmm. 
And it's this save. If you haven't already guessed what this boss is, by the way, um, I mean, it's probably what you think it is. Uh, when is time? I will call it out. But um, because of the nature of the last note, instead of being final input, it is uh, when the cutscene starts after the fight. So uh, you'll know because I'll pop off when I hit the uh, the last uh, the bu last button, and then uh, just know to be ready on time, and I will uh, I will tell you when to uh, when to hit it. Here we go. This is it. Once the flowers uh, uh. you have to destroy it. me when my uh, body's anxiety response is to cause as much acid reflux as possible. You love to see it. <laughs> Despite how many times I've cleared this, it gets me so fucking nervous every time. There's one more thing I need to tell you. What? You've grown strong. Mikhail. Alright. Now this cutscene is skippable going forward if we have to replay. But, uh, everything after this point is not skippable. So I, I want you to realize there are no checkpoints from this part forward. So you have a full sense of uh, what we're dealing with here. Also, Sag. Me when I'm flower in Tokyo, but like weird 1000 AD Tokyo. Okay, we're on time. So we're good on that front.
so yeah, rhythm game jump scare. So for those of you who don't know or didn't know, now now you do. It sure is the thing ever. All right. Woo! It's not, it's far from over, gamers. It's far from over. This is where it starts.
We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's go! Okay, be ready on time. With you, I mean. It was fun being with you. The killing was hard. It was really hard. But... Stop repeating things. God. Getting to be with you, Zero. Getting to eat next to you. Getting to fly around with you. Getting to have you yell at me. And then getting to be friends again. It was really, really fun. I'm glad. Mikhail. Yeah? It's almost time. And... Okay. Time. That's time right there. Cutscene start. All right. Well, that was Dragon Guard Three. All endings with uh with all cutscenes, except for like a few I skip because nothing actually happens in them aside from them showing you there's an enemy. Sub eight hours actually. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess now I know if I if I do this for another lore marathon, uh, I can I can probably drop the estimate by uh, a couple hours. So this was a learning experience. Woof. Oh. How long is the DLC? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Probably depends on the DLC. Um, I would say we probably have time for one with cutscenes, if y'all want to, like, weigh in on which one the you want to play through. Power has been extinguished from this branch. However, the possibility exists that this seal could unravel at some time or location in the future. Wow. Until then, our recording efforts will continue. Oh, and a personal addendum regarding my observational target, Zero. Perhaps this is beyond my functional requirements as Do you want to do DLC? But I mean, I had planned I to be awake for 11 hours, so... Somewhere. If, Zero uh... If Corvina's not awake yet, I'm cool to do and stuff until she is. Someday. Someday. Rather she that than uh, leave y'all high and dry. From my hat in with the two DLC. That one's definitely the DLC of all time. It has like the most going on, I feel like. Besides maybe zeros. This ending theme so much. Yeah, it's a banger. I don't know, if someone wants to ping her, I guess, and see if she's awake. But I'm 100 percent down to fill time. I doubt she is yet. <laughs> Starting three hours early is a yikes for schedule reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do two's DLC and we'll feel it out. We can also sit through the credits a little bit. But, uh... Oh, I guess I can switch back to headphones audio there we go um two's dlc is really depressing and insane and five's dlc features a giant enemy crab so uh i, I think i'm with you blank um Okay, let me, there's one more cutscene, so let me skip the credits here, and then 
watch that. But uh, This Silence is Mine is the name of that song if you want to listen to the full thing. Oh, that's weird. There's another accord. Wonder what's up with that. Handover of recording duties complete. Excellent work. Well, I wonder how the future is going to unfold from here on. Oh, and uh, and another one? That's weird. What's up with that? Why are there so many accords? And another one. Oh, there's more. And they all have concrete on their heads for some for some reason. Like that seems unlikely that concrete would fall on everyone's head. Like maybe one or two. to see you again someday but until then I'd like to say thank you for playing and uh, that cutscene I mostly wanted to have you all see that one because that many accords in the same place is horrifying um, but also because I mentioned way earlier in the run that there is an interpretation of the game you can have where uh, it's actually a game in-universe covering a real thing that happened, but with humor and other stuff thrown in. Um, and that, that kind of adds to that theory because uh, they directly acknowledge the player and then a TV screen turns off. So uh, yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of neat. Again, I don't really, I don't really buy it, but uh, some people do. Um, but let's uh, let's do choose DLC here because we still have to fill time. Um, I don't know if y'all want to restart the timer or not. I'm up to y'all, but I'm just gonna play through the levels, <laughs> so I'm not really concerned with it. <sighs> without this much creative control um i don't know man yoko taro has a way of uh of getting what he wants so just gonna because it fits better that's fair um here we are and let me Pop up on these. And let me know when uh, when you're ready. And I'll let you know when I'm gonna... I'll count it down. Really hope they give him as much budget as he wants. It seems like it. I feel like this is the year. And I've said this for the past, like, five years. But, like, I really feel it this year that this is the year where... Uh, where we're finally actually going to get new Dragon Guard content. Ready whenever? I bet. Um, so we'll do it on go. So uh, three, two, one, go.
It is the year of the dragon. True. Once upon a time, many moons ago, there was a young man and a beautiful intoner. The intoner was a boundlessly kind and cheerful young girl. And while her partner was not the most intelligent man, he truly did love her. This is the story of a certain couple. A couple that was deeply in love. I am the happiest girl alive. For now. You know why? Because I am with the greatest man in the whole wide world. All right. So as you can see, you play as the intoners in uh, in these. And uh, also, the game never explicitly, I guess, aside from like the opening cutscene, talks about it. But uh, prior, like just prior, essentially, to the events of uh, Dragon Guard 3, the main game, uh, there was a evil dictator, pee pee poo poo, generic, uh, generic, uh, fucking bad people. Bad people were running the world, um, bad leaders and this stuff. Um, and ow. Ow. I can't think. I'm getting hit by things. Uh, I'm also still kind of recovering uh, physically and mentally from uh, from the final song, I can't lie. Um, but no, uh, a bunch of like evil kings and stuff, and uh, the intoners went around uh, saving the world from them. That is... Uh, also, since I've already beat these, there's these golden... I can't seem to hit him, but uh, there's these golden soldiers that'll show up, and you can hit them and get a lot of gold. Um, I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need the gold, but uh, that's the thing. Uh, but no, so these cover around that time period kind of what was going on. There we go. Um, we got something anyway. Might as well. This is all to kill time anyway. Um, so right now we are working on that. We are we are clearing out uh, the gunch. We are we are clearing out the evil people. Uh, we're taking out their monsters and saving the world. And also other stuff is happening. It usually doesn't end well. Uh, three is off somewhere doing human experimentation as as we covered. Um, Four is committing genocide against the elves for no reason, and that is not an exaggeration. In fact, actually, maybe we ought to play that one just so I can qualify that statement and prove to y'all that I'm not talking out of my ass. Um, five is uh, hunting down a giant crab. And uh, what, was, what was one doing? Oh yeah, one was uh, training her brother to kill Zero. And Zero is chilling with Michael. No way, let's keep going. But I can't possibly permit my lover to overexert herself. But the thing about the DLC too that you may have noticed already. Um we don't have multiple weapons, you're stuck with the intoner's specific weapon. So uh we can't really do the uh The weapon swap. So we're just kind of, just kind of, just kind of slapping, slapping everyone. In toner mode, has mostly the same combos though. So the big difference is just you only get the one weapon. And got him. Hmm. 
Titans and a gold boy. All right, pop, 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 pop. One's really gonna appreciate this, huh? I'm sure. You know, you certainly do seem fine. And in toner mode, yippee. Yeah, I guess. I just want to see her smile, you know? Whenever she smiles, it is Ow. so cute. Bruh. Got him. All right, y'all know the drill. Just, just stun lock him. Uh, two's sword basically plays like, uh, like one's, or not one, zero's sword, like the default sword. So there's, uh, there's nothing really special here. I, mean, I, I, I describe things that are happening in the run, but it's actually just the same gameplay. But I can do less. Um. So I guess we can kind of talk about the story once things start happening, but the long and short of it is two and Scent are madly in love. That's their dynamic. The the other three, five, four, three, they uh they're disciples, they all have like their kinks or whatever, and they're like they're like vibing, they're balling. Um one's a masochist, one's a sadist, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, as you do. And uh Uh lost my train of thought. But yeah, uh two and two and scent. They they are genuinely just like they pair well together. They they like each other genuinely. Um it's not just about lust. And that ends up being a huge problem for scent specifically, which is why, and I sort of touched on it a little bit earlier in the uh, in the main game run, but I wish they would have maybe expanded on that a little bit more in, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, desync. Let me check it out real quick, see if I see anything. Um, I'm not dropping frames or anything. The, uh... Okay, well, um... Let me know if you need me to do anything. If I need to, like, fix anything in OBS. And for now, I'll just keep balling. <laughs> mm. How was I saying? No, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because in the main game, they don't really... They don't really expand on scent much. Like, they establish that he and two have a different relationship, and then they barely touch upon it again, except for the one time that he betrays everyone, and then the other time where he chooses not to betray everyone. But he really is, like, a character with... I would argue a lot more depth... Uh, a lot more depth than the other disciples. I'm I'm losing my ability to form words. It is very early in the morning. Three hour nap. So uh, the quality of commentary is about to go way down. But we'll get there. We'll 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 get through it. We'll we'll get through it, gamers. I have faith. I know. I know that happiness doesn't last forever. But it comes into play a lot more That's in the DLC, why. which I do like. So I think this one's definitely worthwhile for playing. Right um, all my heart. Because you see, like, and they were just talking about in the dialogue, too, in that camp section. Uh, hey, things are going really well right now. Uh, that might not be a good thing, because, like, that usually means that things are going to go wrong. Because nothing ever goes well in this universe. Um... 
a little bit of self-awareness for them that they are in the Dragon Guard universe. And as they said, nothing ever goes well in the Dragon Guard universe. It uh Well, I mean, I mean, you know, pretty much exactly what I said. And then Ow. We get a little bit of like a movement puzzle situation here. Except you can just skip it if you have Intoner mode built up. You just get hit once and then kablam. This is a prequel to the prequel? Yeah, exactly. This is still like the pee pee poo poo universe. The regular one, kind of, not really. Another thing you get from these DLCs is kind of interesting, and I don't have all the details on it, but it's kind of, uh, it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. It, uh, they all really have a lot of respect for one. And there's not really a strong reason they ever provide for that, but it's kind of interesting. It makes you wonder if she's up to something, and I think it is left open-ended on purpose. But it's neat. It's, it's an interesting thing that, uh, yeah. Alright, I'll have stream itself. Let's go to the restart before the next run starts. Oh, uh, is it just like a stream's been running for a long time thing? It's all good anyway. It only really would have mattered for the, for the rhythm game for the most part. Hopefully it's not been too bad of an experience. At least the one's not trying to kill them. True. I should say, though, and this is more of an Udahime 5 thing, the manga I mentioned earlier going over what happens right after uh, they spawn from, from Zero's body. But each one of the Intoner sisters is also an aspect of Zero's personality. Which is important to keep in mind because, like, you know, Zero seems like a Zero. But sort of maybe think of it like a, um, like a Persona situation, specifically Persona 4, where the Personas are like a reflection of their true self. Where they may not necessarily always show that part of them, but it's still there. That's that sort of situation. Um, that that's sort of what the intoners are. So, it might be that one is like the most intelligent, so the rest of them are like, oh yeah, leave it to the intelligent part of our brain, sort of situation. There, there's a lot of ways to interpret it. I wouldn't really say there's a correct or incorrect way, and the game doesn't really seem interested in expanding on it too much. Just, just, just a neat thing that's going on in these DLCs is all. All right, and the bomb blow up, and we keep wailing on our boy here. And the bomb blow up. I guess I didn't even realize there was a bomb there, but it blow up. And now we move. Continuously running for like 42 hours. Christ. I do not envy the people who do the tech for this marathon. Or like the planning or anything, really. Like, I'm glad y'all do. I love this marathon. It's very cool. Uh, conceptually and also for, for like something to put on on my other monitor. It's great. But... Like, y'all... Y'all really do have to, like, sit here and have someone monitoring the stream for multiple weeks, non-stop, and planning a schedule with that many long runs for that long. Like, y'all crazy. Round of applause for the, uh, the RR Lat staff. Also, they have an orphanage, um, together, where they take care of, of orphans. And, uh, given that, uh, g given that being a child in the Draconeer universe is, uh, pretty consistently not a good idea, I think we know where this is going, huh?
All right, verse three. Top up our stuff real quick. For me, it's like 2 p.m. Ah, uh, I see. That explains how this is possible, actually. So, uh, while we were out cleaning up some of the monsters, uh, turns out something, something bad happened in Cathedral City, where the orphanage is, in, in the close vicinity to the orphanage. Hmm. Should be fine, right? Right? Surely, surely nothing bad could ever happen. Definitely not, especially not on this day of April 25th, 999 AD. So things that require protection. But there's a limit to how much can actually be protected. Such a simple concept. Hmm. But back then, I was incapable of understanding. Well, you're about to not be incapable of understanding. You're about to understand real good. Like, like real good. Hmm, Scent knows something. Scent knows something. I wonder what's up with that. So, since we only have the sword, we can't really do the, uh... We can't really whip out the spear and just break through their guard. So what we do is, I mean, if we have intoner mode, obviously we can just kind of mess them up. And then we're balling, but like, another way to handle the skelly boys is to hit them once so they guard and then get behind them. And that way you can hit them from around their guard. And there we go. Um, huh? The camera? Uh, the gloop go off? I yoink it, then the splurt go off? I do not know what just happened there. I don't know what it was trying to look at, but it was it was it was doing something. Bruh, I said I said get behind it and hit it. There we go. You know, you'd think if we, like, run Cathedral City, um, which we do, that's, like, our nation's capital, essentially, you'd, uh, you'd think we'd have a way to open those doors without killing the things in front of them. But, uh, yeah, we'll just run past all these haunts, boys, the Hort. And, uh, I guess I already got that chest last time I did this. A lot of Zambles. Like, a lot of Zambles. Something real not good is going on. You know, we run the place. Oh, this isn't an attack. This is just a normal thing that happened near the orphanage. A, 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 a thing that is perfectly fine and definitely not sense fault at all. Um, spoiler alert, it's 100% sense fault. Monster now? Because of... so... It's too early to say. The 
All right. But anyway, this section is kind of boring. There's a lot of there's a lot of zombified soldiers. If you're wondering if these are the same uh, enemy type as the ones we fought as the dragon before uh, Freeze fight, the human experiments, uh, yes. Is there any significance to that? No, not really. They just didn't want to make a new enemy type, and fair enough. Fair enough. I uh, I can't really can't really can't really blame them for that. Also, level reuse. You may have noticed none of the levels are new either. That's because because they're not. They uh. They are they are reused from the main game. Yes, so Scent used the song on the soldiers in the hopes that they'd be stronger and able to protect the orphanage. And... <laughs> As it turns out, not the greatest idea. I thought I had more in toner than that. That's fine. Yeah. Again, with what I've been echoing the entire time, whenever these like smaller enemies show up, I honestly hate this type of arena worse because they spread out. I'd rather just one big easy target to, to hit and fight instead of whatever this is. Well, boring. That's what it is. Like, I do not need shit that's going to put me to sleep right now. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Alright, good luck with the food. Enjoy. Oh my god. Oh god. Hmm. Mission complete. Uh. And chapter four. Oh, I need to refill my stuff first. Because I used a lot of stuff. Mm -mm. Can my body not be self-destructing right now? That'd be that'd be cool, thanks. I need to not have acid reflux immediately. So I can continue attempting to commentate the things that are happening. Things that are precious, and things that are not. Things that mustn't break, and things that may. Tell me. Who has the right to decide such things? Not you. <clears throat> and uh, down we go. I don't, uh... <laughs> I don't know why they had the orphanage in uh, the catacombs. But I guess, I guess, where else would you put it, right? Um, I don't know if I'd want orphans near where their parents may be buried. I, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't really. I don't really know how good of an idea that is. I'm I'm not I'm not a psychologist, to be sure, but just, just generally speaking, I feel like uh feel like uh was brought them here when everyone started going crazy. Um oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That actually is the plot, I forgot. I was too busy killing things to remember to actually read the the, the dialogue that was happening on screen. You're right, you're right. Thank you for the clarification. 
I still don't know if I take them to the catacombs, though. That's just going to freak them out. That's like people who run uh, funeral homes with morgues and uh, decide to have kids and live there with the kids. Like, that's that's going to mess people up. Like, like, like bad. Rescue of the children. I've played enough Draconair to know where this is going. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is going... Well, probably not exactly where you think it's going, but the vibes are exactly what you think they are. Where are they? Where are the children? The cum monster! There they are. There's the kids. They turned into the gloop goblin. And now we gotta kill it. <laughs> Can you like stop running away, please? Ow. But yeah, this is, uh, I will give the DLC credit. Uh, every every DLC has a brand new boss fight that they made specifically for the DLC. They're all unique. They're, none of the bosses are reused, except for arguably the giant crab from uh, from Five's campaign is kind of reused from her own fight uh, in the main story, but it's different enough that I'm willing to allow it. But the rest of them are all unique. Okay, and now at this point in the fight, it, they go invisible and you have to follow the, uh, the gloop stains on the ground. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, they do retain their childlike minds. Which, uh, you know, definitely doesn't make this even more messed up and depressing. It's fine. Uh, was it not right here? Aw, oh, shit. Come vision. There it is. God. That being said, while I, while I do acknowledge the effort they put into making this boss, it's kind of mid. I don't actually enjoy fighting it. Because all it does is run away and go invisible and eat hot chip and lie. And there it is. We defeated the cum monster. Oh, also time. <laughs> I, I kind of forgot about that aspect of the speedrunning marathon. The speedrun part. So yeah, between uh, the start of the main story and here, this all happened, which uh, caused two to lose her mind, which is why every time you see her after that point, there's uh, something or other wrong with her. And also, this is why throughout the story, Scent continues to call himself an idiot. Uh, because he did cause that to happen. 
that was almost entirely his fault. He couldn't have known that was going to happen, but uh, he did cause it. So, uh, sucks to be him, I guess. We still have, if I'm doing my math right, uh, two hours to fill. So... I will, I will let someone with the green sword tell me what to do. Uh, just do every DLC. We can do another one. What are we thinking? Are we thinking four? Five? Any, any opinions? Green sword is making food. Yo, the mods have left the chat. It's time to do crimes. We're talking about four. Yeah. I want to see giant enemy crab. Fair. Hmm. Kind of split down the middle with five and four. I mean, we have time for both, probably. Unless someone tells me to stop doing things and go offline. Um, We'll do four, because it has more crazy stuff going on. Although it starts kind of tame. But, uh... By the end, you you kind of, you kind of, you kind of... Well, well, you'll see. You'll see. I've, I've kind of already, I've kind of already said it. She's, she's a little bit of a freak. But... Oh, also, I can point out, because it's here. Um... So, all of our... All of her, like, little lore things you get when you level up the DLC characters are just her shit-talking the other intoners behind their backs. Give you a sense of their uh, personality. Once upon a time, many moons ago, Oh, also, I love this illustration. Bros using Decadus as a table. Mad respect. Also, the main story doesn't really give you much of it, but here you get to see uh, how how well Four and Decadus actually play off each other. Because the game would kind of have you believe, uh, at least the main story, that uh, they're not uh, they're not super great for each other. But no, they are. They're actually. Uh, Four is really good at uh, at playing into Decadus's masochism gunch. We get enemies with our twin tails, uh, unfortunately, no. But that would be funny. She just has uh, she just has the gauntlets. But it was. 
you're the fakest of all the intoners. You're fake as fuck. And your Jordans are fake as fuck. into this room where we will be locked in and forced to fight. The same thing that happens for the entire game. Also, this is Gabriella. So remember Gabriel from the main story? This is what Gabriel was like before, uh, before one did whatever and created Gabriel. Evil magic, pee pee poo poo. She's very sassy. I love her. Gabriella, can you like not knock them away so I can I can like deal damage to them? Gabriella is the best part of the DLC. Is true. You don't see her in uh, in 2's DLC at all, because it happens after Gabriella is already Gabriel, but all the other ones have a have a Gabriella cameo, and they're always incredible. Thank you, Decadus. Bro really liked the whip idea. I forget what's next. Most of this is just like, oh, look at, uh, look at, look at four. She, she's fake. She's kind of an asshole. Hmm. It's really not until we get to, uh, to verse four that it all sort of, uh, comes together in the worst way possible. And I really cannot stress enough, like, the worst way possible. Like, uh, actually war crimes. Like, literal war crimes. Maybe not in this universe, but in, in current day in our timeline, uh, that, the war crimes. But not me. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm only helping with nothing else. Well, at least you're... Pete's empty word. So, where to... We're going to the land of forests. Though I won't be up. Wait, was that sarcasm? Really? Oh. <laughs> I love how Gabrielle also just calls out four on her bullshit. It's pretty incredible. Did I ever point out the face on these trees, by the way? The trees have faces. That, that's that's the entire statement. There's, there's nothing special. But the trees have faces. We. And here we go. And Gabriella's help us out again. Monsters as well, so we best be careful. Never. 
Just, uh, just, just wipe everyone out. As you do. Just, uh, just, just do it. Just, just deal damage. There's, uh... There is nothing different. Um, oh! Oh, another thing that I would point out. You may have noticed the dragons on screen. Gabriella and, um... The game isn't lagging. In fact, you may have noticed that this entire time. Um, I didn't draw attention to it. I actually meant to. You'll notice that the frames aren't dropping. Another fun thing about the DLC is that with some rare exceptions, the performance is actually significantly better than the rest of the game. Which leads me to believe they did eventually learn how to fix it and they just never bothered to patch the rest of the game to, uh, to make it playable. So, uh, that's fun. I don't know what they changed about it exactly, but I mean, you can just, I mean, you can visually see that the game is not lagging. Not nearly as much. All right, boom, bang. It's almost disappointing in a way, though, because it really does highlight that uh, the game itself at its core is actually kind of incredible. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. But the main game is what it is. I haven't seen that much fire from Gabriella. That's true. But like even when like, like you can see like some some animations are causing it a little bit, like you can see it. But the degree to which it like I don't know. I mean I mean I mean it after watching eight hours of the main game. It should be pretty obvious what I'm getting at, because there were other... Oh, there was a lag spike. But, like, the doors would also cause lag. And, like, that's just not happening. Like, that animation was actually smooth. Also, why is everyone zombified? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but uh, the game is not going to tell us. Thank you, Decadus. Thank you, Decadus. Thank you, thank you. Um, you are in a tree. Nice. I guess I can uh, teleport. That'd probably be a little bit better. This is technically still a speedrun. Lest I forget that I'm not just playing the DLC for funsies. I guess I kind of am. We have to waste time until the next run, anyway. Oh, 
And you. Get out of the sky. Perish. There we go. Buck him up. And bonk. And I think that's level. Mercifully, four's levels are kind of longer, which means it's going to kill more time. And then fives is, uh... Well, fives is something. It exists. I think it's my least favorite DLC, but the crab's kind of cool and funny. What are the longest to shortest DLCs? I don't necessarily know off the top of my head. I know that Zeros is definitely the longest because it's also the most lore important. Because it goes over how she actually met Michael originally. And then, uh... Oh god. Threes is probably the next longest. Not necessarily because there's a lot going on. In theory, the, uh... The, uh... God. My brain is not here anymore. Um... It's a bunch of combat arenas. The levels themselves should be pretty short. The problem is the enemies they throw at you in those uh, combat arenas are really obnoxious and hard to kill. So that one takes a while. Um, then probably twos after that, or not twos, fours. Um, and then from there, I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. The rest are probably about the same length. You may remember if you were here that long ago, I did talk about how uh, how one of the DLC levels made me made me think that at some point you were going to be allowed to fly the dragon. Uh, this is one of the ones that really makes me think that because the whole gunch here is you're running around looking for these chests to get uh, treasure. And you can do them in any order. And it's really long and annoying. And it would have made sense for you to be able to do the dragon here. And you cannot. You cannot call the dragon. Game says no. Alright, we swing on around over here. I got noodles. Hell yeah. Hope you enjoyed the noodles. God, I wish that was me. Ow. 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 You break the break the box. You freak. Or just casually wave dashing is funny. Yeah. Four is actually a professional Smash Bros. melee player. I forgot to mention that part of the lore. Screw the desert and all of its forms. I don't like this place. Real. <sighs> mm. 
Oh dear lord. I am gonna pass the hell out. Immediately after Corvina shows up, like, it is going to be instant. I am going to hit my bed, and that is going to be it. Alright, break that gunch open. And you can see why fours is definitely up there in terms of length. It has nothing to do with the rest of the levels. The rest of the levels are pretty, pretty nothing. But uh, this one level is uh, a lot. If uh, if uh, you couldn't if you couldn't tell already, it's um, it's the level of all time. Don't call unless you're dying, she says. Real. Shit, if I was a dragon and I had to babysit four, I'd, uh... I'd definitely, def definitely do the same thing, to be honest. Just find a place to chill, maybe play Honkai Star Rail on my phone. Y'all know how it'd be. It's rough out here for a gacha gameplay. Gotta find time where you can. Ow. Fuck off. Perish. Sure, buddy. Yes. Still, an intoner should try to maintain a certain level of fashionable decorum. Oh, here we go. You're just waiting for him to tell you to keep one or two for yourself, so it seems like it wasn't your idea in the first place, right? Girl, you are so I mean, Gabriella just calls it, tells it like it is. She, uh, I, I respect her a lot. Like a lot, a lot. What a what a gamer. Gabriella is easily the best part of the DLC. I uh I cannot stress that enough. Okay, none of those were health. I hate it here. I only have my max health pot left, which is uh upsetting. Because I don't want to die and have to restart. This level does not have checkpoints. Just awake, she liked one of my tweets. Oh. Oh, no. How would four play in, in Tekken? Um. I don't know. That's, uh. That's actually an excellent question. And it's one I'm not qualified to answer. I've never played a Tekken game in my life, for better or for worse. Aren't you a Tekken player? How would she play in Tekken? Are there any characters similar to 4? And uh, more importantly, why aren't there any near or Drakengard characters in Tekken? And also more importantly, when is the Waffle House map releasing? Cuz uh, I saw I saw the I saw the uh, the director guy tweet about that. And I'm excited. I wanna, I wanna, I, I want a Waffle House fighting game stage so bad. Y'all have no idea. I love Waffle House. Y'all have no idea how much I love Waffle House, actually. Also, the physics on her jacket are interesting. That's another thing about four and her character model that you notice when you're playing as her in the DLC. With five DLC, I feel like she'd eat a Waffle House. Oh yeah, five is definitely very Waffle House coded. You're so right. All right, so we get our 10th jewel here. 
You want to fill more time after this DLC? You got like an hour to an hour 30. Alright, cool, cool. We can do five after. We can see the uh, giant enemy crab. Uh, um. Um. What? Was that? Okay, so they bring back the sun mechanic because of course they do. Drakengard 3's dedication to having the worst gameplay mechanics of all time um, is unwavering, and to some degree I respect it. But uh, again, I would also point out if you noticed during the desert that there was no lag. The, uh, like, it only, like, kind of flared up when the sun was on screen for a little bit. Like, like it's just, it's so much better. You don't look like you're dying. Yeah. That's true, that's true. A lot of fun dialogue in the DLCs, I will say. Since there's not really high stakes, it's just like little stories to flesh out the different the uh, the different characters you saw in the game. Uh, you do end up with uh, a tone that's a lot more similar to the main story early game. Which is kind of great, actually. Because that goes away pretty quickly once the stakes start uh, ramping up. Ow. Alright, one more wizard and that's going to be the stage. I think easily the longest stage in Drakengard 3 would have to be this one. For the record. Because you're pretty much just running around the desert doing nothing. Minus 2 losing her mind and all the war crimes. Yeah, 2's is the exception. 2's is incredibly depressing. Rest of them, pretty chill. Pretty good time. God damn. And now, it's time for fantasy racism. Yippee! I think if I counted correctly, anyway. God. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, dies. Uh, dies. But yeah, I think if we do this and then we do fives, that should fill enough time that, like, we're good. I won't feel as bad just going to bed. What's up, Decadus? Today was a fun. Indeed. I'm sure. You. Of course. I hope you're right. Now, if it please. It's not like I'm. It's just. You know. I mean, I at once smart, but even if one. It doesn't mean. That's just. Anyway. <sighs> What next? You know how the remaining- I thought we don't- We dispatched them. They refused- uh, Do we really need to- They cannot be- But who is to say when they- We must completely- Such a- Sorry? Uh, nothing, my lady. 
All right, here we go. Here we go. So if you didn't catch that, the premise here is they took out a bunch of pirates, but uh, some of them fled, some of them managed to escape, and Decadus has the correct take of, hey, they're running away, maybe we don't need to kill them, they're not a threat to us or anyone. And 4 is like, no, we have to kill every elf ever. Pay close attention to the in-level dialogue here, because, uh, boy howdy, it, it exists. Kill the evil air pirates. Ow. But yeah, so the the gimmick here is a bunch of pirate ships. We need to shoot them down. That's pretty much it. They're not really much of a threat. But we gotta kill him anyway. Gimmick here's war crimes. Yep. And we have to do it while they beg us to stop. It's, uh... This is unironically kind of a difficult level to play if you have any level of empathy. Sure. Yeah, my favorite battle cry is, help us, please, please don't kill us. We're not a threat, please. That's my favorite battle cry. Thank you, Four, for your uh, wisdom. And we keep going because uh, that is what we have to do. Also, you know it's bad when the dragon is telling you you're being an asshole because the dragons hate everything that aren't dragons. Or so they claim. Pretty much every dragon in the series actually cares a lot about people, as as it turns out. Except for debatably Legna. Depending on which ending of that game you get. Hi, Ezra. Good morning. Yo, good morning, gamer. Ah. Ow. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I blow him up. This level also hurts my hands. Because the best way to do it is just to spam attacks. Which, uh, not ideal. I'm gonna go ahead and pop those to make this a little bit faster. Are there any elves left in the universe after this? Yes. But this, um, essentially turns them into an endangered, soon to be extinct species. There's like a few left. 
which is why Ariosh in uh, Drakengard 1 loses her womb as a uh, pact price and why uh, she she's really distraught about that because uh, the elves kind of need to reproduce and uh, she can't anymore and that's a problem. <laughs> Uh, and that is a direct result of what uh, 4 does in, in her DLC chapter. So, uh, you know, have fun with that thought. And then there's the last one. There we go. And now we have the boss. Which again, another unique boss fight. Vaguely reminiscent of some of the airship fights in uh, Drakengard 1, and I guess 2. Although, does that really count as a Drakengard game? Drakengard 2 is uh, definitely the game ever. Also, drawing attention to we're fighting elves, so it can't be manslaughter. A thing that, uh, that 4 said without any hint of remorse. Um, I don't think that tracks for or you uh you understand why that's incorrect right like you like you do like you do girl and kablamo and with that, we have doomed elves to extinction through the butterfly effect. And also directly on account of we just killed a bunch of them. Oh boy. The screams of burning victims rang out from the downed vessels. The cries for help echoed far and wide. But... None of it bothered the intoner in the least. After all, they weren't civilians. Also, shoutouts to Decadus chilling on uh, Gabriella's tail. After all, they were the bad guys. The intoner was filled with sublime exhilaration. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. When I said that she was a genocidal freak, um, now, now you realize that was, that was not hyperbole. <laughs> that, that is actually just one of her character traits. Also, you may be wondering, hmm. Where did, uh, where did 4 get her airship from in the main game? Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll leave you to put the puzzle pieces together on that one. Um, so we'll do fives for something a little bit more lighthearted, and then I will probably hop off here, and that will be, it'll be time for Dragon Guard 1. Once upon a time, many moons ago. Poor Dito. There was a beautiful Maybe a freak, but uh but poor Dito. 
the intoner was driven by a vast array of lusts. A lust for honor, for wealth, for sex, for food. And the young man who accompanied her was really, really sick of it. It was good, Dito. Did you bring everything? Yeah, it was pretty kind of a lot. Oh, Dito. A woman simply must have her clothes and her sweets. Yeesh, you're sure the... What was that? Nothing. You really want me... If you could. Typical. Oh, actually, before that, I should, uh... I should show y'all what's in these chests, just because it's fun. <laughs> now then, which of my toys... Okay, that's the important one, today? actually. Comes the treasured utility belt of pleasure toys. Th they are referring to exactly what you think it is. What you do, just what I'd expect from the. I mean, look at that one. She just has to try, and I'm just another one for the. D what? Make sure you eat foods. That yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. Now we can advance. Well, I. It looks like we're all. We're gonna head. Can't you talk like an anyway? Oh yes. Um, an evil. No, no, no. I give up. The legendary meat. Of legendary. Yes, it's the food I design. We're going off in search of food. Thank you, Dita. <laughs> Bat. Mm, gotta stay awake. Gotta gotta get to the enemy crab. Gotta get that legendary Schmied of legend. Dito has the best reactions. There's about everything Five says. Dito has the best reactions in general. I love that man. I hate that man, but I love that man. And that can describe uh, pretty much every character in Dragon Guard. I feel like. Let's do it for the enemy crab, Ezra. Yeah, I'll try my best. Okay. I mean, y'all know the drill. We just we just kill shit. She's uh she's a spear user, which um. I mean, the spear is. To me, the, the easiest uh, weapon type to use, so... This one's actually pretty pretty easy to play. It It's gonna look pretty similar to a lot of what we were doing in the main game. There we go. Oh, shit. from his homeland that's been passed down for generations. You told all that to an outsider? Well, not without a bit of... Oh, Jesus. I mean, here, one is trying to build some shiny new world, you and you're just... Friggin' open the door to a whole firing squad of archers here. My god. Forgot about just that. The that one's ideal world <laughs> They're just sitting there ready for you. Of course it is. Alright, I don't remember what we have to do here now. I think we just have to find everyone else. There we go. Not even the DLC's improved frame rate could survive this. It actually did surprisingly well. Again, I never really paid that much attention to it, but now that I'm like actively talking about it, like it is noticeably better. Even at its worst moments. 
like to a point where playing the main game in this back to back is kind of jarring. I am not used to this game playing like a video game. We just keep running. Damn, boy, she's thick. She's thick. Like, for all her flaws. Five do be hot. So does this legendary meat of legend come from an ogre or what? Oh, no, 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 Dino. I've already had my fill of ogre meat, thank you. Uh, so, wait a minute. Are you telling me you've actually eaten ogre meat? Mm -hmm. Two made ogre meatballs once. They were just to die for. Put some of my homemade special sauce on top. Mm. Anyway, I Ow. ate ten in one sitting, which is why I'm so sick of ogre now. Huh. I didn't know two cooked. Is she any good? Oh, yes. In fact, she's the finest chef amongst all my sisters. Her food is so novel and bold, so toothsome and unctuous. Toothsome and unctuous? Sounds a lot like you, actually. Well, I don't see any other meat here, and certainly not the legendary meat I tortured that villager over. Do you think he could have meant these ogres? That would be such a disappointment. I could just cry. I bet that villager feels like crying right about now. Or he lied to get you to leave. Don't play Drakengard 1 or 2 if we want to get into the whole near universe. Play Drakengard 1. Uh, Drakengard 2 is optional. It is a perfectly serviceable PS2 action RPG. But where 1 and 3 tell unique stories, uh, 2 is just like a pretty standard fantasy game. Um, and the reason for that, if you're curious, is because Yoko Taro, who is responsible for writing and directing every other Drakenair game, did not, well, he was not involved at all in the writing process for Drakengard 2. I think he did some development work, his name appears in the credits, but, uh, he had next to no say over the story. So they uh, they made it more uh, marketable, TM. And by marketable, I mean standard. And it's also generally considered non-canon. So, you know. Again, it's, it's optional. It's not a terrible game. But you definitely don't have to play it. Bad scene back in the land of sands, huh, Five? I know, right? I also wouldn't recommend playing Drakengard 1 unless you're a very specific kind of person, but that also has not stopped me from uh, recommending that game to everyone ever. Because even though it's a terrible game, it's also a banger game, and I really have no way to describe that. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it and play Drakengard 1. We should have better luck with our little mushroom hunt here. I hear this mountain has some... Or I suppose you can watch, uh, you can watch Corvina play it next in the marathon and uh, make your decision that way. What do you mean specific person? You have to be able to tolerate a large amount of uh, tedium and also bad game design. Like actually some of the worst game design ever conceived. Five, what are you talking about? I can barely stand to look at you. Just having a hole to plug isn't enough for a woman, you know. First, you need to take a nice walk. On bath and clean every bit of your body. Then get some powder and lipstick on your face. Find a dress that reveals just enough. 
and your inner woman will be set ablaze with passion. Trust me. Finally, grab a man and invest some quality time in enjoying the pleasures of the night. Story and character development is great, but game design is down a shit river. Um, so the story and character development is great if you like games with barely any story and barely any character development. <laughs> I guess I should qualify that statement because Dragon Guard 1's story is fantastic, but you would not know it by playing the game. And you especially would not know it uh, by, uh, by playing the English translation. Because not only did a lot get lost between the uh, original Japanese and the English uh, localization, the game also tells itself mostly through supplementary material. So there's a lot of required reading to really fully understand what's going on in that game. It also, bizarrely enough, uh, makes a lot more sense if you play and understand what happened in Drakengard 3 before playing Drakengard 1. Because Drakengard 3 establishes the whole concept of branches and recorders and timelines and etc. And Drakengard 1 makes so much more sense with that in mind. And once again, we found no food. Through the scorching desert and the frigid mountains. Watch a YouTube the video that goes over all the Dragon Guard One story. Yeah. Oh no, there's plenty of uh, plenty of videos on YouTube going over the uh, the the plot and extended lore of Dragon Guard One. And I would definitely recommend, whether you play the game or not, to look at those. Because there's a lot of supplementary material that kind of expands or even changes the context of some of the... Some of the, uh... Some of the plot elements of that game. Clemps did a very good video about the series. Yeah, I would say of all the Drakengard 1 analyses I've watched, uh, Clemps is definitely the best one. Very well-researched series. 3, then 1, again, then go through 1 YouTube explanation videos, then Nears. Yeah, I would say you can realistically play them in any order, and you'll still get something out of it. But, yeah. I would say timeline order is not uh, one of the better ways to go through it, actually. It's one, it's one of the better. Because Drakengard 3 happens, then Drakengard 1 happens, then Near Replicant happens, then Near Automata happens. And Near Reincarnation is, uh, well, I don't know. It's a mobile game. So don't, uh, I would say just don't bother. Um, that one, definitely just look up YouTube videos. And you can also throw Drakengard 2 in there somewhere if you're uh, having insomnia. Because it will uh, it will put you right to sleep. They're not so connected that you can't just play any one game on its own. Yeah, any order of playing them is going to uh, to give you a, a good experience. 
because no matter which order you play them in, you will have moments in the other games where you'll be like, oh, I recognize this from the other Draconeer game I played. Like, all of them have stuff like that. Even two to some degree. Um, which is pretty cool. But it's not like traditional sequels in the sense that, like, what happened in one game directly informs your ability to follow what's happening in another game. They're all, uh, they're all their own isolated games. All right, take out those cannons and keep moving. I would say Dragon Guard 2 is the most direct sequel. That is true. Dragon Guard 2 does rely on a lot of knowledge from Dragon Guard 1 ending A. But you can definitely still experience it and not necessarily have the full context. Thank you, Five. Really, really the the icon of feminism. I forgot about this part. This part is kind of fucked up. It makes me not like Five very much. Or like, at all, really. She's hot, but like I want nothing to do with her. Don't they have any weaknesses? We can't let them run over us anymore. We'll do our best, sir. Ooh, fuck. Eepy sleepy. Right, damn, not a Kegas. Looks like we need to even the odds. Hey, dragon. My name is not Dragon. Don't care, plus boobs bounce when I walk. And I should really draw five wearing it. Oh my god, please do, actually. I want to see that. That really is her entire personality, though, huh? a dragon. I thought I summoned a dragon. What the hell? Those boobs are fake. Trust me, I'm an expert. Um I have never heard that one. So in case the audio is too quiet for y'all to hear. Um when the soldiers came out the boat, one of them was like, uh Okay, good, y'all could hear it. Okay, cool. Y'all could hear it. I don't, I don't need to repeat it then. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Alright, we're supposed to go over here, actually. Cool. So where am I going? Not too much farther. We'll stop at the coastline just before the border. My treasure must be within those waters. You gotta be honest here. I wouldn't get your hopes up. He is an expert, apparently. True.
I can't imagine being in a VA recording booth and having to say stuff like that. True. Also, since uh, someone pointed it out, the uh, journal entries, I will pull one of those up. It'll waste a bit more time before, uh, before, uh, before we, uh, put them away early. That boy is in the Utonis. Five. I've never read this one, actually. So, a couple of things. The first thing, yeah, it looks like she actually did order books to learn more about, uh, about how to rule a country, so she actually does kind of care. But also, I've been talking about how the timeline was the same up until 300 AD. Um, and this specifically does mention the Roman Empire. So, uh, it's kind of neat that they actually directly reference the fact that other aspects of history happened in this universe. So, uh, cool stuff. Also want to point out in this one that uh, they installed a bunch of deadly traps and said if, uh, if she wants them demonstrated, she just needs to provide a volunteer to uh, be killed by the traps. God, I love this video game. Um, the Roman Empire was fire's Roman Empire. I mean, yeah. I suppose so. All right, here we go. Get ready for giant enemy crab. Is this the coastline you were talking about? Yes, it So is. in the interest of That's spending more one. time doing inane bullshit, treasure here. Hey, everyone. I'm also gonna it's just show off that like, time. for no reason, like no reason at all, you're free to just kind of walk around this entire area. There's nothing here. But, uh, it's all, like, accessible. It has collision. This is the only time you're on foot in this map. It's very much intended to uh, play as a dragon. Which we will be doing here momentarily, but they still let you walk around, and I don't know why. So, uh, that's a thing. Just a neat little, neat little... Cool thing to point out, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's not that cool. The entire area kind of feels unfinished. It's one of those maps that kind of, like, when you're on foot, when you're this small, it sort of feels like you're out of bounds, like you're somewhere where you shouldn't be. But it's kind of neat. Also, the stairs, like, don't work. In case you didn't notice, like, those do, because you're intended to climb them. But, like, you stutter step on on the ones that you're not supposed to be able to climb. It's, uh, it's neat. It's neat. It serves no purpose. But it's cool. It's a cool thing. Cool little thing. And here we go. Hi, Gabriella. Well, at least we made it to the sea. Now disrobe, Dito. Expose your live and naked form to the majestic ocean waves. Ah, Let's shit. What the boat doing? So that we might share our love while the salty waves crash. 
wash over our tight, writhing bodies. Please kill me. Hey, you guys mind sharing your love someplace where I don't have to watch? You can just fly away. Come. Uh, no, no, no. Wait a sec, man. Uh, the, that ship, it's being really weird, right? We should probably go check it out. Hey, you're the boss, boss. Just hurry up and get on. Yeah, definitely the dialogue ever. Oh, and also, um, you may have picked up on what's about to happen, but, uh... They even programmed in the ability to go from being on the ground to being on a dragon. Also, there's the crab. Here it is. The big juicy crab, even. Ow. Fuck you. Is that some kind of giant crab? Ugh, it stinks. What the hell, man? This fight's kind of annoying. It gets a little bit less annoying, uh... Once we destroy the boat. Oh my god, I'm dodging. Why? How do you keep hitting me, dude? There it is. The yeah, ass fight's annoying. So the gimmick here is that it separates into like tiny little like mini crabs and they're going to try to get to the boat so we can get the shield back. And when they pop up like this, we got a got to bonk it. And that's pretty much all we do for the rest of the fight. That's what makes it vulnerable to big damage. It's, uh, it's really not that interesting, I'll be real. Of course! The bigger the meat, the better it tastes, right? It's so huge and thick. Maybe I'll just play with it a little first. Like, like, it's cool the first time you fight it, don't get me wrong. I've just done this too many times to be like that, like... Wow, it's a unique crab boss fight. Because we're going to end up having to do this for like seven cycles. But the point was to kill time. So uh, I can't really complain anyway. Did I screw up? No, I didn't. Yep, so the way this works is those smaller crabs, they shoot lasers. I mean, obviously you've seen them shooting the water jets. Um, and that, like, prevents you from hitting the giant crab when it goes for the, uh, goes for the, the ship. So... The more health you take out, the more crabs show up, makes it harder, in theory, to uh, to get the big crab when it comes up for air. But you know, it's not that bad. It's worse once we run out of uh, defense pots, but eh. And get him. And bonk. And one more phase. Bonk. 
So to recap our DLC journey, one massive trauma, two war crimes, three crab. Yes. Correct. Yes, we did it, Dito. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. Oh, also I think uh let me try it. Yeah, you can just like like the crab is not a physical object. You can, you can just go inside the crab. And you can just chill. decided to cook and eat it on the spot oh so yummy so yummy so yummy oh, so dito yummy. looks so normal in this image oh, yes. so yummy. Mm. hope y'all enjoyed that asmr from five by the way so, so yummy, mm. so yummy. And there we go. Uh, I kind of want to read her next uh, little thingy, her lore piece, actually. Without a doubt, the DLC ever, for sure. Um, and let's just click back in there. And Memoirs of the Intoners. Bunch of art. Yeah. Have some faith you can fix her. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. But yeah, uh, that that was Dragon Guard Three. Um, I guess that's probably my time. It's been in about an hour since I was told we need to fill about an hour. Um. Yeah. Thank you all for hanging out. It was a good time. Um, I guess I'll show my stuff again. I don't know if I can post a link in chat without getting bopped, but uh, I am a YouTube streamer primarily. I don't really use Twitch outside of like this. So uh, be sure to check me out there. Um, Ezra Andromeda, ch, ch, period. Because, you know, that's like the VTuber thing you put at the end of uh, an end of your name. It's like this is a channel. Um, First try final song is pretty hype. Yeah, I still can't believe I did that on this little sleep and after playing for that long. Because I don't you when I do that, I don't usually watch the cutscenes. That was that was something. So um I don't know, it was fun. It was fun. Showed off a cool game I like. Definitely recommend playing it, definitely recommend the Draconeer series. Um and yeah, I do play a lot of games like this, a lot of RPGs, etc. etc. So yeah. Um, definitely, if you want to, be sure to check me out on YouTube. And I also do these uh, these runs relatively frequently. Um, like, maybe once every few months. Maybe a little bit longer, which, uh, you know, for this sort of thing, pretty frequently, I would say. Um, I could not imagine doing this more frequently than that. Uh, so yeah, all that. But be sure to stay tuned to uh, RRLAT. Unless it's bedtime like it is for me, in which case, uh, go to bed, have good eep, have good eepy sleeps, um, and yeah. I don't know, that's it. That's, that's, that's all I got. Watch Drakengard, play Drakengard. Go, go to Waffle House, good restaurant. I'm not sponsored, I just really like Waffle House. Uh, I'm going to keep saying things until the mob.